When I was pregnant, my kid's father and I stayed at his cousin's house for about a month before we moved into our apartment. It's an old farmhouse in a newly developed area of Warwick, Rhode Island. There are farms and woods in one direction and a small town in the other. We were told when we moved in that the house had been built in the mid 1800s, which to me was super interesting until my kid's father, let's call him Brian, remarked at how the stairs seemed awfully dark and creepy for the middle of the day. And when I looked, he was right. It gave off such a sinister vibe. We slept in the living room at night and could see through the kitchen. And it was as if the stairs became a dark, uncomfortable void. When we brought this up to Brian's cousin and his wife, they proceeded to laugh and tell us stories of people being pushed down the stairs. I don't think they believed in ghosts, and the husband was an abusive drunk, so they had a lot of problems going on. That house was chaotic. The husband and wife clearly were having some serious issues, emotionally and financially. They had a six-year-old son who was afraid to sleep upstairs by himself because the shadows scared him. Great. After being in the house alone a couple of times, I saw genuine human figures out of the corner of my eye. Even better, black dots on the floor with what looked like long spindly legs would run around, but whenever you would look at them straight on, they would disappear. A few times I would see a figure out of the corner of my eye. I would go to look and see one of the family members who I hadn't heard come in. I think that freaked me out the most because how can you explain to yourself seeing a person and sometimes nothing being there, but other times you expect it to disappear, but that time it would in fact be a person standing there. So weird. Brian would say how sitting in one chair in the living room, you'd want to look over your shoulder into the doorway as if somebody was coming down a set of stairs that used to be there. This also freaked me out, considering I slept right near the doorway, and often would get a feeling of somebody coming toward me. One day, Brian and I were the only two in the entire house. Facing one another about two feet away, face to face, talking loudly as we usually do, we hear directly in the middle of us a woman's voice say, Shh! I asked if he had said that, and he stared at me with huge eyes and asked, no, didn't you? Then we laughed it off because clearly we were talking too loud for the inhabitants, apparently. We eventually brought this up to the family, who included a second cousin living upstairs, and they confirmed that they too saw and felt things. They told us they assumed the black voids that ran on the floors were just one of their dogs and ignored it if it wasn't. The cousin who lived upstairs said that the curtains to his closet often moved as though they were being pushed aside, but he had chalked it up to just being tired. There was no breeze. The wife told me that when they first moved in there, her son would see a man in a hat, but she had always assumed that it was just his imagination. I mean, how could you live in a house so clearly haunted and just pass it off? I'll never get it. The front of the house at night was avoided by basically everybody, as it was right where it felt like somebody was walking by the door frame. It felt like the person was coming right at you into the living room. One night, I didn't feel like walking all the way around this huge house to the car, so I walked as fast as I could to the car through the front door. I heard a deep growling coming from the side of the house. They owned three dogs, one of which was a bull mastiff. Too freaked out to call for her, I ran in and to my horror, all three dogs were in the house. Needless to say, I didn't use that entrance again. It was such an emotionally depressing house and maybe me being pregnant, I was just more aware of everything. There were other weird things, but one of the last conversations I had with one of the roommates renting a back bedroom was about Brian and I hearing that shh. She explained that she hears the exact same thing in the hallway if she and her son are getting a little loud. She was just sure it was the owner's young son sneaking into the hallway, but I'm not so sure.
My wife and I bought our house almost three years ago. The very first night while we were there, we were laying in bed about to fall asleep when we heard a loud knock on the kitchen floor. It was like something very heavy had fallen. We jumped out of bed to find nothing. We hadn't even unpacked anything. Over the next few weeks, we would hear the doors in our basement open and shut. Several times I would get up and go down to the basement to see if anything was out of the ordinary, but nothing would ever be out of place. We have a completely finished basement and it's not creepy or anything like that. Over time, activity would mellow out and then ramp back up again. My wife and I would both, on occasion, catch somebody standing in the kitchen as we walked by the kitchen door. But when we did a double take, nobody would be there. Most of the activities that we experience take place during the day. So I don't think it's just us being spooked by the dark or something. My children have had many strange occurrences too. I was in the kitchen one day and my son was sitting on the stairs to the basement. He jumped up and ran to me saying, the bad man's in the basement. I asked, where? And he replied, at the bottom of the stairs. Being a rational adult and not wanting our three-year-old to be afraid, I decided to walk him down and show him that there was nothing to be afraid of. We found no one. A couple of weeks later while I was at work, my wife and kids were home alone. My wife was in the bedroom and my son in the living room playing trains. All of a sudden, my kid screams and runs into my wife shouting, the bad daddy is in the kitchen. My wife looked, but nobody was there. Sometime later, my wife and kids and I were in the living room watching TV while the kids played. Both my son and daughter stop at the exact same time look at the kitchen and follow something there with their eyes down the hall into a bedroom, back down the hall and through the kitchen. We were sitting there watching both of them track the same thing that we couldn't see. Another time, the four of us were in the kitchen planting seeds for our garden in the little seed starter trays when our daughter stops and looked at the doorway to the basement. She smiled and said, are you playing in the basement? She was two at the time and spoke clear as day to somebody that we could not see. Other times we would hear our kids talk to somebody when they were in their rooms completely alone. One Sunday morning while watching football, I was sitting on the couch with my back to the bedroom door, which was open. I decided to get up and make some breakfast. The door was open when I walked into the kitchen. When I came back, the door was closed. I thought it was odd, but I just sat back down and continued to watch the game. After a while, I got back up to go to the bathroom, and I noticed that the door was opened halfway. When I returned to the living room, it was shut again. The rest of the day, I sat in the chair adjacent to the couch so that I could have a full view of the door. We've had many strange encounters. These are just the few that I can think of off the top of my head. The activity seems to be picking up again, and my wife wants to sage again. I try to be rational and remind her that this is a 70-year-old house. There will be noises. But as a skeptic, I find it hard to be skeptical with the amount of activity we have here. I've dealt with the paranormal side ever since I can remember, but this is the story that happened in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. My wife and I moved in sometime in September of 2014. We bought the home at auction and it needed a lot of work. The home was built in 1969 and it was all original to that date, even down to the shag carpets. The house sat on 12 acres with only three acres cleared around the home other than some random trees. The rest was fully wooded. The basement was gross and musty. The ceilings were low in places with the pipes and ductwork running throughout. It had an odd feeling when walking down there. 
The previous owners left a deep freezer, and what they had inside of it made me question the things they were doing in the basement. The freezer was full of different animal carcasses that had been stripped of meat, random bone pieces with bits of fur still attached. There was also a gallon bucket sitting in there, just full of blood. Our very first night staying there, my brother and sister decided to stay over with us. We were all hanging out anyway, and it got late, so they just decided to stay. While we were there, we were unpacking boxes and decorating for Halloween. I started walking the empty boxes and totes down to the basement, and while down there, something caught my eye. I saw what looked like a slim box sitting on top of the ductwork. I walked over and pulled the box down, and sure enough, it was an old 70s Ouija board. Not thinking too much about it, I grabbed it and brought it upstairs, and sat it in our dining room hutch for decoration. The night was getting late. We were all getting tired. It had to have been around midnight. We decided to head up to the second floor and go to bed. All the bedrooms were dispersed on the second floor. My wife and I took the master bedroom, and my brother and sister took rooms of their own. We laid there trying to doze off, when suddenly we heard what sounded like the closet doors sliding and slamming shut, and the sound of running and stomping back and forth in the hallway. My wife had me get up to tell my brother and sister to stop and that we were trying to sleep. I get up and I go to each of their rooms, and I ask what they're doing and that people are trying to sleep. They said, we thought it was you guys. I decided to grab my gun, thinking, okay, maybe somebody broke into the house. I slowly walked downstairs, clearing each room as I went along. My wife, brother, and sister followed behind with a gun of their own. We cleared every room, but there was no one in the house. Suddenly, it dawns on my sister. It's the Ouija board, she said. I quickly grabbed it from the hutch cabinet and took it back to the basement, and it was silent for the rest of the night. As time went on, the spirit was making itself known. We would have to block the basement door shut because we were constantly finding it open. Anytime we had to go down into the basement, we felt its presence. This thing was demonic. We would hear it walk up to the second floor and walk around the bedrooms. Doors would randomly slam shut. The lights would surge randomly. I began to see this dark shadow figure. It wasn't just any spirit. It was dark. Like I said, it felt demonic. I felt like I was losing my mind. Voices were constantly in my head. Sometimes they were whispers, other times they were louder, but they always sounded muffled. I couldn't ever make out what they were saying, but it was all the time. The only time the voices weren't in my head was when I wasn't home. We had chickens and a sheep that died for no reason. All of our vehicles constantly had problems, down to the mower. One day I was putting laundry away. I had the windows open to catch a summer breeze because our HVAC didn't work very well. And I heard a strange sound. So I looked to the window and listened. It was coming from the right side, inside the woods. It got closer and closer. And then that's when I saw it. It was either a hellhound or a werewolf or something like that, walking through our front yard and disappearing into the woods on the other side. I was so shocked. One random night, we were watching a movie. The light surged and we heard the basement door slowly opening. I jumped up and wedged the door shut with a chair. Another night, I walked past the basement door to find it open, with no lights on, and I heard my wife down there calling my name. I thought it was really strange. Something just seemed wrong about it, so I didn't go down there. Then, I heard walking above me. Slowly, I walked up the stairs to the second floor, and I made my way up them. When I turned the corner, I found my wife in our room. She was the one that was walking upstairs, while I was hearing her call me from the basement. 
I told her about this, and we both thought it was really wild. I mean, what did it want me in the basement for? The presence continued, and it was making us feel on edge. Tired, I was hardly sleeping. I tossed and turned, and the voices grew louder and louder, yet I could never make out what they were saying. After a few years, we decided to put the house up for sale. My father-in-law was coming over to help work on a few things before the house hit the market. While he was there, the door slammed shut, and the voices started in his head. He even said that he couldn't make out what they were saying. Eventually, we moved out, and the voices, which had never been present before that house, went away entirely, and have never come back since. Back when I lived in my very first apartment, I would always hear what sounded like a little child calling for their parent. Now at first, I thought it was just genuinely some kid who was lost, because the complex was big enough for a kid to wander off from their parents. But the voice seemed to always be right next to me. It wasn't until I moved out that I found out a little girl was actually killed there in the 80s. Let me tell you about my dad's old farm, AKA the spooky house. Now for context, my dad grew up on dairy farms with his parents who worked for a guy who owned multiple farms. So they would hop around to different farms and manage them, so to speak. We live in Australia. Anyway, while my dad was in his late teens to early twenties, they lived in this farmhouse that eventually became known as the Spooky House to him and his parents. And this is what they experienced while living there. The house was known to have a very foreboding feeling to it, like something was always off and you just couldn't put your finger on it. The floor was made out of old wood that had little notches in it. And Nan, my dad's mom, put little stoppers in them to fill the holes. A lot of the time they would wake up in the morning and find that all of the stoppers were pushed up from underneath the house. Dad said that they used to have these giant hippie beads hanging in all the doorways, so big and heavy that it would have to be a big gust of wind to move them. He lost count of how many times he would get up early for work and find them swaying, like somebody had just walked through them. But when he checked the bedrooms, everybody was asleep and there had been no wind in the house. I remember dad telling me that it slowly got worse over time. Like the house didn't want them there or something. At one point, Nan contacted a psychic to see if they could make it better or calm it down. Well, the psychic wouldn't even get out of her car and come up the driveway. She absolutely refused to come inside the house. Nan was flabbergasted and asked what she could do. The psychic told her, move, and drove off. Dad said that not long after, these things would start stalking the house. To this day, he has no idea what they were, and he doesn't really want to know. Nan would come out in the morning and find that the grass was pressed down or trampled around the house, especially where the windows are. Her peg basket on the clothesline would be ripped to shreds and bits of it were spread around. Dad said that she had to keep buying new ones. It started to get more serious when dad would be woken up by scratching at his window on the outside. He was always too scared to look back at it because he just knew that whatever it was was staring right back at him while scratching the window. They would check in the morning to find that the paint had been scratched off the house at inhuman heights and the grass was flattened. At one point, while his dad was out working a few paddocks over, 
Nan came in and woke Dad up, and together they huddled in his bedroom, waiting for daylight, as the things stalked around the outside of the house. Speaking of, it stalked Dad once too. He was walking from the house to his dad, a few paddocks over to help with the cows. It was about four o'clock in the morning. It was cold and there was frost on the grass. As dad was walking, he could hear a crunch, crunch coming behind him. So he stopped and it stopped too. Dad was kind of like, huh? And started walking again and so did it. Again, my dad stopped and it stopped. Now starting to get freaked out, dad started to pick up the pace and then he stopped again. Only this time, the thing didn't stop. It started to come right at my dad. He bolted. He ran over two paddocks and cleared the fences and didn't stop until he reached his dad's side. Whenever dad's parents left for a couple of days and he had the place to himself, he would always host massive parties with his friends. They had the run of the house and they could sleep wherever they wanted. But all of them always ended up huddling up in one room when they went to sleep. One time it was just dad and his cousin over. They played a game of pool and drank a little. At one point around midnight, both of them were sitting around and by this point they were heavily drunk. A dark figure appeared and said, go to bed. Dad said that he was really drunk and just thought, eh, why the hell not? And they went to bed. The next morning they woke up to find the game of pool that was left unfinished put away. And his cousin asked who the person was that had been standing over their beds watching them sleep. My dad didn't remember that part. Anyway, there's more to the house that I can tell, but you get the point. I will say though, the dad and his parents moved out and somebody else eventually moved in. Not long after that, the house burned down. Dad didn't know what had caused the fire, but he wasn't exactly upset about it. It's been a while since I have experienced any paranormal activity in my life. This happened a day and a half ago, and because I hadn't had any experiences recently, it scared the crap out of me. I was watching my dad's dog, Charlie, for a week while he was in the hospital. Nothing bad, just a knee replacement. I was staying in his new apartment, which was an old Victorian house converted into three apartment units. My dad lives on the third floor, or attic, which used to be the servants' quarters. It's a really nice, newly remodeled home with lots of character. The bedroom and bathroom are separate from the rest of the apartment, with a set of about five stairs leading down to it. The week started off great. I dropped my dad off at the hospital and said goodbye to my fiance and headed over to the apartment. I figured it would be a great week of relaxing. I work from home now, so I would be able to work from the apartment and take care of Charlie. Charlie is a big golden doodle mix, about 12 years old now. He's a gentle giant who loves taking naps on his heated bed. The first few days I could hear creaking, scratching, and banging at night, but chalked that up to old house noises. Charlie didn't seem to be too bothered, so it didn't set off any alarms. My fiancé came over on the third day to help me clean up the apartment. My dad is recently divorced, so he doesn't have a great grasp of personal hygiene or cleanliness. We set to work and started moving furniture to vacuum, mop, and sanitize the kitchen and bathroom. Halfway through the cleaning, Charlie started to get unsettled. He had been fine up until this point, but he was now anxiously pacing the hallway in front of the stairs to the bedroom. I tried to get him to go for a pee, or at least to show me what he wanted but he wouldn't budge from the stairs. My fiance was starting to get frustrated with Charlie because he was crying and barking at nothing. He went to move Charlie, and as soon as he touched his collar, Charlie ran howling into the room. 
At this point, my fiancé was done. He ran into the bedroom after him and chased him out. He shut the door, and we went back to cleaning. We assumed there may be a rat or something in the bedroom, so we bought a trap. My fiancé had to head back to work the next morning, and it was a long commute, so he went home around 9 p.m. I was still in the kitchen, prepping some microwave meals for my dad, for after he got back. Charlie still hadn't given up on the bedroom and was scratching at the door. I took him for a walk so he would settle, and when we got back, he gave up and went to sleep. I decided to just head to bed too because I was exhausted. I was on the pull-out couch in the living room, so I set up some TV to watch while I fell asleep. I woke up around 2.30 in the morning, desperately needing the bathroom. I was a bit hesitant to go into the bedroom after Charlie's reaction to it. I didn't need a rat running over my foot while I was peeing. I uneasily relieved myself and went back to the living room. When I got back, the TV was off. I had left it on, and it had been on when I went to the bathroom. I went to turn it back on, and I could see the outline of someone in the TV screen. They moved behind a wall as I watched, and I freaked out and ran to the bedroom to call 911. I thought for sure someone had broken in. Charlie was barking loudly at this point, and I had let him into the room with me to protect him. The police got there within a few minutes, but honestly it felt like forever. I explained everything to them, and they searched everywhere. There was no forced entry, no footprints, nothing stolen or broken, and no evidence of anything. They left an officer parked outside the apartment complex for an hour after the incident. I was able to sleep a bit after they left, but only with Charlie on the bed with me, and the TV on. The next night was the last night I was able to stay there. I woke up around 1.30 in the morning to scratching at the bedroom door. It sounded like Charlie had trapped himself inside. I went over to the door and flung it open, expecting Charlie to run out. There was nothing behind the door. He wasn't in the bedroom, and the scratching had been occurring only a second before I opened that door. I checked the bathroom. Nothing. I turned around and saw him anxiously sitting, watching me from outside the bedroom door. I walked toward him, and just as I did, the door swung shut slowly from the inside. It was black in the room, and I was terrified. I ran for the door and opened it so quickly I almost ran into Charlie. I grabbed my things fast and got Charlie all packed up and threw everything in the car. I had forgotten his leash, so I went back into the apartment. I could have sworn that as I was leaving, I could see a person in the TV screen again. I said to myself, screw my landlord's rule about no dogs. There was no way we were staying there anymore. My fiancé thinks I am overreacting and isn't too happy about having a 120-pound dog in our home, but I couldn't do it. I talked with my dad the next day, and he said he has never had any experiences in that apartment but that Charlie has never really liked the bedroom or the hallway leading to the bedroom, which is where I saw the person. I told him that I would never stay there again. Charlie is very happy here with us until my dad gets out of inpatient rehab for his knee, and my fiancé can suck it up for another three days. I'll still have to go over to walk Charlie, but I'll never go back inside. For the first few months after my kids and I moved into our house, the house seemed pretty normal. But then one night, my son came screaming down the stairs in what I would call a night terror. I assume he woke up from a nightmare and it just kept going. He finally took a breath and said, I was sleepwalking, I'm okay, and went back up to his room. Then the weirdness started. One night, I was down in the basement doing laundry, and I heard a small child's voice behind me say, Hi there. When I turned around, no one was there. 
At that point, we started finding toys in the basement in obscure places. My first thought was that the children who lived there before had hidden them in the crevices in the walls. Then one day, I noticed a box of old marbles appeared where I had just cleaned. None of the toys belonged to my kids. I also set up a cheap dollar store alarm system around the office area so that I knew when the kids would sneak into the office to try to find birthday and Christmas presents. Little stinkers. They did it often. One day when I was in the bathroom, the alarm went off. I yelled from the bathroom, Hey, get out of my office! Since my son and I were the only ones home, I heard him yell from upstairs, I'm not in your office. As time went by, we could hear a piano playing at night that I thought might be the neighbors, and sometimes the lights and ceiling fan would go on and off. I blamed old lighting. The front door would sometimes open if not double locked. I told the woman who owned the home before the new landlords bought it as our kids were friends. She told me the reason why she put the double lock on the door is that somebody would open the door at night, and the reason she finally sold the house was because of all the weirdness surrounding it, including the piano. After that, we started looking for another place to live. It was during this time that really strange stuff started happening. My kids would feel like they were getting pushed up the stairs when going up. And then, one night, while my son was asleep in his room, he heard an old woman's raspy voice whisper from the closet, saying, I'm going to kill you. The kids would see shadows of figures going from our back porch area to a small building that belonged to the old house next door that was supposedly a candy store that burnt up inside years before, but the outside remained undamaged. At this point, we moved. In the last two weeks or so, sometimes at night, I will hear banging and stomping from the flat below ours. There's one apartment per floor, only one apartment below me. This usually happens around 1 a.m., when normally the whole building is silent. It's interesting because no one lives in that apartment. The elderly woman who occupied it since before we moved in sadly passed away very suddenly last month. She actually slipped on one of the steps in front of the building when it was icy outside and died right in front of our place. I wrote off the noises as my imagination the first few times, since I am very much a believer of the paranormal, so I am known to get overly excited about these things. That was until my boyfriend and I heard the noises this morning. He confirmed that they were real and were coming from directly below us. As a huge non-believer, he said it's likely a window was left open in the apartment below, and that the wind is causing it to open and shut. He didn't sound very confident though, because you could clearly hear the sounds moving around the house, not just from the wall where the window would be. Our apartments all have glass on the front doors, so you can easily see movement inside. I went down to have a look if the landlord was in there for some reason and saw no sign of life whatsoever. To make it weirder, you can see my building clearly from the hill just behind. And when I walked up there earlier, it looked like the windows in the apartment below us were fully closed. When I was younger, I'm talking from the ages of zero to six, my family and I lived in this house in Creston, Iowa. I'll never forget that place. It was two stories. The attic was technically three bedrooms, and mine was the one up the stairs. Go up the stairs through my brother's bedroom, hang a left through the parents' room and to the back. Picture a bedroom with slanted walls and two windows in the back. That was my room. A bedroom through a bedroom to a bedroom. The layout of this place made zero sense. 
It also had a basement that from my very vague memory never stopped flooding. Not sure what that has to do with the story, but I'd like to know what happened to this place. I remember a little road that if you followed it around the back, you'd go under this tunnel bridge that supported trains. If you'd look out the side window from the kitchen, you could see the public baseball fields. I am 32 now, and my brother is 29, and we still have dreams about this nightmare for children. Every night when I would go to sleep, I would see these glowing eyes in my windows, two sets of them on occasion, like it brought its freaking buddy to come peep on this five-year-old in the second story window. I would tell my mom all the time, and to this very day she thinks I made it up. She gave me the typical mom response and told me to go stand up to my fears. I did. Once. That night, I yelled, go away, and the body that the eyes were attached to started to frantically try to open the window. I had them locked, of course. We wouldn't go to bed without them locked. As soon as the growling and rattling started, I gunned it to my brother's room, and the little guy is floating out of his crib. I go to my mom's bed while having one of those throat-dry-can't-scream moments, trying to push her awake. My father comes walking up the stairs, and my brother falls back into his crib. Dad hears him screaming, and me standing there crying and reaching for him, and he puts us both back to sleep. I didn't sleep. About a week went by that I didn't sleep, and my mom invited my grandparents to stay the night. My grandpa was apparently the only thing that could calm me. That old geezer made me feel safe, you know? On the third night of his stay, the eyes were back, so I go downstairs to snuggle up to my grandpa while he's asleep on the couch. When I rounded the corner, I could see something black floating up through his stomach and up through the ceiling. He's gasping for air and begging something above his head to make it stop. I was so freaked that I froze. The next morning, I asked him about it. He said that an angel was patting his head, telling him that it was going to be okay and that it was almost over. My brother was three and I was five. My grandparents are all past now. There's no way we should still be seeing this stuff in our sleep by the time we're 30. I want to know if that place is still standing and if anything else has happened to anybody else who stayed there. I guess I'd just like to know that it wasn't just us. Up until the age of 18, I lived in a modest suburban home on the East Coast with my parents and my younger brother. While the home wasn't too old, it was built in the 70s, the house was located less than a quarter mile away from an older cemetery, which is something I have recently considered as an explanation for the events that occurred there. For as long as I can remember, it always felt as if some dark presence was watching me in my house. At night, I would wrap myself in so many blankets that I could barely breathe, only leaving a small hole to peer through into my room. We all lived on the second story too, yet most of the activity seemed to occur in my room and my brother's. The overwhelming fear I experienced almost daily really began when I was seven or eight. At that point, I would often wake up to shadowy figures standing over my bed and even saw my door opened and closed during the night. However, as I got older, these events worsened. One night, I woke up to a small shadow figure the size of a child, rocking in a chair directly across from my bed. I must have stared at that figure for about an hour until I had the courage to turn the light on. Of course, when I did, it was gone, but my chair was left rocking in its place my window wide open, which was strange because it was winter and I definitely didn't open it, and my books were knocked off my shelf. I began telling my parents what had been happening to me, and they barely uttered a word. My brother had been behaving strangely at this time as well, speaking to the walls, and angrily yelling at my mom whenever she tried to put away his toys at night. He eventually told my parents that he had to leave his toys out, 
or else the big one and the little one would get mad. He also said that the little one would pull on his toes at night if he didn't do what it said. When my parents finally heard this explanation, they then disclosed what else had been occurring to them. When my mom was alone, her hair would frequently get yanked from behind, or she would hear whispering voices. She'd seen objects such as a bowl fly 10 feet across the room and smash into a wall. While we were not being physically injured, it was clear that these spirits were trying to torment us. At night, we would all hear noises throughout the house. Sometimes it would be a cabinet closing or dishes clashing together. Other times, it would be full-on footsteps stomping around. It had gotten to the point where my parents hired paranormal investigators to look into the house. From what I know, they had picked up slight audible recordings in both my room and theirs. Nothing too major, yet it appeared as if some unexplained activity was spiking their detectors. I'll also add that my family is not religious, so we never hired a priest or any other religious organization to help us ward off any potential bad spirits. Anyway, after the investigation, my mom was so fed up that she'd begun considering selling the house. Then, all of a sudden, all the activity almost immediately stopped. No sounds at night, no objects flying, and my brother no longer saw the big one and the little one. Things really did seem to die down until I was about 12, right after my parents divorced. I split my time between that house, my dad's, and my new house, my mom's. I still hadn't experienced anything like I did when I was younger, but something seriously freaked me out whenever I had been home alone there. I always felt like I was being watched. I'm currently living full-time at my mom's house now, but I just can't wrap my mind around what happened to me as a kid. I'd also like to note that strange things have now been happening at my mom's. I'm not sure if I'm just sensitive to these types of paranormal activity, but I just can't explain why. My boyfriend doesn't believe a word of this story, but oh well. I kind of think that people don't believe in this stuff until it happens to them. Anyway, thanks for listening to my story. I would love to hear from anyone else who has similar paranormal experiences. Does anyone think that being haunted as a child could make someone more susceptible to future activity? Let me know. When I was about 15 or 16, my neighbor asked my sister Cindy and I if we could stay at her large century house while she was on a business trip for two weeks. We were to be pet sitting and house sitting. Having been close to our neighbor and loved her dog and kitty, we said, of course. Cindy slept in the master bedroom and I stayed in the second bedroom upstairs, which is connected to the attic. Now, Cindy and I always loved creepy stuff always watching ghost adventures every Friday night, and we shared a lot of personal paranormal experiences together. We would always open the small attic door and mess around, saying that we should go in there, but I'm glad we never did. One night, Cindy stayed next door while I was at the neighbor's. I was sitting on the couch with the dog and the kitty next to me, watching TV. My neighbor has one of those alarm systems where if you open an entrance door, a little beep goes off. I heard the beep and I didn't really react, expecting to see my sister or my mom walk in to come hang out. After a minute of waiting to hear something or for someone to come in, nothing happened. I called out for Cindy, but no answer. I messaged my mom and asked if it was her, but they weren't even home. What scared me is that the beep goes off for any door, meaning that it could have been the front door that was maybe five feet from me on the other side of the wall. So I brushed it off and tried not to get too scared and just continued watching TV. Except that after about 30 minutes, I started hearing footsteps above me, which would have been the master bedroom. I look to my left and I see the dog. I look to my right and I see the cat so it couldn't have been them. I turned the TV down and I listened some more. 
and it sounded like the footsteps just paced back and forth. I had my sister come over and spend the night with me that night. The next day, I go to my neighbor's right after school, and I see the basement door was open. Odd, but I closed it and went about my day. I started to clean her dining room and moved the chairs away from the table to sweep underneath it. I remembered that the broom was upstairs, so I ran up really quickly to grab it. As I come back down to the dining room, one of the dining room chairs was pushed into the stairway entrance, blocking me in. Again, I tried to brush it off and push it to the back of my mind. Except once I started sweeping, I felt something almost rush up behind me. So much so that I dropped the broom and ran my butt next door to my parents. The last few days consisted of random stuff moving, doors opening, and lights being on while we were at school. When my neighbor got back, she paid us and thanked us, and then asked if anything weird had happened. I said, actually, yes. I explained to her everything, and she just kind of laughed and goes, yeah, that happens a lot. I didn't want to tell you girls beforehand in case it would deter you from staying here. She also mentioned that I slept in the most haunted room in the house, the second bedroom upstairs with the attic. I brought up the basement door, but that's where her vibe changed. She said that's the one place in her house that she won't mess with because it scares her that much. Needless to say, after those two weeks, I sort of avoided going there, for a few years at least. Then I graduated high school and moved out of my parents' house, and that neighbor offered me a room in her house, and I said yes. But that's a story for another day. an event transpire last night that is a small paragraph in the story of my haunted house. To understand the story, it helps to understand the history of the property. Before my house was a house, it was a Veterans of Foreign Wars club. To those that are unaware, it was a bar clubhouse for Veterans of Foreign Wars. The house is over 120 years old, and many people have passed through the doors over the decades. It seems likely that many tortured souls spent time there. There were probably soldiers, people that have done horrible things while fighting in our wars. I live in the USA, by the way. Some of my elderly neighbors talk to me about my house and its history when I'm out walking my dog. Some of them have even drank there, the real old neighbors. Paranormal experiences are pretty common things in this place, but this one was the most recent and it happened last night at around 11.30. I was laying in bed with my two cats. They were sleeping together at the end of the bed, and I was watching a movie on my tablet. The lights were on, so darkness did not obscure my vision. Here's where things get interesting. In a split second, both cats jolted themselves awake and began to fix their eyes on the doorway to the bathroom. I stopped my movie and tried to listen and observe. Keep in mind, both cats' eyes are perfectly fixed on the doorway, with gaze fixed on a central point in the middle upper height of the doorway. I found this strange, as there wasn't a sound to be heard. My first thought is that they were tracking a fly or a bug. It's winter and cold right now, and I don't think I've seen a bug in months. That's because no bug was there. My vision is unusually good and the lights were on and nothing was there. At least nothing I could see. At this point, I'm really trying to figure out what these two cats are looking at. They began to turn their heads horizontally as if someone was walking out of the bathroom toward the foot of my bed. While this was happening, their heads and eyes moved in sync with each other as if the two cats bodies were attached by gears. I knew it wasn't a fly at this point for certain. Anyone with a cat knows how a cat will move when trying to hunt a fly. They'll look up, down, and in circles as the fly buzzes across the room. With their vision at the foot of the bed, they started to look up to me 
as if someone was walking up toward me. My hair began to rise on the back of my neck. The pins and needles radiated down my spine and into my arms. All of my senses began to hyperfocus. No bug, no buzzing, but something is clearly there. I can sense the presence of someone there, breathing. The air is cold and feels heavy. At or around this time, I realize I'm having a visit from one of the house's many ghosts. I used to be much more afraid of these kinds of occurrences, but now I just kind of accept it. Anyway, wide-eyed, the cats are staring at something right next to me. In perfect synchronization, their eyes slowly moved up, staring directly over my chest where I was laying. I can sense someone standing over me, looking down on me. This freaked me out. Loudly and out of reflex, I yelled, what the F? For no reason and without any input, the Alexa on my table said, do you want to see something paranormal? Please remember, this is still real life. There's no embellishment. There was no reason for my tablet to do this and also it was really loud. Now I'm very spooked. However, I realize that this thing or spirit or whatever is trying to communicate with me. I did not ask for Alexa, nor did I mention any keywords like ghost or haunted or whatever. Also, as an aside, later I tried to see what settings Alexa was on, and I couldn't find that info because Alexa wasn't even on. I always shut off Alexa because she's kind of annoying. I only turn her on whenever I need something. So there's really no reason for Alexa to have been working. In any event, I decided to reply to Alexa, and I said, no thanks. The air in the room lifted, the cat settled back down, and I tried to sleep and got little. Those two cats saw something that I could not. Whatever it was, it walked out of the bathroom, past the foot of my bed, made a 90 degree turn and stood over me, and tried talking to me through my tablet on an Alexa that wasn't even active. I wanted to share some stories about my family's haunted house, so here goes. I'm 19 and I still live with my parents, along with my little sister, who's 14, and my little brother, who's 17. Many, many things have happened in this house, and it's gotten to the point where I feel safer at my boyfriend's house. We got this house when I was around 11. I would cry to my mom almost every night after getting out of the shower, because while I would shower, I would hear somebody talking to me from the other side of the curtain. It got so bad that I eventually made my mom stay in the bathroom with me while I showered. A couple of years go by and nothing happens. When I started high school, that's when things started happening again, but worse. I would often hear things. Things would move around by themselves and nothing would ever be in the same spot where I had left it before. I told my parents about this, but they thought I was crazy for like two years. Then, things started happening to them as well. One morning, I woke up with a burning sensation on my leg. I had three upside down K shapes scratched into my leg. At first I thought maybe somehow I had done it in my sleep, but they were perfectly aligned. Plus, at that time I chewed on my nails, so I didn't really have any nails to scratch myself with. About two years ago, my little sister comes running into my room at 3.30, shaking. Once she got me awake, she told me that my mom was screaming. I go into her room and she's hysterical, crying her eyes out, with the covers pulled all the way over her head, and my dad comforting her. My mom is shaking and she's so scared she couldn't even talk. My dad left for work that morning, around 4.00 and my mom couldn't sleep unless she had me in there with her. For days, she refused to tell me what happened, but then she finally did. 
She said that she had woken up and saw a rather short black silhouette standing next to my dad. She said the figure was all black, but she could feel how evil it was, and it had a sort of red-orange glow behind it. She was so scared she wouldn't let me leave her alone in the house. In 2020, I met my boyfriend, and I had him over to the house for the first time. He ended up staying the night, but I didn't tell him about my house in fear of scaring him off. It's around two in the morning and my parents are asleep. My brother is at a friend's house and my little sister is in the dining room, painting. My boyfriend and I are in the brother's room because he has a PlayStation. I don't. I'm playing a game and he's watching me play, and I look over and he's not really paying attention. He's looking into the living room, and he looks very pale. I asked him if he was okay, what was wrong, and if he was feeling all right. Finally, I started shaking him because he wouldn't reply. Then he said, who's that standing in front of your parents' room? This freaked me out because I looked and nothing was there. I asked him to describe what he had seen. He said he was looking at exactly what my mom had said she saw a couple of years prior. A couple of months later, my boyfriend is in my room by himself, and my parents are outside on the porch talking. I go in to get him to come outside and go on a walk with us, but when I walk into my room, he's under the covers, and my nightstand is completely upside down. He's pale and shaking, and I ask him what happened. He explained he was on his phone waiting for me to come back, when everything on my nightstand flew off and then flipped over. I had glass bottles and a couple of miniature paintings on my nightstand, and there was broken glass everywhere. This was a couple of months after we got together, but there's so much more I could tell. It's already such a long story, but the point is, I don't feel safe here, and I don't know what to do or who to turn to. I don't know what's in my house, but it is definitely not friendly. This is kind of a long story. It's my first personal paranormal experience from when I was 18. I moved into a two-story townhouse with a friend that I graduated high school with and one of their childhood friends. Let's call my high school friend Amber and their friend Becky. Becky had this sketchy boyfriend who acted all gangster even though we lived in Montana. He was living with us basically all the time Becky and her boyfriend were also pretty Christian. They said that they never experienced any of the things that Amber and myself had. So we moved into this townhouse that was built in the early 2000s. We lived there for about six months. When we first moved in, it was super happy in the house. Amber and I were getting everything set up and enjoying living in our own space for the first time. Becky wasn't super present. She and her boyfriend spent most of their time working in their room or watching movies or fighting. It wasn't until about a month into living there that separately, Amber and I started to hear footsteps when we were alone in the house. At first I thought it was because we were in a townhouse, but we quickly realized that when we did hear the other side of the house, it was obviously coming from the other side of the wall, and that was rarely. These footsteps sounded exactly like when somebody was walking around upstairs, or downstairs, depending on where you were. The first time I heard them, I was in the living room, playing Xbox Home Alone. I heard the steps start to go from room to room above me. It kind of scared me, so I went upstairs to see if maybe Becky's boyfriend was there, but all the doors were closed. Becky had this little dog that would rip your clothes apart if you let her into your room so we always closed the doors up there when we weren't home. The steps sounded like they were going into each room without any doors opening or closing. So that's what tipped me off that probably nobody was there, and when I opened all the doors, nobody was. Amber and I talked about it a lot soon after it started, and it's almost like that attention, knowing that we were talking about it, made more things happen, 
of course. At night, we started to hear the steps in the hallway outside our bedroom doors. Amber and I had rooms right next to each other. It was the creepiest thing. It sounded exactly like when someone's walking barefoot on carpet. How you kind of hear the carpet brush against the rough skin of the bottom of your foot. Amber would text me late at night when I would be laying in bed, straining my ears listening to these footsteps, asking if I could hear it too. Generally, I would always text back that I was hearing it too. It was like a nightly ritual. I feel like saying that until moving into that house, I had had a few paranormal experiences, but I had written them all off as a child's imagination because they scared me so much. But with these things, I suddenly felt like I couldn't write them off. It felt too up close and personal, too real. The footsteps started to sound more rushed over time. My room was right above the kitchen and I could hear the steps shake things in the cupboards at night when it was really quiet. I also knew that it wasn't any of my roommates because it was very obvious when they would open their door to walk around for something. Then in March, Amber and I had a friend over hanging out late one night at the house, all alone. Becky and her boyfriend were at a party. Our buddy didn't drive, so Amber left to drive him home. I cleaned up a bit and went up to my bedroom. I left the hallway light on upstairs because I would start to feel like this weird feeling, this off feeling in there. And whenever I started to feel that, I would just turn the light on. It was a generally dark hallway even in the day, but especially so at night. From my room, I suddenly heard the bathroom door start swinging closed. I was laying in bed, and from the view I had of the hallway, I clearly saw the doorknob peek out against the wall as the door closed, then it slowly swung back open. The sound of that door slowly opening at an agonizing pace will forever be ingrained in my mind. I felt absolute fear because I knew for a fact that I was home alone. The wait for Amber to get back was terrible. I sat in my bed, frozen, until they came up the stairs. I ran out to meet them, feeling confident that it was just the two of us home now. I started to explain what happened and what I saw. I even moved the door slowly open and closed it to replicate the creepy sound. And then it happened. Standing there, mid-sentence telling my story, something started to pound obscenely loudly against the wall behind us. We freaked out and ran into my room, closed the door and sat on my bed together in terror until Becky got home later that night. We were still totally shaken while we told her what happened, but she kind of just brushed us off and her boyfriend didn't seem to care too much either. They just went into her room for the night. Reluctantly, we went to bed in our own rooms. The next day we went outside to look at the part of the house that the sound had come from. There was no mark, no damage, despite it sounding so destructively loud. There weren't any trees in our yard or the neighbor's yard, and no branches or anything like that on the ground that would indicate something had struck the house. We saged the house that week and everything stopped until May. Some roommate drama went down with Becky when she told us we had a month to pack up and find a new place because she was moving in with her boyfriend and ending the lease. Now, six years later, I totally realized that all of the tension and anger in the house then gave whatever pounded on the wall that night enough energy to make a full comeback. The footsteps started nightly again, running occasionally this time. I could hear them linger at our doors almost too, almost as if taunting us to say, I just might come in. Then one day when I was at work, Amber called me in a panic now, a bit of background about Amber. They are by far one of the most grounded, steady-headed people I've ever met. Amber didn't show much emotion or fear during some of our high school shenanigans. So I knew something was up when they called me. Amber told me over the phone that they were just in bed watching something with a guy they had over when Amber and their guest noticed that the foot of the bed started to lift up. 
It slammed back down and the guy ran out. Amber showed me when I got home that night what it looked like when the foot of the bed was lifted. And I just can't imagine any rational explanation for what would cause something like that to happen. Things continued being creepy and loud at night. Then, my last night in the house rolled around and this ghost decided to give me quite the send off. Amber had gotten a job doing trail conservation, so they were on a hitch and Becky was at her new apartment. So I was home alone and told up in my room for the night because I was a little bit scared of our ghost. I was trying to fall asleep when I heard the usual footsteps start doing the rounds around the house. And then they went straight to my door and stopped. I felt very unnerved by that. But then I heard a soft knock at my door. The dread I felt in that moment is still the most intense thing I've ever felt in my life. It had never knocked on our doors or anything like that before. I sure as hell wasn't going to answer. So I tried to focus on sleeping and ignore it. But then I literally felt like somebody was in my room. It felt like a physical presence, and all I could do was lay in bed, frozen with my eyes shut tightly. I felt the side of my bed shift and compress down, as if somebody had slowly laid down next to me. My heart was in my throat. All I could do was lay there. I was too afraid to open my eyes or do anything. I felt like I didn't want to see what was next to me. For a long time, I lay awake, feeling that weight next to me. It never lifted or went away. Somehow, I fell asleep, exhausted by all of the fear, probably. And when I woke up, there was nobody in my room with me. After all that, Amber and I were briefly roommates again a year later, and we would talk about our experiences. It kind of felt cool that we had our own haunted house stories. I guess it still does. I always have to give my two cents when the paranormal stories start getting swapped. But when it was happening, I was really scared. I kept trying to write things off as just my imagination or the house settling or who knows what else. But it just always felt like what I was experiencing was real and it was really happening. The footsteps were too uncanny. I still hear the way they sounded in my head and it's been six years. We moved into the house that we're in now, after my dad died. When I was little, I saw a lady sitting on the floor with her back against the wall and her head between her knees. Now, over 10 years later, my sister has seen her too. My niece and I have both heard a child giggle at the same time when no one was home. We've had lights turn on randomly. My stepdad and I were by the pool and heard a child talking too. I believe that some kind of male entity could be in the bathroom. I keep hearing deep breathing and somebody screamed mom the other day. Mostly though, it only affects my sister and I. We're not scared, we're honestly just kind of annoyed. We're not really sure how to get them to stop messing with us. We don't really feel any negative energy, just obnoxious things. Has anyone else seen the same ghosts for years too? I bought the house that I'm living in a few years ago. It was recently renovated by the previous owner who was in his 50s. I found out later, after talking to a neighbor, that the previous owner had passed away from sudden heart problems. Weird things have been happening again lately. The main thing is the fire alarms. There are about four or five smoke detectors dispersed around the house. One of them will go off randomly at like three in the morning, but it's a different one each time, and it's only ever one. Sometimes it's the basement one 
last night it was the one in the guest bedroom. This has happened probably 10 times in the last two years. The smoke alarms will just go off for a minute and then they'll just stop. I've checked the batteries, I've checked if it's the carbon monoxide alarm, everything, but nothing is wrong with them. They'll just randomly go off. But last night, it did something unusual. Usually, it's just a really loud beeping alarm. But last night, in between the beeps, it said, fire, fire, fire. That has never happened before. And I'm not even sure those alarms are programmed to do that. Some other things that I've had happen is that the lights will dim, the lamp will turn off and on by itself, and I've heard whistling that I can never find a source for. The fire alarm thing sucks, and it's very startling at 3 a.m. I'm not entirely sure, but I think I might be living in a haunted house. I live in an old house, about 30 to 40 years old. It was built by my family. At one point after it was finished, there was some kind of conflict between my family and some other people, and someone from the other family basically cursed the heck out of it and wished everybody in my family bad things. At least, that's what I was told. Great start. Over the years, my family members, especially my dad, have been saying how there's a shadow figure in the living room in certain places. It was described as a black shadow with a long tail. My dad said that when we were little, my brother and I were running up the stairs and that he saw the shadow following us. I never saw it, but I can feel when something or someone is in my presence. There are also quite a few things that I've experienced as a child in this house but I'll skip those for now to not make this too long. Recently, a family member died and strange things have been happening. A few days after it was announced that they passed, my family was arguing and a bottle fell over on the table. I don't know if my grandpa accidentally hit it with his elbow or what, but it fell and broke. A few smaller things have also happened, but something that I'll probably remember forever is when we were sitting at the kitchen table, talking. Out of nowhere, the range hood turned on by itself. To turn it on, you have to reach all the way to the top of it and move a little hook thing. It can't turn on by itself. It wasn't a malfunction. Someone or something turned it on. Today, I finished dinner and went to my room and the handle of my window was set straight. When it's set straight, the window fully opens, and I never open my window like that. Before I went to eat, I left the window half opened with the handle facing up. It freaked me out. I asked all of my family members and nobody had been in there. I checked the whole house, but nobody unfamiliar was there. My room's balcony is also kind of connected to the garden, so anybody who's in the garden can get onto my balcony and into my room. That gets me so paranoid, especially in the summer, when it gets hot in my room and I fully open my windows, that I'm very cognizant about the windows. I know that it wasn't open. Any animal and anybody can enter without me even knowing. So that's why I only ever keep them at half, unless I'm in the room. I believe that more than one bad spirit is in this house. I don't believe all the spirits are bad, or have bad intentions, but at least one is. I don't know what they are or why these things keep happening, but they just keep happening. So when I was about 15 to 16, my neighbor asked my sister, we'll call her Cassie, 
and I if we could stay at her large sensory house while she was on a business trip for two weeks. Having been close to our neighbor and loved her dog and kitty, we said, of course. Cassie slept in the master bedroom, and I stayed in the second bedroom upstairs, which is connected to the attic. Now, Cassie and I always loved creepy stuff, always watching ghost adventures every Friday night, and we shared a lot of personal paranormal experiences together. We would always open the small attic door and mess around, saying we should go in there. I'm glad we never did. One night, Cassie stayed next door while I was at the neighbor's. I was sitting on the couch with the dog and kitty next to me, watching TV. My neighbor has one of those alarm systems where if you open an entrance door, a little beep goes off. I heard the beep and didn't really react, expecting to see my sister or mom walk in to come hang out. After a minute of waiting to hear something or for someone to come in, nothing happened. I called out for Cassie, but no answer. I messaged my mom and asked if it was her, but she wasn't even home. What scares me is the beep goes off for any door, meaning it could have been the front door that was maybe five feet from me on the other side of the wall. I brushed it off so I didn't get too scared and continued watching TV. Except after about 30 minutes, I started hearing footsteps above me which would have been the master bedroom. I look to my left and see the dog. I look to my right and see the cat, so it couldn't have been them. I turned the TV down and listened some more, and it sounded like the footsteps just paced back and forth. I had my sister come over and spend the night with me that night. The next day, I went to my neighbors right after school, and I saw the basement door was open. Odd but I closed it and went about my day. I started to clean her dining room and moved chairs away from the table to sweep underneath it. I remembered that the broom was upstairs, so I ran up really quickly to grab it. And as I came back down to the dining room, one of the chairs was pushed into the stairway entrance, blocking me in. Again, I just brushed it off and pushed it back. Except once I started sweeping, I felt something almost rush up behind me, so much so that I dropped the broom and ran my butt next door to my parents. The last few days consisted of random stuff moving, doors opening, and lights being on while we were at school. When my neighbor got back home, she paid us, thanked us, but then asked if anything weird had happened. I explained everything to her and she sort of laughed and said, yeah, that happens a lot. I didn't want to tell you girls beforehand in case it would deter you from staying there. She also mentioned I slept in the most haunted room in the house, the second bedroom upstairs with the attic. I brought up the basement door, but that's where her vibe changed. She said that's the one place in her house she won't mess with because it just scares her that much. Needless to say, after those two weeks, I sort of avoided going there. For a few years, at least. Then, after I graduated high school and moved out of my parents, my neighbor offered a room in her house for me to stay, and I said yes. So after I moved in, she let me stay in what she called the piano room, which had a piano in it that came with the house. She took the piano out and moved it into the garage, so I actually had room for my stuff. For the first few nights, I definitely felt weird vibes. Maybe it was just because I am biased and had weird stuff happen to me years before, but I always believed I could sense supernatural stuff ever since a young age. Basically, the vibes were off. I would wake up in the middle of the night, hearing what sounded like piano keys, but just enough to wake me up, and that was it. A few weeks later, I got myself a cat. I still have her to this day, and she's my sweet baby. Anyway, she would react and stare at things that were invisible to me. And while I know that cats can be weird, I know animals are sensitive to the paranormal. So I got freaked out anytime she would meow or paw at something that wasn't there. While my neighbor still lived in and owned the house, she was constantly away on business trips or stayed at her mom's house. At this point, her dog passed away and she had her cat at her mom's house, which is why she had offered me a room, so the house wasn't always empty. 
I would hear so many strange noises at night coming from the master bedroom and in the kitchen. I remembered a weird one from the kitchen. It's sort of hard to make a good visual, but I'll try. So the basement door was actually next to the fridge, but the door was blocked by my neighbor's dishwasher so that nobody could get in or out unless the dishwasher was moved. I'm standing looking through the pantry, back facing the basement door, and in the reflection of the pantry door, I saw the basement door open up ever so slightly. I swear it felt like a horror movie. I whipped around, locked the basement door, and went to my room. My neighbor and I ended up having many conversations about the weird stuff. She didn't go into a lot of detail about her experiences, but my mom said she told her a few and was genuinely scared and that I shouldn't ask her anymore. I also just remembered another one from a few years before I moved in. I was out sitting by our sandbox in the backyard and I saw out of the corner of my eye, my neighbor go down to her driveway and take her garbage cans back up to the house. And you know that sound of a garbage can dragging along a gravel driveway? Distinct for sure, right? Anyway, I heard the sound stop right by her garage. I looked up to wave, but no one was there. I assumed maybe she had gone inside or something. But then when I went inside for the day, my mom said that my neighbor was going to be home late and asked if I could take her trash cans up to the house. I froze dead in my tracks. I swore up and down that I heard and saw someone doing it already. But my mom chalked it up to the heat of the summer getting to me. That's one I'll never forget. Another thing I should mention that always seemed eerie to me is that my neighbor constantly tried to sell the house. A family would buy it, but would move back out so quickly. This happened for years and years. The listing price wasn't expensive either, especially for being a big home in a decent area of town. As I got older, I now think that the aura of the house is just off and it made everyone move out. Eventually, she ended up selling it again, and the current residents have stayed there the longest. Some years ago, my girlfriend and I were asked to watch somebody's house. They had an old sick dog and they wanted to go on a vacation. I had to study for exams, so I figured it would be a nice, calm place to do that. We were about 22 or 23 years old. The first day that we came in, we got some information about the house. Their kids slept downstairs, so we had to sleep upstairs in the loft. We had this hallway and then a door to the playroom, and then another door to the loft. So just one way in and one way out. The bathroom was downstairs next to the kids' room. The first thing that I didn't really like was a picture of their dead grandpa standing next to me on the drawer near the bed. I put him away in the drawer so I didn't have to see him every time I woke up. The evening came and we were searching for plates to eat. We couldn't find any plates, we checked the kitchen, yes, every drawer, like five times, nothing to see. The next day, the first drawer I opened in the kitchen was full of plates. Kind of weird, but all right. The next night, the dog was barking like crazy. Every night, this dog started to bark at random hours. The next morning, random lights would be on all over the house. Then I went to check the aquarium to give some food to the fish there. Half of them were dead skeletons at the bottom. I mean, what the heck? Even if they had died overnight, there's no way that would happen so fast. She said there's gotta be an explanation for this kind of thing, but we were already a little bit freaked out. The next night, we're going to the bathroom and just getting ready to go to sleep. Like every night, my girlfriend put her handbag and stuff in the kids' room because the cats couldn't get in there. We checked to make sure all the lights were out and we went to sleep. The next morning, the handbag was standing right next to the bed, right in front of the doorway. My girlfriend freaked out and for me, that was it. 
I said I didn't want to stay. We had exams coming up, and I didn't want to deal with that stuff anymore. She stayed for the dog, but didn't want to sleep alone anymore, so her mom came to sleep at the house. After that, nothing more happened. We told the owners of the house, but they laughed really hard, and I think they thought we were either crazy or kidding. They said nothing like that has ever happened to them. I don't know, maybe I pissed off Grandpa because I put him in a drawer. But, regardless, we really felt that somebody was messing with us in that house. I was working out and I was on the phone with my dad and we were having a nice conversation. Then I heard this devilish scream. It literally sounded like some kind of demon or devil was screaming in my room. I heard it echo through my dad's line too, but he told me that he couldn't hear a thing. I was confused. I said, what do you mean you didn't hear it? And he said, I just didn't hear it. My stomach dropped. So I took out the butcher knife and started walking to my room. I know, stupid idea. I probably should have just ran out of the house until somebody came back, but I did what I could. And keep in mind, I was home alone and nobody could have saved me if something had come and popped up on me. I searched the room and there was absolutely nothing. I searched the other rooms as well, still nothing. I'm totally confused as to what happened. If anybody does know, Please tell me, because as of right now, I'm never entering that room again until I know what that was. When I was in the 4th through 8th grade, we moved into a century-old farmhouse in Strawtown, Indiana. My father was in and out of the picture at this point in my life, so most of the time it was just me, my mother, and two younger brothers living there. One was only a year younger than I was, and the youngest was zero to four during this time. The house always felt as though somebody was watching you or breathing down your neck. I'm just going to list things that occurred for brevity's sake. Number one, this happened to my mom. She started seeing this black shadow around the house. She said that she could smell him, like the body odor would be smelled in a specific spot, not directly next to it. As time went on, she started seeing the imprint of somebody sitting on the edge of her bed. Then one night, it laid across her legs, and she woke up thrashing trying to get it off. Number two, these things happened to me. I had the upstairs bedroom connected to the attic door through a small closet. These were huge rooms. Things were the least crazy for me. I would just hear footsteps run up and down the stairs at night when my brothers would be in bed. The scariest thing that would happen to me was that often the door to the attic would swing open as though somebody had forced it and it would hit the wall. Then a cold presence would rush to my bedside. When I was 14, I started into a spiraling depression. I painted my walls blood red and I began to write poetry and things on my walls in this really aggressive handwriting. I have never felt or acted that way since. I have, however, had many instances of paranormal activity that have followed me throughout my life. Number three. One of my brothers had a bad. I only know fragments of his story, as what happened to him is something he'd rather forget. One night he was screaming in his room. We checked on him and he had been smacked across the face. We figured it was just him hitting himself in his sleep, but the handprint was upside down. It was impossible that he did it to himself. 15 years later, my mom told me that she found him crying on the stairs one night. He was reluctant to tell her why. But when pressed, he told her that he kept hearing voices, telling him to kill all of us. 
My mom understandably kept this from us. When I asked him about it, he was visibly upset and said that it stopped as soon as we moved from the house and he didn't want to talk about it. My youngest brother was two to three when he started saying weird stuff. He would talk about the boots walking around the house with no body attached. He'd also hear laughing whenever he would get near the basement steps. I remember the four of us kneeling and praying that this entity would leave us alone, but it didn't. We decided to leave after a morning when my mom and youngest brother were home alone. They were taking a nap. When the bed and dresser started violently shaking, there was no earthquake and no reason for it. They shook by themselves, and my mom described it as feeling as though she was being intimidated. We moved out. We were told by a neighbor that everybody that's ever moved into that house has moved out within a few months. It's empty now. I still drive by it, and I want to go confront whatever's there and get answers. The landlord is an old farmer that doesn't believe us. This has been the first time I've ever talked about it, really, at least publicly. Since I've moved on with my life, I've lived in several different houses. I've heard strange noises of objects moving in other rooms and deliberate knocking. Not super frequently, though. In one house, we had a painting of Delight Yourself in the Name of the Lord up in the dining room. We heard this crash one night and found it five feet to the right, blocking the bathroom entrance. We also could hear razors and shampoo bottles being tossed in the bathroom at that house. In another, I had two friends over playing poker in the kitchen. And as we were talking about a shelf that had come off the wall the night before, a plastic blender cup was chucked out of the pantry behind us and bounced off that exact wall. I don't know if something followed me from that house or if it's related at all, but it's been interesting. When my niece was really young, she was in a bouncer at my sister's house. I was house and babysitting. I had left her to go to the kitchen to grab some water. My sister's chocolate labs were probably sniffing and licking her head because I could hear her giggling like she was having a blast. I hadn't noticed how cold it had gotten. And then I heard it. A loud wooden snap, like a thick piece of wood had been snapped in half suddenly or a tree was knocked over. I ran into the room and what I saw, and smelled, freaked me out. The dogs were huddled in the corner whimpering. My niece was just staring at the ceiling corner with wide eyes, and it was cold and smelled like Stetson. I took her and we decided to go to a different room. When my sister finally came home, I told her what happened. She just rolled her eyes and said, oh, that's just Hugh. I was so confused. She said that Hugh was the previous owner of the house who had died 10 years before his wife sold it. She said he likes to follow my niece around and you can tell it's him because the dogs freak out, it gets cold, and it smells like cheap cologne. I don't believe in that shit, but I do believe that feeling you get in your gut when something just doesn't feel right. I lived in this particular house from ages 10 to 17, and in that time, the paranormal activity was the worst I have ever experienced in my life. I hope to never live in a place that haunted ever again. I am a strong believer in God, so my idea of the paranormal is that they are demons, not just your average ghost. As I said, this house was messed up. I experienced too many uncomfortable situations there, but this was by far the worst one. This happened roughly 10 years ago, when I was about 13 or so. My parents and sister were out of town about three hours away, leaving me home alone for the entire weekend. I was in my bedroom getting ready for bed when I heard boom, boom, boom 
on my bedroom door. Figuring my parents were home early and I hadn't heard them call my name, I opened my door to find nobody there. Confused, I searched the entirety of my house and called my family, only to learn that all of them were still three hours away. Totally creeped out by this, I went back into my room and this time locked and closed my door. I went back to getting ready for bed, and not more than five minutes later, I hear the same boom 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 on my bedroom door. I ran over to my door, and this time, the door was wide open, with the handle still locked. I slammed my door shut, got into bed, and kept all of the lights on. I don't think I slept at all that night. The next morning my family came home, and I never had that door-pounding incident happen again, thankfully. I watched a movie a few years later that indicated something about three knocks meaning that a demon was around, because they're mocking the Holy Trinity. That kind of scared the heck out of me, even if it was in retrospect. It might not sound as scary to some as it will to others, but to experience that at 13 years old, in an empty house, so close to me, was completely terrifying, especially since I had experienced other strange occurrences in the house before. I come from the county where Ireland's most haunted house, Loftus Hall, is located. If you want to know the history of Loftus Hall and the original story to it, I'm sure you'll find it on Google. People that have visited all have their own stories of experiences at the house, and I'm going to share with you some of my experiences that I've had over the years. I lived about 30 minutes drive away from here, so it was a destination that we visited a lot over the years. I remember the first time I visited the grounds of the house. I was maybe five or six years old and was visiting it with my uncle. As we drove up the long lane leading to the house, I remember looking at all of the windows and getting a shiver as we approached. We parked up and got out of the car. I stood and stared at the house as we walked around the grounds. We walked around to the side of it where, at the time, there were apple trees. The apples were red and juicy. We picked some and put them in a bag to bring home with us. When we got home, we got the apples out of the bag, and every single apple had a rotten part on one side. I mean a big, green, gooey lump on all of them, and they'd been perfectly fine when we picked them. Another time when I was around 14, I'd gone to Loftus Hall with my friend and his mom. There's a nearby lighthouse that's open for people to visit, and we visited there first. When we got to the house, there were a few people around, and there was a young American family there, a mom, a dad, and two girls aged around five and nine. The two girls were running around and playing on the grounds of the house when they ran up to their parents laughing. The nine-year-old said, Mommy, Mommy, Anne wants to show us something. Can we go to her room? Now, this may seem like normal childhood behavior, except Anne is the name of the girl in the original haunting story of Loftus Hall. If you research it, You'll find out everything about the history of the house, including Anne. I must also mention that the actual house was not open to guests to go in and out as they pleased at this time. You had to book a tour, and there were only three to four tours a day. When I was 16, that was my first time going into the house. We booked a tour on Halloween night. There were some ghost hunters who did an overnight stay. They did it every Halloween and a certain number of guests could stay there with them for the night. We arrived and went in, and we set up our sleeping bags while the ghost hunter crew set up their equipment. We took the tour of the house at night in groups of five. The tour guide led us around. We visited each room with the guide giving a story to each of the rooms. 
we got to a room called the Tapestry Room. This is the most famous and apparently the most haunted room in the building. It's said that Anne was locked in this room and that she died in the room as she stared out the window, waiting for some mysterious stranger to return. Again, the details of this story are online. She was locked in here and sat with her knees to her chin, and when she died her body couldn't be straightened. Anyway, we entered this room and it was freezing. One of the guests in our group, and I don't know if they were paid actors or what, but they collapsed and went into a fit, arms and legs flailing everywhere. An ambulance was called and he was sent to the hospital, which makes me think he wasn't an actor. I don't know why they would go to that length. Apparently it happens often that people go into that room, collapse, and then have seizures. The house is situated on a cliff with the sea in the background. About four years ago, we went for a drive down there on a foggy, cloudy evening. We were looking out to sea and we saw the outline of a ship. It looked like something out of Pirates of the Caribbean, but it floated through the fog and then vanished. There have been hundreds of encounters regarding this house that are noted everywhere on the internet. Everyone has their own stories of visiting from feeling queasy in certain parts of the house to seeing full-on apparitions in the windows to meeting people while on tours that nobody else who was on the same tour remembers. There's also a hole in the ceiling that goes through the roof and this is where the devil or demon flew through to escape from the house according to legend. Over the centuries, the hole has been repaired multiple times, but each time it's repaired, it lasts only a few days, and the hole will come again in the exact same place. Eventually, they stopped fixing it. When I was around 16 years old, my friends and I decided it would be fun to go out to an old abandoned farmhouse that was rumored to be haunted. We didn't really believe in ghosts at the time, but we were fascinated by the thrill of potentially experiencing something paranormal. So on a hot summer night in July, we decided to take two cars out to this abandoned farmhouse. There were six of us in total, it took about 45 minutes to drive to this place, so we left at around 2.15 a.m. because we wanted to arrive at this place by 3, ghosting hour. To get to the house, we drove down a dark, winding rural road with houses few and far between. There weren't any streetlights, so although it was a warm summer night, it still felt scary as we drove through the unfamiliar place in the pitch black. As we arrived at the house, I felt nearly sick to my stomach. I didn't believe in ghosts or the paranormal at the time, but something in my gut just felt wrong. It all felt wrong. The house was situated at the bottom of two hills and there was no driveway in front of it. So we had to park at the top of the hill where there was an area off to the side of the road covered with crushed rock. We got there just in time to fulfill our plan of arriving at ghosting hour. As we walked down the hill, we saw the house. It basically looked exactly how you would picture an old abandoned farmhouse. Exposed gray wood, pieces of siding falling off, and overgrown plants around the entrance. There were two levels to the house. The first level had two windows on either side of the door and the top had three windows, one to the left, one to the right, and one immediately above the door. As we walked closer to the house, we saw that the door was open, so we dared each other to go inside. We formed a line to enter the house. Two of my friends, who were guys, went in front of me, and I was the third in line to enter the house. The first guy is friend number one, and the second is friend number two. As we enter the house, I immediately felt ice cold. 
I have never felt that kind of cold in my life. I felt it in my bones. As soon as I felt the cold, I heard friend number one scream at the top of his lungs. It all happened so fast that I could barely make out what it looked like inside. I mostly remember an uninviting couch laid across the stairs with the living room to the left of the stairs and the kitchen to the right. It was like walking back in time, old floral wallpaper peeling off the walls. In the seconds after friend number one screams, we all run out of the house immediately. As I look back toward the entrance, I notice that only friend number two exited the house behind me and friend number one was still screaming inside the house, like blood-curdling, fearful screams. Everything happened so fast. Friend number two ran back inside the house, grabbed the first friend, and pulled him out. My first friend was so scared that he ran out from the house screaming that something was holding him up in the air by his shirt. He rips off his shirt while he's running, and all I see are three big tears in the back of it. It kind of looked like three prongs from a pitchfork that had been ripped through it, but it didn't end there. As my second friend stepped foot outside the door, he starts yelling in pain. I looked back and he had blood dripping all over his face onto his shirt. I literally felt like I was in a horror movie. He came toward me and I was in full instinct mode. I took my sweater off and gave it to him to try to stop the bleeding. He just tells me that something hit him in the nose and he needs to get to the hospital. So we run back up the hill, which felt like it took a thousand years, and we finally get to the car. When we get in, I handed friend number two a tissue to clean up his nose, and I shined my light on it to see what was bleeding. His right nostril had a clean cut all the way through it. It looked like someone took scissors or shears and cut all the way through, and it got worse. As we're driving away, my friend and I both look back at the house, and there's a candle lit in the top left window. Then, as I looked to the other side of the road, there's this old trailer with a light on and the silhouette of a man with a hat in the window. I'm 100% convinced that this man was an evil spirit. Just the feeling I got off of him staring at me, watching me as I drove by. I still feel chills when I think about it. I felt like it was a warning to never come back to this property. It felt like he was the spirit that hurt both of my friends and he was sending me a message. On the drive back, we ended up bringing my friend to the nearest ER, where they stopped the bleeding and stitched up his nose. He still has a scar from it, and his right nostril still looks dog-eared from where it split apart, and from the stitches where they healed. I will never mess around with the paranormal again. I'm 26 now, and I will never go near a haunted house or any building rumored to be haunted. I did some research about the house, and it turns out that two people died in the left top room of the house. One was by suicide, and another was a woman in childbirth. So it makes sense that there was a couch blocking the path up the stairs. For a little backstory, I have never experienced sleep paralysis before in my life. This is my first experience ever with it. I have three little girls, four years old, two years old, and four months old. Yesterday afternoon, I had been having battery and cold air intake issues with my car, and I needed to work on it in order to be able to get into work on Monday morning. Therefore. My retired grandmother kept the girls overnight to assist me in getting everything that I needed to get done done for work. Let's start with Saturday. Have you ever heard of the creepy fact that if you wake up in the middle of the night for no reason at all, 
it means that somebody was staring at or watching you? This is because it was instinctively bred into us as a protective instinct. Our senses are heightened in this moment to protect us from a possible threat that had been eyeing us down while we're asleep. Well, this happened to me Saturday at 3 a.m. As I awoke, I heard an eerie whistling in my ear. I quickly checked my surroundings, bobbing and weaving my eyes through every crevice that whoever or whatever was watching me could be hiding. I found nothing and heard nothing else, and I was able to doze back off fairly quickly. Sunday night came along, last night. I had trouble falling asleep a lot more than usual, and I wasn't stressed or anything like that. My sleep schedule hasn't changed more than an hour, more or less, and I'm used to getting about six and a half to seven hours of sleep at night, so absolutely nothing was different. I had been tossing and turning from midnight to 1.30 in the morning, going in and out of catnap mode. I couldn't seem to get my brain to have a reasonable reboot. Once I had become comfortable for the last time, I hadn't even noticed that I had finally shut down for a sleep restoration. The first thing I remember is my grandmother's house. It had a dark blue tint that blanketed the whole house. Every room, wall, everything was hued in blue. I remember walking through and checking in each room. I guess I was unintentionally checking on my girls that were sleeping over at my grandmother's house. I felt like I was astral projecting. I knew that I was consciously awake and walking around her house. I knew each room that I was walking into. Whatever my subconscious was worried about, everything was fine. My grandparents and baby girls were all sound asleep, peaceful. I watched them for a couple of minutes, checking their breathing, and then I started to walk home. In a matter of seconds, I was walking through my door my husband still asleep on the couch, but something didn't feel right. The ominous blue light was still blanketing every room, every corner. Imagine putting a blue light bulb in every fixture and then turning them all on. It was like that. I sat at my dining room table to meditate and clear my head before returning my body back to the couch. I needed my conscious to stop wandering and rest. As I sat there, I heard a voice that had multiple tones working together in harmony to create the most demonic and ominous voice I've ever heard. I felt my mind, my body, and my voice lose control. I couldn't move. I couldn't talk. I couldn't think for myself. He took control. The voices got louder. A female voice and a deep male voice harmonized to create a legion-like sound. They kept repeating, you are everything, you are everything, until I began to say it in harmony with them. I had no control. My mind didn't want to repeat it, but I had no choice. I felt like I was being possessed. Anyone could take over what felt like an empty shell I used to call my body at this point. What they were saying changed. The woman's voice disappeared and it was just the deep and demonic male voice I heard now. He said, I am everything, I am everything, repeating and repeating. At this point, I felt my body and mind fighting back. I was fully conscious and awake now, fighting as hard as I could to keep my shell of a body contained by its rightful owner. I was screaming my husband's name, but I knew he couldn't hear me, not yet. I had to keep screaming to wake my body up. I felt my brain's confusion. It was fighting me while I was fighting my demon. We weren't working together and I could sense it all. I started to communicate, trying to move my body. I knew I couldn't. I knew that I was caught. My ribs, my hips, my thighs were glued where I lie on my left side, unmovable. I could only move my head. My screams for my husband became muffled, which is much more than I could say just moments before. I turned my head and looked behind me. I needed to be released. I had to be let go. As I whipped my head to my rear, a tall and skinny shadow towered over me, enjoying my struggle, 
gluing me where I lie. Large, skinny hands with slender, rigid fingers pushed me deeper into my couch, held my body in a trance. There were no features, just a black and haunting silhouette that had been forcing me to say everything I had earlier. He was the one. I was finally able to communicate to my brain to move. Anything, just move. Still a fight that I had to put up, but at least I knew I was finally winning. Finally, my screams were no longer muffled. My husband finally heard me, as a relief had washed over me, and it was gone. I was able to sit up, patting myself with shaking hands to make myself aware that I was back. I was me again, and I finally had control once more. I went out and had a cigarette to calm my nerves. I felt the smoke hit me, and the nicotine soothe my mind, but I still felt and knew the pain, the struggle, and the torture that I had gone through, and I wonder if it will happen again. I don't know who these voices were. I don't know what the demon was that calls himself everything. Will he come back for me again, even when I fought back so hard and won? I can't find the answers that I need, but I know this wasn't just a nightmare or some freak accident. There was a reason this happened to me, and I need to know what it was. A couple of years ago, I was working at a job with somebody who told me, pretty much from the point that I met her, that she was psychic. Now, I'm a believer in the paranormal, in psychics, in energy, all that jazz. It wasn't a stretch for me to believe that she might be telling the truth, but I can assure you now that I very much believe she's the real deal. When the activity started, it was just one very small thing. I had a little arctic fox plushie that I kept on my bed. I would come home to find it being dead center on my bed. It was only ever this one plushie, always right in the middle of my bed. I have a dog and even though she had never moved any of my plushies around before, I kind of shrugged it off and decided that it was probably her moving it each day while I was at work. For days in a row, I would come home to this little fox just sitting there. I'd move it back to its proper spot every day, only to find it in the middle of the bed yet again when I came home from work the next evening. It was weird, but again, I had just shrugged it off as my dog doing these things. The next thing was a bit weirder. I would have vivid dreams, or at least I think they were dreams, where I would be laying in bed in the dark, and suddenly I would feel spiders crawling on my exposed skin. Anything over my blanket would have the sensation of spiders running across it. I would jump out of bed fully awake at that point and turn my light on to investigate. I never found a single spider or bug anywhere. The third thing I experienced was the very last thing I could try to explain away. I was laying in bed one night, kind of drifting off as I listened to a horror narrator on YouTube, something I had accredited to what I saw. I was laying on my back, facing the ceiling and the top of my headboard. My headboard is incredibly high. I have one of those bed dresser headboard combo things. It's hard to explain, but basically my headboard is a tall dresser with cabinets and drawers surrounding my actual mattress. And the part above my bed is this alcove with mirrors and two built-in lights that sit inside of it, with the top of the headboard slash dresser thing being what the lights were fixed into. Anyway, I had a light on the headboard turned on, so as I was blinking in and out of sleep while listening to these stories, I opened my eyes only to see a small black shadow quickly duck behind the ridge of the top of my headboard. I blinked a few times, but I didn't see the shadow again. However, I passed it off by telling myself that it was probably just my imagination from being so tired and listening to scary stories. I turned off my light 
and went to sleep. The fourth and final experience leading up to the end of this story is the one that made me stop denying that something was definitely happening. One night, I was doing my routine of listening to scary stories and relaxing in bed, and I went to plug in my cell phone. The place where I plug in my phone is right next to where I used to keep my chunky rubber bracelets, you know, the ones you would get from Hot Topic or something. So I go to plug in my phone, and as I turn over to put the charger in the outlet, I see, not a foot in front of my face, one of my rubber bracelets move at least an inch to the right, directly in front of me. It didn't roll, it slid across the wooden surface. I sat straight up, surprised. I knew what I saw. There was no explaining that away. I just kind of sat there for a few minutes in a what the hell kind of shock, and eventually I plugged in my phone and went to bed. At this point in the story, I should tell you that I not once mentioned these experiences to anybody. Not my family, not my boyfriend, not my co-workers, nobody. This is important, because the next day after I saw that bracelet move, I went into work. As I sat down at the break room table, only one other person was in the room at the time. You guessed it, it was my psychic coworker. The moment my butt hit the chair, she casually asks me, so what's going on in your room? Stunned, I took a moment to compose myself and then explained, I thought there was something, but I, I wasn't sure. She nodded. Oh yeah, you have a trickster in your room. It probably got in through your mirrors. I was shocked, because to my knowledge, she'd never seen my bedroom. She never even saw pictures that I can remember. There's a chance looking back that I may have showed her a picture of my Halloween setup in my room before, but I honestly can't remember, and I don't think I did. Either way, her words shocked me. I asked her what she thought I should do about it, and she told me to sage my room, especially the mirrors, and to tell it to leave. When I went home that night, I did just that. I actually grow sage in my backyard, and I make bundles to smudge my house on occasion, so getting my hands on some sage was not an issue. I went around my room, smudging my closet, the whole room, and the mirrors, ending at the window that I had open on the far side of my bedroom. As soon as I got to the window to finish my smudging, the whole freaking thing burst into flame. I had to immediately put the smudge stick out, because it just freaking ignited the second I got to the window. Immediately I texted my coworker and told her what happened. She explained that the sage bursting into flames was the entity leaving, a final trick, as it went away. I closed the window and put the sage away, and that was the end of that. I never had anything like what had occurred in the weeks prior happen again. But I have to say, after the whole thing was said and done, I got curious, and I looked up tricksters. And what came up? kind of cemented that this was, in fact, very real for me. One of the ones listed was a spider trickster, and another was a fox. I'm not sure which one it was, but considering it kept moving my fox plushie, I figure maybe that's why. I just thought I would share this experience, and see if anybody else has had any experiences with the tricksters. This all took place six years ago when I was 14. The backstory of this house is quite odd. The official report of the incident that took place here was coincidentally lost. I know that sounds fake and unreal, but I swear on my life that it's true. Nobody has found the incident report. 
Although the story of the house was known by most kids, grandparents, and parents who lived near the house at the time the incident occurred back in the late 80s and early 90s, no official report can be uncovered. The house was occupied by a family of four. The father of the household took the lives of his two children and his wife as they slept, and then he himself went into the basement and took his own life. The neighbor immediately reported the incident after hearing a gunshot from the house. The cops arrived, asked questions, took statements, and removed the bodies. Some of the residents who used to live in the area told the cops that the father of the family wasn't a violent man, and that he wouldn't go and kill his family like he did, and that he must have been possessed. From then up until the day that the building was torn down, after my visit of course, it was reported to be very haunted. My friend, let's call him Mike, invited me over for a sleepover at his parents' rental, which was this house. At the time, I loved ghosts and the paranormal, but he didn't tell me that the house was haunted until I arrived at the house. I was a bit skeptical, but his parents backed him up with the backstory that I had just told you. I arrived at his house and he had everything packed up, from his Xbox 360 to snacks and drinks. All I had was my backpack full of games and my go-to box from the Waffle House, which contained two chocolate chip waffles. We started to head down to the rental, which was in the same neighborhood as Mike's house. We arrived at around three in the afternoon. The house looked quite nice in its simple layout with a separated two-car garage. Just to give you a feel and an insight of the house's layout, when you walk in the front door, immediately to your left was the living room. Behind that was the kitchen. Next to the kitchen, across from where the front door was in the foyer, was the dining room. And behind the dining room was the back door to the back porch. As you walk toward the dining room, the hallway was to your right. On the left of that hallway is first the door to the basement. Next to it is a small closet and next to that was the first bedroom, across from which was the second bedroom and to your immediate right in the hallway was the full hall bathroom. The master bedroom was located directly in the back. When you enter the master bedroom, the bathroom is on your immediate right. To the left of the bathroom is a medium walk-in closet. Across from where you're standing is the bed against the wall with no footboard. We walk in, Mike set up his Xbox and I put all the food in the fridge. We immediately started playing video games after we got the system up and running. After about an hour or so, there was no paranormal activity whatsoever. I eventually got up to go get my waffles because I was tired of Doritos. When I opened the fridge, I noticed that my to-go box was open and that one of the waffles was missing. I knew that Mike couldn't have been the one that took it because he'd been in the living room with me the entire time. So I grabbed the to-go box and brought it back into the living room. I told him what I encountered and he thought it was kind of odd but then he joked saying, maybe the ghost wanted some real food. After about 20 minutes of more video games, we hear a door slam shut. We just looked at each other for a minute and Mike told me to stop smiling so much because it looked creepy, but I was excited to finally catch some paranormal activity. Mike told me to go check on it and without much hesitation, I did. I slowly walked down the hall, checking each room nothing out of the ordinary. When I reached the master bedroom, nothing was out of place, nothing on the bed. I then heard the water running, which I didn't hear when I entered the room, and the door to the bathroom was open, not closed. The same was with the closet door as well, so I couldn't figure out what had slammed shut. I called Mike in to show him the running water, we entered the bathroom, turned the water off, and started looking around to see if anything had fallen or was out of place, but nothing was out of the ordinary. It wasn't until we started to leave when Mike stopped dead in his tracks. I asked him what was wrong, and all he did was point to the bed. I kid you not, the waffle that had disappeared was on the bottom right corner of the bed on a styrofoam plate. I told Mike to go to the end of the hall and asked if he could see it, and he said that he could. But he swears up and down when he walked into the room to check out my find, he didn't see it on the bed, and I hadn't seen it either. 
He told me that if it was on the bed, you could have seen it as clear as day. We both thought it was spooky, but personally, I loved it. We returned to the living room and played some more while discussing what we'd seen. After about 40 minutes, we get the jump of our lives. All of the cupboards and drawers in the kitchen opened and slammed simultaneously. We both jumped out of our skin. I went to check it out, but it was just crazy to think that all the cupboards and all the drawers opened and slammed at the same time. A few minutes later, we hear a small clang coming from the basement. We both ruled out the heater since it was midsummer, and the AC because the AC was already on. It was at this point that Mike decided to bounce because he was officially creeped out. I, on the other hand, decided to stay for the rest of the night. He let me keep the Xbox with me so I would have something to do. About 20 minutes later, Mike calls me. I put him on speakerphone so I could play my game. He asked if anything had happened since he left. And as soon as I said no, a loud bang came from the basement. It sounded like somebody took a crowbar and hit a barrel with it. I immediately rushed to the basement door. I am a bit hesitant at first, but I open the door and flick on the light and run down the stairs with my phone. Mike is dead silent on the other end. And then he breaks his silence as I'm searching for the source of the bang. He asks if there's anything down there, and I told him no. The basement is finished and it's quite big and fully furnished. I see and hear nothing, so I go to leave. I was halfway up the stairs when I hear what sounds like a man moaning in pain at the bottom of the steps. I take off up the steps and slam the door and lock it. I asked Mike if he had heard it on his end and he said he did. And that truly scared the crap out of me. I reluctantly regained my composure and told Mike that I was still going to stay the night. He told me I was crazy for wanting to stay. The true reason I stayed was because I had always wanted to be a paranormal investigator and this was my chance to prove myself. I ended up staying the whole night, playing video games. The paranormal activity did not stop. It was frequent. Every few minutes I would hear one of the doors slam or one of the sinks would start running. At one point, all of the doors shut at once, except for the basement, front, and back door, of course, since they were already closed. The second creepy incident was when I heard the shower in the master bedroom come on. I went to check it out and turned it off. By this point, I was more annoyed than intrigued, because the only thing these ghosts seemed to want to do was mess with me. So anyway, I'm leaving the bathroom, and I scan the master bedroom for anything out of place. And sure enough, I see it. It was small at first, but then it got bigger. It was on the bed. It looked like someone or something was sitting on the edge of the bed, and then started to lay on the bed. But nothing was visible except for the large indent that they were making. I quickly called Mike and told him what I saw. He flipped out and told me I should leave. I told him to relax and said that I was going to be fine. For the rest of the night, the door slamming continued, along with random drawers and cabinets being opened when I knew they were closed. Also, water was running from random sinks, like I said, and those ghostly things went as far as to dump the trash all over the kitchen. Unnecessary. Finally, the sun came up, and I hadn't even gotten a single moment of sleep. I packed up and went to Mike's house and told his parents that I had to keep the house tidy because the ghost really loved trashing the place. This part is the third creepiest thing that happened. When I got back to my house, Mike called me. He sounded completely frantic. I told him to calm down and just tell me what was wrong. He said a little bit after I left his house, his parents went back with him to the rental. He and his parents entered the house, only to see that the entire thing was upside down. The furniture was flipped over. The kitchen was a disaster with water running. Utensils were on the floor. Silverware was everywhere. Trash was on the floor, as well as the contents of the fridge. But there was no sign of forced entry or a break-in, and I know that I made sure all the doors and windows were locked before I left. The fourth incident is the one that really made me crap myself. Mike told me that when they opened the basement door, the inside of the door had long, large, deep scratches carved into it. 
Obviously this scared me and my friend because whatever did that to the door could probably have done that to me while I was in the basement the night before if it really wanted to. The house was demolished a year later and the ground it stood on was blessed by a local Catholic priest. A new home stands there now, but nobody has ever witnessed anything paranormal yet. The house that I grew up in and my parents' denial of its haunting is what got me into the paranormal. So many things happened as I was growing up that for the first years of my life that I can remember, I just thought it was normal. Before I get into the activity, I should probably provide some backstory. My father told my mom long before they bought the house that something demonic was attached to him. He said one day while driving, he looked into the rear view mirror and saw what he could only describe as a demon sitting in the car with him. He won't describe what he saw, but he told her that at the time he felt he'd always been running from it. She firmly believes that he brought this entity into our house and that she and I were both targets of it. Growing up, even my friends knew that my house was haunted. Numerous people I had over would witness doors opening and closing, and every single one of them would feel immensely uncomfortable in the basement. I remember that my former best friend and I would tell my parents about a skeleton that lived in the basement. They would play this off as our imagination, until they also started to become victims to whatever lived in our home. My mom regularly experienced sleep paralysis which in and of itself can be debunked, but not when coupled with the almost absurd amount of poltergeist activity and my parents' accounts of what would happen to me in that house. Not long after her first night of sleep paralysis, the alarm clock she kept by her bed flew off the nightstand and slammed into the wall. I remember hearing a woman screaming at the bottom of our stairs one night, and neither of my parents heard it. I was fully awake, and to this day I get chills thinking about it. Once I was sitting next to an unplugged fan, and it turned on full blast. I would later learn as an adult that an old man had died in my parents' bedroom, which was a hot spot for this type of activity. Hearing footsteps upstairs while my friends and I were in the basement became so real and routine that we called the police at least twice believing the house was being robbed. I saw an apparition of a little girl and a cat sitting at my kitchen table one day. I don't know how, but I somehow became instantly aware that the cat's name was Moonbeam. From that day forward, I regularly felt the cat jump up on the bed and rest at my feet. I would always feel at peace during these occurrences. Once while I was home alone, I felt a sharp sting as though I had been shot with a paintball, and one of my dog's bouncy balls bounced away from me. Something had actually thrown it full speed toward my head. Later that same night, I was watching TV, and it turned to white static, and then a big black X was across the screen. I still believe it's possible that this was a cable glitch of some kind, but I've never experienced it before or since. At this time, my parents had refused to believe me for my own protection. In reality, they were fully aware and were having their own experiences, but they didn't want to scare me. In protest, I set up my webcam to take pictures every few seconds while I went to school. While nobody was home, it captured a large red human-shaped figure standing in the center of my room, facing the camera. Even then, they refused to acknowledge it, but to this day they remember that incident. I remember waking up in the middle of the night, suddenly hyper aware that someone was about to enter my bedroom. I would feel all the hair on my body stand on end, and I would hide under the covers until I felt this presence leave. This became a regular occurrence as I got older. 
As I became a teen and really started finding all of this fascinating, I bought ghost hunting equipment and started using an old version of today's ghost box. Clear as day in the basement, I heard a deep voice call me by my first and last name. I later caught an EVP in my bedroom of two female voices talking about me as if they were wondering if I could hear them. I had indeed heard these voices before, but I couldn't place them. A lot of this probably sounds too intense to be true, and that's okay. But after reading some experiences, I thought I wanted to share mine. I still actively ghost hunt, and now I live very far from the house in which I grew up, but I will never forget it. I have had several paranormal experiences. Many of them took place in a townhouse that I lived in with my mother, brother, and her roommates shortly before going into foster care. There are so many things that took place at this house, but I'll try to summarize some of them here. I can't ask you to believe me. I know that everything I say here probably sounds like a load of crap. It's too unreal. I probably wouldn't believe it either but it did happen to me. It took a long time to convince my parents that this was happening, but then it started happening to them, and now we all know what's really there. I swear on my life that every single word of this is exactly the truth as I remember it. I will never forget this house and our time in it, as it was a very pivotal time period in my life Everything that I had thought life would be like came there to die. This would be the house where my parents would split up. My mother would pick up a meth addiction, which would later be the reason that we were given to foster care, and where I would develop insomnia due to the multiple paranormal events that would soon begin to take place. I had just turned 10 years old when we moved into this house. It was November of 2003. I remember there being a frost on the ground, but no snow yet. It was dark by the time we finished moving, and our parents told my brother and I to go upstairs and start unpacking our rooms, and that they would order pizza. My brother and I went upstairs to see our rooms, and I could see that my parents had given me the bigger room, and with Travis being the younger one, he got the smaller room. I remember going to my room to unpack and I don't exactly remember what made me decide to do this, but something must have shook me, because I remember deciding that night that I didn't want the bigger room. I told my parents I wanted the smaller room, and although they were confused, they agreed to let us switch. So I went upstairs, and we moved our stuff to the opposite rooms. A little while later, my brother and I went downstairs for dinner, and we explored the rest of the house. In this house, there were three levels. The main floor, which had a kitchen, dining room, living room, half bath, and pantry, as well as a deck. Upstairs, which had three rooms, an office, a linen closet, and a full bathroom. And a basement, which had three open rooms and a utility closet. Despite sounding like a pretty big house, it was actually pretty small, outdated, and not in very good condition. We even had a mouse infestation at one point. Anyway, the basement is where we explored after dinner. Our dad went down first, saying that he wanted to show us something creepy. So we followed, and we went down these really creaky old wooden steps. The kind that are open so you can see behind them, if you know what I mean. When we got downstairs, my dad turned on the light in the first room, and we saw that it was mostly concrete, except for the ceiling, which was wood, as the main floor was above us. There were two rooms off of this room. If you were standing on the stairs looking into this first main room, you would see a second room north of it, and a third room east of it. In the first room, however, there was a rope hanging from the ceiling, hung over one of the beams, 
and there was some questionable staining on the floor that also splattered up the side of the west wall. My dad told us someone died down here, and so we should never come down there, otherwise we would see a ghost. My brother and I laughed because our dad was the type that would use things like the boogeyman and woozies to keep us from getting out of bed at night. So I think we both figured he was just trying to scare us from going into the basement. In all honesty, to this day, I still have no explanation as to whether or not the claim that someone died down there was true, or what that mysterious stain was. But after you learn about everything that happened in Unit 53, you can decide for yourself. Fast forward a bit, because I have no recollection of the time between then and this next segment. It was Easter of 2004. My grandma had driven into our town for a yearly visit that she would do every Easter. During her stay, I had asked her to sleep in my room. She slept one night in my room and one night with my brothers. I remember her saying that I should have taken the bigger room because I had much more stuff than my brother and thus making my smaller room seem more uncomfortable for sleepovers. I figured she had a good point and obviously whatever creepy feelings I got on the first night didn't mean anything. After all, it had been months and everything was fine. So I can't recall how soon after she left, but I did end up moving into that bigger room. And that's when things really kicked in. So by this time, after living in this townhouse complex for a while, my brother had made some friends. I, being the antisocial child, stayed inside doing my own thing most of the time. So one afternoon, my brother was playing outside with his friends. My mother was sleeping in her room and I was doing a paint by number of a cat. At this point, my dad had already left us and my mom was on drugs, so she was most likely sleeping after a long night of partying. I really loved doing paint by numbers, so it was kind of a relaxing afternoon for me. As I was doing my thing, the closet door behind me made a quick, loud bang noise. This wasn't new for me. It happened frequently at night and would wake me from a sound sleep. When I would tell my mother about it, she would tell me it was just the house settling. So this time when the closet banged, I thought nothing of it and continued painting. A moment or two passed, maybe less than a minute, and it happened again. But this time, I heard the closet door also slowly slide open. Remembering it now gives me chills. I can still feel the air catch in my lungs as I reminisce of hearing the metal door slide against the metal frame. At this point, I was really reluctant to turn around. I remember trying to convince myself that I was just hearing things, but I turned around anyway, and lo and behold, my closet door was slid open about five inches. I stared at it for a few seconds and forcefully decided that it was nothing. It was probably already open. I'm probably just hearing things. You ever swear you see something move and you find every logical explanation to write it off? I turned back around and picked up my brush to paint again. At that point, I kid you not, a child's voice spoke to me and said, Do you want to play a trick? I remember every hair on my body standing up and feeling completely paralyzed. I didn't scream like you see in the movies, I just simply sat there like I'd been petrified. Finally, I got the courage to stand and I ran right into my mother's room. She was sleeping and I was trembling, tears streaming down my face trying to wake her up. I don't know if you've ever tried to wake someone up who's sleeping off a drug hangover, but it's really difficult. Finally, she woke up enough to ask me what was going on. And I remember saying to her, Mom, there's a kid in my room. Please wake up. It's asking me to play tricks. She mumbled that it was just my brother. I pleaded with her, No, Mom, he's outside playing with his friends. But she wasn't listening. And by the time I finished my sentence, she'd passed out again. I was crying so hard. I had never been this scared in my entire life. 
I peeked out of my mom's door frame and looked down the hallway into my room, and I couldn't see anything. I don't know how long I stood there before I booked it down the hall, down the stairs, and ran outside. I ran into the backyard and found my brother. I was crying while telling him what had just happened. He told me that he didn't believe me, that I was just trying to scare him. But then he told me he had a surprise for me. This surprise was a girl my age. Her name was Sarah, and we ended up being the very best of friends. She came over and asked me why I was crying, but I was too embarrassed to tell her because I didn't want another person to tell me I was crazy. So I shook it off and spent the rest of the afternoon playing with her. Sarah and her brothers would end up finding out that my house was haunted though. Later on, after a particularly scary event in my basement, they would refuse to ever come over to my house anymore. When Sarah and her brother were called to go in for dinner, my brother and I made our way back to our house too, and I started to feel really afraid again. I really didn't want to go into the house. My brother, feeling brave, probably because he didn't believe me at the time, told me to wait outside and he would go in and look around. I waited, and eventually he came back out and told me that he'd checked everywhere and that everything was fine. Little did he know that everything would not be fine, and little did I know that all of this was just the beginning. I used to live in the Philippines, and the house that I lived in was built when the Philippines was being occupied by Japan during World War II. It had two small walkways, one at the side of the house and one at the back. At the corner where the two walkways met is where my dog's huge wooden doghouse was. I say huge because I could literally go in and sleep in it comfortably, and I was a pretty big kid of 12 years old. One night, my uncle told me to go feed Casper. Yes, that really is my dog's name. Of course, I said yes right away because I wanted to play with my dog, so I went. Now, Casper is a happy dog, always running around and always happy to see any of my family. But that night was different. While I was walking towards his doghouse, I realized that I didn't hear him barking or running around so I thought that he was at the back walkway. So I just continued toward the doghouse. It was nighttime, around eight. I stopped halfway through when I noticed that Casper was inside the doghouse. This was worrisome, because he always runs at me when he sees me, so I thought maybe something was wrong, like maybe he was sick or whatever. I quickened my pace to get to him. Once I got there though, he seemed fine. I put down the food and filled up his water bowl. I got no reaction whatsoever. Casper was just staring toward the back walkway. I got curious, so I looked toward where he was looking. And what I saw gives me chills even remembering it. I saw a man standing there just staring at me with a blank expression. He was wearing some kind of military uniform and was holding a rifle. I'm not a gun expert, so I can't tell you what it was. At the tip of the gun rested a bayonet. What got me focused on it was that the bayonet was bloody. At that point, I was just frozen. I remember the fear and thinking, this is it, someone's here and he's going to kill me. I don't quite remember what made me look away from the bayonet, but when I did, the first thing I noticed about the man was that he was now missing half of his face. Seeing him only have half of a face jolted me out of my frozen state, and I ran for it. I didn't care to look back to see if he was following me or not. I even tackled my uncle, who was coming to check on me. I cried so hard when I realized that I was on top of my uncle. He took me inside and waited for me to stop crying. I ended up crying myself to sleep. The next morning, my uncle talked to me about what happened, and I told him everything. He was genuinely worried when I finished, because he told me that I was out there in the walkway for an hour, 
and that was the reason that he had come to check on me. He also told me that I wasn't the only one to experience such things in the house. I later found out that the uniform the man was wearing was the standard Japanese military uniform at the time of World War II. So this took place around 2009, when I was around three years old, so it might be a little bit blurry, but here goes. When I was little, my mom and dad moved around a lot, about seven times in three years, but this house really stuck out from the rest. It was an old Victorian house, which we found out later was a workhouse and an old cottage. It wasn't long until the paranormal activity began happening. I never slept in my room because the blinds would constantly shake with all the windows shut tight. The same thing happened in all the rooms, too. Like someone just went past and pushed them all forward and was gone. But the scariest moment was when my dad was sitting downstairs late one night. My mom and I were upstairs sleeping. My dad got the feeling that he was being watched, so he turned around and saw a tall, dark, smoke-like figure, as tall as the doorway it was standing in. So we're talking about six feet here. My dad thought he was seeing things, so he looked away, and then looked back, but the thing was still there, just standing and watching. My dad, obviously shaken, turned off the TV and got up and that's when the figure vanished in front of him. My dad ran upstairs and didn't speak of it until later. My mom had a weird encounter when she went to use the bathroom one night. She heard somebody breathe directly into her ear. She screamed and thought it was my dad being a jerk, but when she got out, he wasn't there. So she ran upstairs and my dad was next to me sleeping. I had a few weird things happen too, like the time, according to my dad, that I would point out a ghost of a little boy that nobody else could see, except from the time that my cousin came down and swore that he saw a little boy peek around the curtain in the window when he was outside, and as soon as he looked, the boy disappeared. We would also hear childlike running on the stairs and the landing of the house, but we were never upstairs when we heard it. There was also a constant and strong smell of whiskey. When we had done our research, we found that a man who lived there previously and had died there drank cans and cans of whiskey all day, every day. My dad went up to the attic and saw a dusty box in the corner. When he opened it up, tons of old Victorian battered shoes came tumbling out, so delicate that they apparently broke into a couple of pieces such as the soles and the inside of the shoes. We later moved out because when we called a priest over, he was so shaken up that he walked out, telling us to get out of there immediately because whatever was there was pure evil. The house is still up, but it's constantly up for rent or sale. I can't stop thinking about that little boy. He always seemed so sad, which is all I could remember about him. I hope he finds some peace. This story takes place around 2004 to 2006. I was a really young kid at the time. My friend, who I'll refer to as Lance, lived with his mother, stepfather, two brothers, and younger sister. His family ended up moving into a nice, spacious home, which was actually in a pretty nice neighborhood. It was an exciting time for Lance and his family. Prior to this move, he and his family only lived in apartment complexes, so this was a real change of pace, a great transition. Initially, all seemed well within the first few weeks. That is, until one day, 
we all decided to play hide and seek throughout the house. While I was hiding in a room, I got a really strange and eerie feeling like somebody was watching me. I then felt like something brushed across the top of my hair and the whole room got really cold and all of my hair was standing on end. Classic signs of a ghostly presence, I guess. When I told Lance, his family and my friends about the experience, nobody believed me. Fast forward a few weeks later, Lance's mom was laying in bed. Her husband, Lance's stepfather, was at work. She was all alone. Everyone else was away at the time. It was late at night, and suddenly she heard the bedroom door open, and it felt like someone crawled into bed with her. At first, she assumed that it was her husband, but when she turned over, nobody was there. The entire room felt ice cold, and then she heard what sounded like a female voice right next to her. This voice called her name, and that's when she saw the shadow figure standing in the corner of the room. She said she ran out of the room as fast as she could, screaming like crazy, and went onto the front porch, waiting for her husband to return home. After that experience, Lance's mom believed me. Many other bizarre things started occurring around the home. Eventually, everyone started experiencing things that they couldn't explain, so at this point, everyone believed me. One of the spookiest places in the house was the basement. I had a really bad habit of leaving my shoes down there. Lance and I used to spend a lot of time down there because they had a small pool table. Whenever I had to go down there by myself to get my shoes, I always felt like I was being watched. It was such a creepy feeling. I actually just refused to retrieve my shoes a few times because it was that bad. The incident that really amplified everything was one night when Lance and his siblings were all asleep. Lance's stepfather and his buddies were in the living room watching a football game. Suddenly, a lamp in the living room straight up levitated off the table and smashed into a nearby wall. Everybody in the living room freaked out. Moments later, a speaker straight up fell over in Lance's upstairs bedroom for no apparent reason. That's two different poltergeist activities occurring in two opposite parts of the home at the same time. That incident got everyone's attention. One experience that truly creeped me out is when Lance and I were in his room playing video games. This was during the middle of the day. Lance went downstairs to get something while I stayed in his room playing GTA Vice City. I then heard a creaking sound coming down the hallway. The door to the bedroom was wide open. I then spotted a shadow of what looked like a little girl on the wall. At first, I honestly thought it was Lance's younger sister's shadow, so I called out her name, but there was no answer. Then the entire room got super cold, and I heard what sounded like a whisper right next to me. I straight up dropped the controller and ran as fast as I could out of that room. Shadow figures were a common occurrence within the home. That, along with moving objects, cold spots, unexplained voices, and constant footsteps. The upstairs level of the home was beyond scary. I felt bad for Lance that he had to sleep up there. If I lived there, there's no way I could sleep in that room. I never slept over at that house, by the way. I mean, sure, I would stay for hours on end, but... I never fell asleep there. Ever. Lance's mom ended up going through family photos that were taken in the house. There were tons of pictures that had orbs, unexplained faces, and shadowy beings. She was absolutely horrified upon seeing those pictures. At that point, she seriously considered moving. One time, she called in a realtor to discuss selling the home. Out of curiosity and with an odd look on his face, he asked, have you ever experienced anything unusual here? He was clearly aware of the activity in the home. Lance's mom told him briefly what they had experienced, and he then pulled out some documents detailing the history and previous owners of the home. Turns out there were a total of four deaths in the house. 
The first death occurred in the 1960s. Some guy was apparently drunk and fell down the basement stairs and broke his neck. The second death was an old lady who had a heart attack in Lance's mother's bedroom. The third death occurred in Lance's bedroom. Apparently, a lady lived there who was heavily involved with witchcraft. She used to conduct rituals in her home. Her death was a bit unclear. She apparently suffocated or experienced some random health problem, but it was pretty much still inconclusive. The fourth death, or deaths for that matter, occurred in another upstairs bedroom. Apparently, there was a violent domestic occurrence between a husband and a wife. The husband killed his wife and then shot himself. So at this point, Lance's mom felt confirmed that it was time to move. Another terrifying incident involved Lance's younger brother. His brother supposedly spotted a man standing at the top of the stairs, covered in blood, and who had dark blue skin and solid black eyes. His younger brother constantly claimed to see people and figures around the home. As a last ditch effort, Lance's mom called in a priest to bless the home. This was by far the scariest and most paranormal event I've ever personally witnessed. When the priest entered the home, he immediately got a bad feeling, especially in Lance's bedroom. When conducting the blessing, things got intense. Objects around the home started flying all over the place, like something out of a movie. And then suddenly, a bright flashing orb reflected off of Lance's mom's wedding picture and hit her in the chest. She fainted upon contact with this orb. The entire night of the blessing was terrifying. The priest actually stayed the night. When he returned home, he claimed that the spirit followed him. So in conclusion, Lance and his family eventually moved out. The blessing was a total failure. The house was too creepy to stay in. I get chills just telling the story. To this day, I still drive past the house every now and again, and it still gives me the creeps. Someone else lives there now. I guess you could say I took a piece of the house with me, because I actually do own an original object from the home. They were found in the attic. There were three miniature statues, along with a book about the occult that Lance's mom found up there. She was about to throw all the items out. She threw away the book, but I took the statues. To this day, they're still in my possession, on a shelf, in my bedroom. Although, I've never experienced anything paranormal from them. Not yet. My parents bought the house we're currently living in two years ago. It has four levels, not stories, just levels. When you enter the house or main floor, to your left are the stairs that lead to upstairs, quote unquote. Next to those stairs are the ones that take you downstairs and to the left of those are the basement stairs. We live in Arlington, Texas. We moved into this house in the summer of 2017. Before we moved in, we would stay the weekends and paint the house. We stayed in Fort Worth on the weekdays so we could continue school. After our first night of staying here, I had a nightmare that a little boy was in our house. He would follow me wherever I went and pushed me off a chair I was standing on. That's when all the nightmares began. After several weeks of living there, I was in the dining room cleaning. My back was facing the staircase that led to the upstairs. Once you go up the stairs, it's like a little balcony. I suddenly had the feeling that I should turn around. I slowly turned my head and in the corner of my eye, I could see what looked like a little boy. He was dangling his legs between the railing. I quickly turned my head all the way to see who was there, but nobody was. It was just an empty staircase. My whole family was downstairs in the living room too, so it wasn't any of them. I thought I was just seeing things, so I didn't mention it to anyone. 
The location where I saw this little boy is right outside my bedroom door. Some time had passed and I hadn't seen anything else. Out of the blue, my older sister had admitted to me that she saw what looked like a little kid standing at the top of the staircase close to where I saw him. My mom overheard what we were talking about and told us that she too had seen something. One day she was heading down to the basement. The basement is dark and the lights take a few seconds to turn on. It's also dark down there because there's only one window. She saw what looked like a hunched over man run past the stairs and out of her view. There are closets on both sides of the stairs, so they block your view of seeing the whole basement. You can only see straight ahead. If you stood looking down the stairs, you would see the closet with some metal tank thing inside. I think it's for the air conditioner. You can't go in there. Although, in the closet there is a hole that leads to under the stairs. You can't reach the hole because half of it is blocked off with wood. She saw this hunched over man run into that closet. After seeing that, she was too scared to go downstairs for the rest of the day. In our basement is also our laundry room. All the lights in the basement have a delay. My older sister told me that when she walked into the laundry room, she could see the outline of a man standing in the corner. She froze for a few seconds and then the lights turned on and there was absolutely nothing there. She was looking at the shadow when she turned the light on and it just disappeared. Nothing to make a shadow look like a man was there either. My mother also said that she saw a man walk past our back door. He was tall and all she could make out was his silhouette. We have a big sliding glass door. She went to investigate and nobody was in our backyard. Our yard is pretty long and our fences are tall. We also had our dog in the back at the time. He didn't like strangers being in our backyard and he would bark like crazy and jump on them. One night while I was sleeping, my mom woke me up frantically. She asked me if I was humming. I told her that I wasn't humming, I was sleeping, and that I wanted to go back to sleep because I had school the next day. She proceeded to tell me that when she was walking up the stairs to go to her room, which is right across from mine, she heard humming. It was soft, slow humming, and it sounded like it was coming from my room. She thought she had caught me staying up late, so my mom slowly opened my door. She could make out what looked like a small child kneeling at the foot of my bed, watching me sleep. The humming stopped when she turned on the lights, and the figure disappeared too. I told her that I didn't hear any humming, but after that I was too scared to go back to sleep. I don't remember when this happened, but my brother-in-law and my older sister's bedroom is downstairs. He told me that one night, he randomly woke up and didn't know why. That's when he noticed the silhouette of a really tall man standing at the foot of his bed. He didn't really care though and went back to sleep. He told my sister in the morning what he saw and she freaked out. One night, when my mom was in her room alone, she heard knocking on her bedroom window. Our rooms are on the second floor. Her window faces the front of the house. The front lawn is on a steep hill. She opened the curtains, but nobody was there. Sometimes, out of the corner of my eye, I can see the silhouette of a tall man standing at the stairs that lead upstairs. But when you turn to look, no one is there. Heavy footsteps can be heard coming upstairs from the basement, but no one is ever there either. The kitchen faucet has turned on by itself twice now. Small things disappear, like utensils. What really scared me the most was when my baby sister, who was three or four at the time, randomly told me one night that there was a man under our bed. Not a monster, a full-grown man. Almost every single night I have a nightmare, and I'm always dying in them. My death is different in every single one. Sometimes I'm murdered, sometimes it's an accident, a natural disaster, natural causes, the list goes on and on. We have smudged the house numerous times. We put cinnamon sticks at every single window and circle the house with salt. The little boy has seemed to disappear. 
But now we see or hear the man more and more. We've asked our neighbors who have lived here previously, but they don't know. We're all new to the neighborhood. I've tried finding stuff online about our house, but I can never find anything. What should we do? Everybody is too afraid to be home alone. No one likes the basement. I'm scared to leave my room at night. I have a feeling that something is under the stairs, but I know that nothing can get under there. Nobody can fit, except of course for maybe a child. My wife and I have been house shopping for several months now, so it's become a normal weekend tradition for us to meet up with our realtor and walk through houses. This past Saturday, a place popped up that was in a nice area and for a decent price, so we decided to see it the following day. We drove out to this place and met up with our realtor at about 10 a.m. on Sunday. We started our walk through, and as soon as we walked in, it was obvious that the place had been inhabited by somebody very elderly. Not only were there dated wallpapers and strange color choices, but there was also a stair chair, those powered chairs on a track, leading to the basement. We walked through the kitchen and bedrooms and everything seemed pretty nice. Then we came to a room that appeared to be an old craft room with built-in shelving and a desk. Once we'd seen all of the first floor, we decided to check out the basement. It's important to know that the lights in the basement did not turn on. I think there may have been some breakers flipped because some other room lights didn't work either. The basement layout is such that once you descend the stairs, you must either go left or right. Left leads into an older finished portion of the basement and right leads to an unfinished utility area. The realtor, my wife, and I all go to the right initially. I'm checking out the water softener system and the shelving and storage when my wife decides to go check out the finished portion. After a second, I hear her commenting about how she just could not go into that room. I chuckled to myself, assuming she was just being cheeky because it was a dark old room. The realtor decided she would go check it out, but immediately turned around and made a similar comment. I was amused because I just assumed they were playing off of each other's fears and getting freaked out because it was a dark, creepy room. Armed with my phone flashlight turned up as bright as it would go, I decided that I would check out the room since they didn't want to go in. I walked in confidently, but only made it about a couple of steps before being frozen in my tracks by paralyzing anxiety. I felt chilled to the core and I physically tensed up and recoiled at the sensations I was feeling. I felt no apprehensions about going into this room prior to stepping in. Although my wife and the realtor had felt uncomfortable going in, I honestly had no reservations. I simply wanted to see the space. But in an instant, I knew that I was not welcome in that room. I had stepped into a place occupied by someone or something else and it did not want me there. I looked left and right into the darkness, a darkness that my phone light could not seem to penetrate save for the small window at the far end of the room, gently glowing from the overcast day outside. It seemed that no light could get into this room. I started to feel sick and decided to get out of there quickly. I stepped back out of the room to the base of the stairs and suggested that we all head back up. As we walked outside to the backyard, we all felt the need to discuss what had just happened to us. My wife divulged that she actually felt a physical force push on her shoulders as she tried to walk in, as though keeping her out. As in, she literally felt something push her as she tried to enter, which is why she made the comment about not being able to go in. The realtor seemed to have a more similar experience to mine, with extreme anxiety and a feeling of not being welcomed. We walked the lot and headed back up to the house to close the shades and turn off the lights and all those things. As my wife walked up the stairs, our realtor noticed that she had a piece of yellow lace hanging off of her sweater. 
Normally, this wouldn't be alarming, and admittedly, it's very likely just a result of static cling. But given the experience we had had, it just seemed more sinister. We went back into the house, and our realtor grabbed the piece of lace and left it in the old craft room. We didn't want to take anything from that house home with us. We all left the house, locked up, and talked a bit more about it in the driveway. Later that night, as I laid down for bed, I was in that space between sleeping and waking, and I had a brief dream. I was back in that house, but at night. I stood at the top of those stairs and looked down them. When the electric stair chair started to descend by itself, I felt as though I was being baited back into the basement. I woke up pretty quickly, and thankfully I didn't dream about it again. I'm obviously open to the paranormal, but am generally a skeptic. I believe that most things have a reasonable explanation, and this may well have one too. But after reflecting on it for a couple of days, I'll suspend my reasoning and just talk about what I feel. I feel like there were actually two entities in that house, an old man and an old woman. I assume the former residents. The upper floor was her space, and she made it feel welcoming and light. I think she's the reason for the yellow lace on my wife's sweater. I think the basement room was his domain, and he did not appreciate the unannounced company. Not that he meant any harm, but more of a get-out-of-my-house type of reaction. No matter the reality of what happened, nor the intentions of any entities there, I don't think we'll be putting in an offer. At 16, I was responsible for getting my seven-year-old sister on the bus for school. I always had to get her dressed, feed her, and tie her hair up in a ponytail. One morning, I was sick, but I got her up as usual and got her off to school. I was super nauseated and laid on the couch with a trash can next to me. The TV was playing some cartoon on Disney, and I had my arm covering my eyes as I laid there. I was dozing off as I heard my sister come into the living room and say, Sissy, will you tie my hair up? Not really thinking about it, my eyes still covered. I held out my hand, waiting for her to place her hair tie in my palm. Whatever this thing actually was must have realized that it couldn't give me what I was asking for. And right around that time, I realized that I had already gotten my sister up and on the bus that morning. So whatever was standing next to me wasn't my sister at all. As I sat up, spooked as hell, the thing ran off. I could hear its footsteps running through the kitchen and down the hallway. I didn't see anything, no apparition, just sounds. I walked to my grandmother's house about a block away, and shortly after that I moved in with her because my mother and I couldn't get along. Weird things like that happened all the time on that property. What I didn't expect was for it to follow me to my grandmother's. Two weeks after moving in, I was in the room with the door cracked. I was home alone, and it was late. My brother, who was 15 at the time, was always at the neighbor's house and would stop in to shower, eat, and sleep. I heard him come in, go into his room, and fiddle around. I could hear him talking, like he was on the phone with someone. I called for him, and he didn't respond, so I assumed he was just pranking me. I got up and left my room, and his bedroom door across the hall was closed and locked. I stuck my thumbnail into the keyhole and popped it open, planning to scare him. When I opened the door, his lights were off. His room was dark, and it was empty. I flipped the light on and started investigating. I opened the closet, looked under his desk, and assumed that he'd gone out the window and was going to come back in and scare me or something. When I checked the window, it was bolted down, something my grandmother had done to keep him from sneaking out. I was perplexed, and then spooked. I left his room to go check the rest of the house, and as I was walking down the hallway and into the living room, I heard someone running hard behind me. As I turned around, this nothing of a presence ran right through me, 
and took my breath away. I fell to the floor, feeling like I'd just gotten socked in the gut. When I came to, I ran next door to find my brother passed out on the couch with his friends. It was an absolutely terrifying experience and one that I will always remember. I don't know what that thing was, but it mimicked my siblings perfectly. Their voices, their footsteps, their actions, everything. This happened a few years ago. I still remember it pretty clearly because it's so strange and I never really found an answer to what it was. It was during a visit to my grandmother in a small village in Mexico. To give some context, my parents and I visited for about a week and during that week, my mother's cousin also passed. He was in a car crash, which I'll use the term loosely the local government was deeply involved. Months later, it turned out that he was actually murdered by the local cartel there. That really is a whole other story in and of itself, but I decided to mention it because it did happen the same week that we were visiting. As you can probably tell overall, that entire week was tragic and also extremely odd. Some background. It happened about a night before we got the news about the passing. My uncle lives on the same plot of land that my grandmother does, and he owns a farm of chickens and roosters. My grandma's sister, the mother of the guy who passed, is technically their next door neighbor. They own a plot of land right next to my grandmother's. My grandmother's plot of land is actually adjacent to the local elementary school there. So her house isn't in the middle of nowhere, However, she does have a good-sized plot of land that's surrounded by concrete walls for protection. The streets around her land only really get foot traffic when school is in session. Given the climate at the time, any kind of foot traffic stops by sunset. The village itself is pretty poor, and everyone is familiar with each other there. They have a few rich, but no middle class. Most houses are about equivalent to shacks. My grandmother owns a concrete house that is decently sized, but otherwise plain. It was during the summer when my parents and I visited. I was on summer break, and so were the schools there. My parents and I were the only people there visiting my grandmother at the time. Every night, time is taken to make sure that all the doors are completely locked before heading to bed. There are three doors that lead to the outside. All are made of metal, with also a mesh frame door to keep the bugs out. That night, I distinctly remember asking my mom to help me lock the front door. It's a heavy metal door with a secured lock that I was having difficulties closing. We also checked to make sure the other doors were secured and locked. I'm going to mention the layout of my grandmother's house briefly since it is somewhat important. The first room you enter, which is the door I was having a hard time closing, is basically a room with a bunch of beds. To the right is what is referred to as the middle room, which is just another bedroom. It connects the first room to my grandmother's room. You can look into the middle room and also see the first room when both doors are left open. These two doors usually are left open because they're heavy and they scrape against the concrete floor very loudly. Before heading to bed, I plugged my phone in the middle room to charge, which is where my dad was going to sleep. My mom and I were sleeping in the same room with my grandmother. My mom and I shared a bed that was right next to the door that leads to that middle room. Right before falling asleep, I could see into the first room because the two doors were left open, like always. I had no recollection of any nightmares or dreams. I basically slept in pitch black until I woke up at an unknown time, completely terrified. My eyes basically shot open, and I had this indescribable sense of fear. The first thing that I noticed was that the door next to me was completely shut. I didn't want to move, even in the slightest. I didn't really know what to think. I felt too scared to even close my eyes. I just laid there, 
completely still for an unknown amount of time. I came to the conclusion that I would rather wait for the sun to come up than to close my eyes again. I was that scared. Eventually, I heard the chickens starting to make noise, so I figured the sun was going to come up in the next couple of hours or so. However, I noticed that the chickens were actually going crazy. It almost sounded as if they were afraid of something. This deepened my fear, but I was still too afraid to move. At this point, I was wondering why it hadn't woken up my mother or my grandmother, who were both extremely light sleepers. I was the heaviest sleeper in the family, yet the chickens weren't waking either of them up. Eventually, they all settled down, and there was no sign of any sunlight. I occupied my time just listening to the air conditioner in the middle room. It's pretty old, the kind that you have to use a hose to water down. It makes a continuous noise, and then occasionally sputters, but its noises are almost a routine, so they're somewhat comforting. I could also hear the bed in the middle room creaking around, which I figured was my dad moving around in his bed. Again, I couldn't see into the middle room. I found it odd that the door was closed. I'm a heavy sleeper, so I figured that there was a possibility that I remained asleep when somebody closed them. I remained still for who knows how long. But then I heard a noise that I had never heard before. It was extremely loud and it came from the middle room. The volume was just as loud as a large bird, but didn't sound anything like a bird. I was petrified and had no idea why it didn't wake anybody up. Again, I can't even really describe the noise. It's like nothing I've ever heard before or since. I still laid there, completely still, long enough to listen to this noise over and over. I wanted to think that it was the air conditioner, until that noise happened at the same time as this other one, and I knew it couldn't be. I wanted to think it was the creaking of the bed, but eventually those noises happened at the same time too. I didn't find it odd until later exactly how much the bed was creaking. Nobody moves around that much in their sleep. At this point, I felt like I was just going crazy. I still laid completely still, just stuck, listening to this noise. Eventually, a second noise started to emerge. It sounded about the same as the first noise. However, it was distinguishable, like when two people speak. It was as if they were conversing back and forth. I started to move my arm against my mom while whispering, Mom! Mom! Over and over, trying to wake her up. Like I said before, she's an extremely light sleeper but it looked like she was in a deep sleep. It got to the point that I was basically shaking her and moving her around. Finally, her eyes shot open, and in that moment, she actually heard the last noise that came from the middle room. She looked petrified, looked at me, and the first thing she said was, that noise isn't from this world. After that, the noises completely stopped. My mom got up and tried to open the door leading to the middle room as slowly as possible, but it still made a lot of noise. The door opening woke my grandmother up. When we got into the middle room, there was nothing in there, and my dad was still fast asleep. I checked the time on my phone, and it was around 3 a.m. Apparently, both doors in the middle room were completely shut. When we started checking around the house, we noticed that all the doors were left open. My grandmother said she opened them during the night, which explains that. It was extremely odd that she would do something like that, to say the least, but she's old and can sometimes be unreasonable. We looked around and checked out the outside, but aside from the doors, nothing was out of place. All we could really do was close them again and go back to bed. The next morning, I woke up to my mom talking about the event to my uncle and some other family friends who came over to have breakfast. She concluded on her own that it was a brujera or witch. I don't really know what it was. I only ever bring it up when a close friend talks about odd occurrences or aliens. There have been a few more unexplained events, but this one was the last and strangest thing to happen to me. 
And otherwise, my life has been pretty normal. I have so many spooky things that have happened to my family and I that it's not even funny, but by this thing I was the most creeped out. I used to live in a haunted house for two years. I moved to another city for school and moved in with my best friend as a roommate. The whole apartment building was built in the 1800s, and as far as I know, we lived in the servant side of the apartment building. That also kind of explains why there were always things happening there. Especially if we left a mess in the apartment. I really can't even detail all of the things, you would need a whole book for that, but I'll mention a few things that happened here. One thing that happened quite early on living there was that both of our tweezers went missing. We bought new ones the next day and they're absolutely nowhere to be found. Of course, we argued about this, blaming each other for the missing tweezers, but went on to buy one pair to share, and the next day they were also gone. A few days went by and we were out shopping for a few hours. When we got home, the freaking five pairs of tweezers that by now we had bought and lost were lined up on our kitchen table, right down the middle of it. We slept in the same bed that night, we were so scared. My cat used to hate that place. He became very stressed out and had a lot of hair loss issues, which never happened before or after moving in or out of there. He would also wake up from a deep sleep to hiss at the same spot many times. That spot was in a hallway in front of every door, and it was sometimes cold there. My roommate's clock would drop from the sofa or from the table right in front of us, or completely turn around. We both saw that happen. One time, we were at the line to a bar, and my roommate noticed that she'd left her phone at home. We lived in the middle of the center of the city, so she went to grab it. She came back really quickly and was white as a sheet. She had an automatic lock on her phone, so that after like two minutes of nobody touching it, it would lock up. At that point, we'd been gone for about 15 to 20 minutes, and you would also need a password to enter her phone. She went home, and in the dark living room, her phone was sitting there, unlocked. Needless to say, we also shared the bed that night as well. We had numerous accounts of waking up at night to what sounded like somebody washing dishes or walking upstairs. We also heard sawing upstairs and we lived on the top floor. Above us was only the attic. There were many things and I really wish I'd written them all down, but I was just trying to live there while I was scared as hell. I'm very sensitive to things like this, and I never slept there alone. Not even one night. I was too scared. I had sleep paralysis there so many times. And, interestingly, that never happened before I moved in or after I moved out. I'm sure that we were never there alone. And for everyone wondering, no one had a key to the apartment except my roommate and I. We only had one neighbor, a young couple who lived next door and there were only business spaces in the apartments below. To this day, we don't have any explanation for the things that happened there. I grew up in Southern Idaho and I moved to Eugene, Oregon around age 20. We moved into our newly built home in the countryside at the start of the millennium, literally months after my grandma on my mom's side, who I call Nana. I was about eight or nine at the time, and I lived there until I was 17 when my dad kicked me out of the house. After that, I went and lived with my grandparents about five miles away, whose house was also haunted. They too had built their own home. To put things into perspective for some things that happened, our house was set five miles from any town in the middle of fields with only a few houses about a half mile away. One of those houses was my cousin's. My uncle had built his family's house there and my dad was really close to him, part of why we built there. 
it too had some weird things that happened that my cousins and I experienced. The first thing that was odd happened when we were moving our stuff from my dad's parents, the grandparents that I later lived with, into our new home. We lived in their basement, but it was a one-story house. I'm obsessed with Star Wars and had little ships that I played with as a kid. My favorite one was a TIE fighter. I was playing with it one day while the movers and my parents packed and moved things. At one point, I set it on a chair in my parents' room while I was alone downstairs. I ran out of the room, turned the corner, ran up the stairs, realized that I had left it on the chair and immediately ran back. When I got there, it was gone. I had only been gone about 10 seconds, if that, and no one had gone by me at any point. It was a small, narrow basement, so I would have had to have passed anybody who went to move it. I looked everywhere and even emptied the entire room, but I never found it. The setting of our house was a two-story, three-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath with an unfinished basement. My room sat directly above the garage, my parents' room above the living room, and the house was surrounded by one-and-a-half acres of lawn and about three acres of woods on one side with fields on the other. My cousin's house sat between the fields and the forest with a path leading between our houses. Growing up in our new home, we had some weird things happen every now and then that we all experienced at one point or another. Lights would turn on by themselves. We had security cameras and caught that several times. All of us would often hear the garage door open, a car drive in, and the garage door close. Then we would hear the door to the house open and close often when somebody was gone. Sometimes only one of us would hear that. Other times, two of us in different rooms would hear it. My parents were very rarely home, so it was always pretty much impossible that somebody was in the garage. I like to joke that I was an only child raised by five cats. My dad would often hear loud music with a strong bass line when home alone. He would come out of the room thinking it was me playing music, and sometimes the stereo would be playing music and other times it wouldn't, but every time he was home alone. When I was around 12 or 13, I used to spend the night in our guest bedroom that we had set up as an exercise room for fun and watch movies all night. That ended one night when I woke up sometime in the night to the TV turning off and on rapidly, even though it didn't have a remote. I immediately ran to my parents' bedroom and I barely slept that night. Later that year, I went to a summer camp at a martial arts studio with just a few friends. We played hide and seek, but got freaked out after two different TVs started rapidly turning on and off on their own, even while we held the remote to both of them with the batteries taken out. Since our basement was unfinished, we stored things down there. My dad is a slight bit of a hoarder and had kept a lot of his art from art school downstairs. I admittedly went through boxes downstairs often, still looking for that Star Wars ship for years, but I never did find it. One time, my mom and I went to visit her dad in California. When we came back, my dad scolded me for taking all of his art out downstairs. I told him that I hadn't touched his art at all and actually didn't know that he had art down there, which was true at the time, as it was really buried under a lot of stuff. He said he'd gone down one night to find a lot of his paintings, drawings, and even a sculpture laying on top of boxes around one of the unfinished rooms, as though somebody had been looking at them. Even creepier was that while one sculpture was laying on boxes, another, mind you these were heavy plaster sculptures, was smashed in two on the floor. The downstairs always had a weird vibe, and after that, if you stood at the top of the stairs, it felt like you were being watched from the bottom. We had a few weird things that would happen outside our house, too. Since we had a massive lawn, we had a big sprinkler system that could run off the canal for the farms or off of our well water. One summer, our pump was sabotaged at the standpipe by the canal. At the time, we thought it was a farm's kids playing a prank, and we just switched over to well water. A few nights later, though, we went outside for some reason, 
and we heard splashing water almost like a geyser coming from out of the dark. My dad went to investigate and found the test tap for our well full open, which was hard to do. We got it shut off, but for some reason our well pump seemed to be still running, so we needed to shut it off via a valve box in the ground. When we opened it, it was completely filled with dirt, and we had to dig it out. We asked around, but never figured out what happened. My cousin's house, like I said, was about a half a mile away, and I would often play with them. They said that they would hear screaming from their basement on occasion, and often heard footsteps coming up from the basement when no one was down there. On a couple of occasions, I would be at their house and see what looked exactly like a red laser pointer on the wall, as though someone far away was pointing it through the window, but then it would go up the stairs which was far above the window. Later, they moved out of the state, and it sat empty for a number of years. I would still wander around their house on occasion, and several times I saw this laser pointer. Mind you, like I said, we were out in the middle of fields and forest, with the next closest house at least a mile away. At night, lights in their house would be on randomly, and then off the next day or night. Growing up, we'd often visit my grandpa in Eugene, Oregon, he built his house as well, but it was a massive house that looked and smelled old. We'd stay on the second story in the bedrooms my mom, her sister, and brothers used to live in. I stayed in a small bedroom that had a walk-in closet with its own locking door. Weird, too, because it was locked on the bedroom side, and even had a latch for a padlock in addition. On occasion, I would wake up to find the door open and then go back to sleep and then it would be closed in the morning. Often I had nightmares in that room and would run to sleep in my parents' room. That stopped though because I would then have very vivid night terrors about their closet and wake up screaming. After that I just put up with the weird walk-in closet in the other bedroom. I'm pretty sure my grandpa's house was haunted because my grandma was an avid antique collector for the entire time she was alive. A lot of stuff gave off weird vibes. My dad says that he often felt a cat jump into the bed, even after the cat died in that house. Lots of people have heard footsteps and felt cold spots throughout the house, and sometimes you can hear whispering somewhere in the house but never pinpoint where. The weirdest thing that ever happened to me though was right before my dad kicked me out of the house. Keep in mind, I get really dehydrated super easily, and I can easily drink at least a gallon of water a day. It's always been that way too, I don't know why. One night I had a dream that was actually very pleasant. At one point though, I became extremely thirsty in the dream. I kept looking for something to drink but I couldn't find anything. Then this really kind, beautiful lady showed up and offered me some Skittles. I know that sounds really dumb but I really liked Skittles at the time. I started eating them, thinking that it somehow might quench my thirst but I was still just so thirsty. Seeing this, the lady seemed concerned, so she kept giving me Skittles, and I would take them and eat them while just standing there smiling. She would give me more. This went on for a bit, but then I realized my hand was hitting something in real life, which started to wake me up. I woke up with my hand hitting the wall because it was reaching off to the side of the bed for the Skittles and hitting the wall instead. When I realized this, I looked up involuntarily, and standing there, smiling down at me, with a white glow, was the same lady. I just sat there for a moment, shocked, and then I bolted out of the room, ran downstairs, and drank some orange juice, and when I came back, she was gone. Over the years, I have felt bad for running out of the room, since it seems like she genuinely wanted to help, and she didn't seem malevolent at all. She looked to be maybe in her late 30s or 40s. I never saw her again, either. There were lots of little things, like stuff moving around and hearing it move at night. I would think it was my cats, but then I would find all of them asleep downstairs. Lights we thought we'd turned off when we left the house would be on once again when we returned, and doors would be opened that we thought we had closed. One cat that I truly considered mine and was close to had some strange occurrences around my parents. 
He would constantly try to get into my parents' bedroom, where one of our cats took up permanent residence the entirety of her life. All of our doors were round knobs, and my parents would lock their door at night. My dad has OCD and checks all of the doors and windows every night, so there's no way that a door isn't locked after he checks it. He'd often come back multiple times too, and find them unlocked again even when my mom and I were both out of town. Anyway, my dad would often wake up in the middle of the night to see the door open, and my cat standing there as though he'd opened the locked, round knob door handle. It happened more than once, too. I never figured that out. My cat would also turn on faucets and flush toilets randomly. He was really smart. My cat died earlier this year, at the old age of about 20. On the night he died, I was asleep and felt a cat jump into my bed. I'm now living in Southern California, no pets, just a girlfriend that lives with me, and immediately come and cuddle up familiarly next to me. I even felt the warmth and was very happy. After a bit, it faded away and I came to my senses. I called my dad and said, he didn't die, Daddy. My dad said he had died just a few hours earlier. It hasn't just been houses that I've had stuff happen in either. On two separate occasions in two different apartments in two different states, I've been asleep and had an experience that I can only describe as attempted demonic possession. I grew up in an overly religious family, Mormons to be specific, but was never welcomed there. And I was often bullied for being the weird kid for, of all things, liking Star Wars and video games. Welcome to Farm Town, USA, I guess. Around age 14, though, I stopped going to church, really, and became a staunch atheist. Around age 19 after college, I was still living in southern Idaho in my own apartment. One night, I woke up sweating, unable to get my body to move, but with my limbs shaking and flailing rapidly, almost inhumanly. It was extremely dark, and I couldn't open my eyes, but a slight slit before they'd close really tightly again. While all of this was happening, all hope and happiness seemed to drain, and I felt like I just wanted to die. Even being an atheist, I started to pray like when I was a kid. Within moments of starting to pray, everything went back to normal, and I was able to open my eyes. I let out a gasp like I hadn't breathed for minutes, and was sweating profusely. I got up and watched funny Netflix shows for the rest of the night. I experienced the same thing, but even more forcefully again years later. But this time in Eugene, Oregon. Once again I started praying, and again it receded after a few minutes. It's been five years since then, and it was shortly after that that my current girlfriend moved in with me. The last one I remember was at a work friend's house when I was 18. I'd gone over to fix her computer and was removing some viruses when I noticed that she was just standing at the door to her garage, staring intently at the door at the back of her garage. I asked her what she was looking at, and she told me that sometimes she gets weirded out by the door at the back of the garage. I went to look, and the moment I saw it, I felt like my spine had a current of electricity running down it. Having grown up with weird stuff in my house, I decided to investigate. The closer I got, the more intense the feeling. Standing in the frame of the door, it felt surreal. Almost like I was standing in some sort of otherworldly portal. Then, the moment I stepped onto the other side of the door frame, everything returned to normal and felt boring. I looked back through at my friend watching me, feeling kind of bored like nothing had really happened. The moment I stepped back through, though, the feeling of electricity flowing through me returned until I left the garage. These are all the experiences I can remember. I don't know if all of these houses are haunted, or my family's haunted, or I'm haunted. But what I do know, or at least what I think is interesting, is that everybody in my family built their own homes, yet they were all haunted. Maybe one of those things, or several of those things, followed me. I don't know, but these are my experiences.
When I was a teenager, my family moved into a new house in Ohio. As soon as we moved in, my mother started saying that she felt that the house was haunted, that she could sense a presence there. She said that she heard someone call her name, and that she felt somebody put a hand on her shoulder. One time, she woke up with someone holding her feet down, and she couldn't shake whatever it was and started screaming. She also heard muffled voices. We didn't believe her at all, until both my sister and I started experiencing strange things of our own. My first experience was when I was reading a book in my bedroom at 3 a.m. I'm a night owl, and it wasn't that unusual. Everyone should have been asleep, but suddenly I heard very heavy footsteps right outside of my bedroom door. They were too heavy to be my mom's or my sister's, so I just assumed that my dad was walking around checking up on us. I sprinted to the door, and when I opened it, I was shocked to discover that the hallway was dark and nobody was up. Our attic had several feet of fluffy insulation covering the entire area. There was nothing stored there, and at times you could hear steps coming from the attic, running up to the side of the house with the driveway when somebody was pulling up to the house, as if they were trying to see who had arrived. It was almost cool in the daytime, but at night, it was terrifying. There was something always clicking loudly under my bed and in the closet at night. I always tried to convince myself that it was the air vents. However, all of the air vents were on the other side of the bedroom, and they never made clicking noises. I sometimes saw an outline of a person standing next to my bed. I would only ever see this if my head was covered with a sheet. When I pulled the sheet off, nobody was there. I heard sighs, as if somebody was standing right behind me. And one time, I heard a whisper say, Come play. I prayed a lot, and that usually helped. I had also asked them to quiet down, and that seemed to help as well. One time, my boyfriend and I were doing homework in the basement. We heard the garage door open and the voices of my parents in the kitchen. We ran up to say hi, just to discover an empty house. Another time, my boyfriend stayed overnight in our house. He slept in the living room. In the morning, he asked if we were playing a joke on him last night, as he kept hearing a ball bounce on the stairwell leading up to the bedrooms on the second floor and in the kitchen, but every time he got up to see what was going on, nobody was there. I don't think we even owned a ball, and we certainly didn't play with one in the house. One time my mom heard a baby cry outside of our house at night. We lived in a safe and perfectly normal suburb, and there was no reason that a baby would be in our backyard. One day a lid flew off of a cooking pot and got halfway embedded into the kitchen ceiling. It wasn't a pressure cooker, it was just a regular lid and a pot. Another time, we left for a family vacation and my boyfriend was asked to take our paper in. He said he was in the house and decided to make my bed for me. We had left at some ungodly hour of 5am or something, and I had never gotten around to it. He said that at first he got a juice and felt like somebody was breathing down his neck. He kept turning around to find that nobody was there. Then he walked upstairs, and while he was making my bed, he felt something grab his legs from under the bed. He got freaked out and ran out. He refused to enter the house again and just diligently hid the papers behind a flower pot outside until we returned. My sister woke up one night to a black caped figure standing silently in her room. She said there was also a bright orb near her window. Her windows faced the backyard and trees, and being on the second floor, there was no possible source of light from cars or anything else. She covered her head with the blanket, and when she looked out, the figure and the orb were still there. She went back under the blanket, and after some time, they were finally gone. Also, our cat disappeared without a trace one day. I'm not sure if it was related, but it seemed worth mentioning. My dad was one person who never experienced anything. No voices, no steps, no TV and radios blasting out on their own. He is hard of hearing, so that could have been a factor. 
But one thing he can't explain is waking up at 4 a.m. next to a lit tea light candle that he swears burnt out at midnight. The candle was right in front of his face, and he's extremely sensitive to light, to the point where he covers any electronic lights with napkins as they disturb his sleep, even the numbers on the clock. It eventually got so bad that I refused to sleep in my own bedroom, as I could feel someone move around the room at night. I slept in my sister's room instead. My dad decided to call a medium, and the guy said that there were five spirits in the house. A boy, an old lady, a couple, and a very angry man. He gave us a giant candle with a cross and said to burn it in the bedroom of the youngest child, which now was also my bedroom, where I slept in a sofa chair. The candle was in a big glass jar and was hefty. All night, it kept shaking, and the glass kept making clicking noises against the counter it stood on. We were also to tell the spirits that this was our house now and that they needed to go to the light. Things improved after the visit and shortly after, I moved out to attend college, where I slept for years with the lights on, although I never experienced any paranormal activity in my apartment there. After college, I never stayed in the house for longer than a few days, always sleeping with the lights on, as the creepy feeling remained, although nothing notable happened anymore. Eventually, my parents sold the house, and I don't know what happened after that. This isn't about one creepy thing that happened. I didn't physically see an apparition. But promise me that you'll pretend to be in my shoes in each situation. I'm not telling this story to impress anyone. Rather, I just need to get these experiences off my chest. It's happened for years, ever since I can remember. The first thing I remember was me watching TV in the living room, probably in elementary school, and I had just finished my bowl of chips. I placed it in the sink and went back to sit on the couch, and it was completely silent. I then heard the bowl tapping against my metal sink, like it was unbalanced, so I went to adjust it. When I got to the kitchen, it stopped, so I went to sit back down, but the noise started again. I shrugged it off and told my mom about it, but she said it was a coincidence. Moving on. I'm in middle school now, and I've looked into the paranormal. I had to. I would hear footsteps on the stairs at night, but I chose to believe it was the house settling. It always had a creepy feeling of being watched, and I would hear random knocks or bangs. I'm doing my homework in my bed with the door closed. All of a sudden, the doorknob viciously began shaking, as if somebody was trying to open a locked door but it wasn't locked. I jumped out of bed when it stopped and ran to my brother's room, which is right next door to mine, and swung his door open. I accused him of shaking my handle, but he was extremely confused and asked, why would I do something so stupid when I'm doing my homework? Still freaked out, I just went to finish my homework, but I was distracted, glancing at the doorknob every so often. Some short points that didn't happen to me. My parents' closet is always closed, but one morning my dad found a small puddle of blood on a pair of new shoes that he never wears. But neither of them found cuts on themselves. My brother just saw the first Paranormal Activity movie, but my mom didn't because she hates that stuff. But a couple of nights later, she walks into his room and stands by his bed just staring at him. He freaks out and tells her to leave, but she stays there for five minutes and then walks back to her room. The next morning, she had no recollection. I know how fake this sounds, but trust me, I only wish I was making it up. After that, my mom was home alone and decided to take a shower. In the middle of her shower, the bathroom door flies open and hits the wall. She throws a robe on and runs out thinking, of course, that there was an intruder. 
but nobody was found. I'm now a teenager watching YouTube in my bedroom when I hear a loud bang outside my door. I think my brother fell in the bathroom, which is next to his room, so I ran out into the hallway to laugh at him, but he's in his room, so I ask if he just fell, to which he replied no. Instead, he said, I thought you fell. We search around for something that has fallen, but to no avail. A couple months later in December, we're going into our attic to get the Christmas decorations. Our attic has all of our boxes lined up along the perimeter. When we peeked up there, there was a box on its side, right in the middle. I think it's important to note that our attic is right above the bathroom. Nothing crazy has happened after that, except for me and my friend hearing a car start in our garage, but no car was running. We just thought we were crazy. But one day after school of senior year, I'm home alone and my boyfriend lives 10 houses down the street. So I planned on walking there soon. I'm sitting on my living room floor with our family dog and cat. I then hear the loudest, most distinct noise I've ever heard. Imagine having a two-story house with a very tall living room and dining room ceiling. I heard someone stomping and running in my room. I'm telling you, I heard it. My cat runs away, my dog jumps up defensive. I ran outside to look on my roof, but nobody was there. I ran around the whole house looking up there, but there was just the roof. I ran back in the house, grabbed my phone and my keys, and then ran to my car. I cried to my boyfriend and his family about it for an hour, but I still don't know if they believe me. At this point, I'm 19 years old, and my parents have divorced. I'm living with my mom in a small apartment with a tiny washer and dryer. My dad left for town on a business trip, so I asked if I could wash my clothes at his house, and he agreed. I'm terrified of being there alone, so I brought my boyfriend and his older friend, Devante. Devante is 24. I told them the things that have happened, and Devante says it's all in my head. I laughed and I said, I hope something paranormal happens to you tonight so you'll believe me. The dryer says it'll take 74 minutes, so my boyfriend and I go to play a board game, and since it's 10pm, Devante wants to take a nap. I told him he can go up to my brother's old room since my brother has moved out and nobody uses it, so he does. Ten minutes later, we hear a bang, and we thought he dropped his phone between the bed and the wall. The bed is pressed against the wall, connected to the hallway, so it makes sense that it would be so loud. About ten more minutes go by, and we hear Devante saying something upstairs, but we figured he was talking on the phone. Then he gets louder. My boyfriend and I look at each other, confused. Devante yells, Holly, come get your man. Now, more confused, I tell my boyfriend Anthony to run up there and see what's wrong. When he gets to the room, Devante asks, Wait, what? He's staring at him, wide-eyed. Devante says, No, did you just run up those stairs? Devante got up and exited the room and ran down to where I was waiting. He said, Tell me you didn't just run up there when I called you. Anthony and I were super confused, and Devante began freaking out and pacing. He said he heard somebody whispering, Get out, get out, get out. And it slowly got louder until they were yelling at him to get out. He thought my boyfriend was just messing with him. That's why we heard Devante talking. He was saying things like, Anthony, F off. And Anthony, stop it, I'm trying to sleep. Devante was so freaked out that we left that night, not finishing the laundry. We had to pick it up the next day. I laugh at this because it's such a stereotypical thing to have a ghost say get out in movies and on YouTube videos, but I've never seen him teary-eyed and so genuinely terrified as he was that night. That's the end of it all, I think. My boyfriend and I and my mom moved halfway across the country for other reasons. 
I think all of my paranormal struggles are over. Well, maybe. In our new house, a bang was heard in the sunroom, which freaked both of our dogs out. The puppy wouldn't even re-enter the room. Just tonight, we got Chipotle and ate in our bedroom. And that's when I heard the foil with the tortillas in it being dragged on my nightstand table. Yes, the fans were going, but not strong enough to pull the heavy tortilla and foil with it. I'm spooked out and decided to write down all of my experiences to make myself feel better. Again, it's not a one-time story, and it's probably not as entertaining as other ghostly things that you'll read here, but I needed this off my chest. If any of you have experienced these things, please let me know. It would make me feel so much better to know that I'm not alone. The boyfriend and I moved out. Eventually, my father got a new girlfriend who moved in. She has two kids. One is my father's and one by another man. They were young at this time, the girl being around five and the boy being about two. After a while, the girlfriend started talking to me and saying that there was something off with the house. She did know the story about the previous owner. Her daughter stayed in my old room, you know, the one with the posters, also the one with the closet. Her daughter started talking about an old man named Zabu that lived in the closet. She described him as an old man with a long beard and said that he glowed green. She said that she'd seen him a few times and that she didn't like him or the closet. One time the boy was sitting on the living room floor looking up at the ceiling and just randomly out of nowhere he says, I don't want to talk to you right now. Nobody was speaking with him, or even close to him. I'm sure there was more involving them, but I can't remember all of it right now. Weird things kept happening, though. At the time, I'd even asked a paranormal investigation team if they would be interested in looking at the house. Of course, they were all for it, but we first had to get permission from the owner of the house, which would be my dad. When my dad's girlfriend brought it up to him, he declined, saying that there's no such thing as ghosts and he didn't want a bunch of strangers staying in the house. So, regretfully, I had to inform the team of this decision. Flash forward to a few years later. She and my father broke up and she moved out. He got a new job where he was rarely home. I have two children by now, so I decided, you know what, I'll rent the house while he's gone. My boyfriend and I and our two kids moved in. The first thing that happened was later one night. I was in the basement, and the lights were quite dim down there, and I heard something rustling around in one of the two bedrooms. I opened the door, and the light wouldn't come on. Nothing strange, just a blown light bulb. But as I was looking around the room for possible rodents, I looked up at the ceiling and there was a flashing green and reddish orange light. Then I realized that they were everywhere. The closest thing I can compare it to is the flashing light you might see on a smoke alarm. There were hundreds of these lights all over the ceiling. So I backed right out and closed the door as quickly as I could and vacated the basement altogether. Those lights started to randomly appear on the ceiling in the main part of the basement too. My sister and her boyfriend came to visit. Once again, we were in the basement. We smoked down there instead of upstairs. It was getting late. Her boyfriend went and opened the car bay door from inside the house. He was going to go outside to use the bathroom, as it was much easier for him and he didn't want to go upstairs and wake my kids unnecessarily. So as he's heading through the car bay, we hear, what the? He turned around and hightailed it back out of there, slamming the door. Obviously panicked, he then proceeded to tell us that he had just seen the little girl running across the room from one end to the other. We opened up the door and checked things out, but nothing was there. One night after dark, I was in a bedroom upstairs, not my old room. 
nobody was staying in that one. In my daughter's room, the one adjacent to my old room, I was putting some laundry away. When out of the blue, my daughter, who was about three or four at the time, pointed at the window. She said, Mom, who's the man standing outside? I looked at the window. She's still pointing and looking at it. Trying my best not to panic, I said, Babe, there's no man out there. I didn't see anything. No man. It was completely dark. There also wasn't a man inside the room, nor in the reflection of the inside of the room on the darkened window. But if she could see it, I sure couldn't. As calmly as I could, with a racing heart and clammy hands, I picked her up and left the laundry. I brought her out to the living room, where I then asked her about the man she saw. She said he was really tall and had a beard. Remember Zabu? Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I made sure to have the curtains closed and her bedroom door opened at all times after that. Another day, I was in the living room, playing Guitar Hero, sitting in a chair not too far from the television. It was night and my kids were in bed. So while I was into the game and focused on all the colors and playing, I saw a little girl out of the corner of my eye, standing a few feet away from me. I assumed it was my daughter who had gotten out of bed to use the bathroom. So I then proceeded to talk to her and ask her why she was up. I asked her if she could go back to bed, or if she was thirsty or hungry, but I got no replies. My song was over and I could still see this girl out of the corner of my eye. So I looked directly at her and there was nobody there. The daughter I thought I'd been carrying on a one-sided conversation with was still in her bed, completely sound asleep. I was in shock. There was no way. But alas, apparently now we have a Zabu and a little girl hanging around. One morning, it was early. I was in the basement doing laundry. My children's dad at the time was sitting on the couch with our daughter. The couch was in front of a built-in bar area, 70s style. There was fluorescent lighting all over it, but it didn't work. So we had a small table lamp on top of the bar for lighting. The plug was behind the bar area. I had forgotten some laundry upstairs and I ran up to grab it. On my way back down the stairs, I yelled to the kid's father, Watch out, get up! The lamp that was on the bar was literally sliding across the bar and was about to fall off the edge right onto the heads of the two people sitting under it, which happened to be my family. As soon as they got up, it stopped moving and stayed where it was, hovering at the edge of the bar. My father also had an old phone that was screwed into the wall in the basement. It was very old, probably put in when the house was originally built. He just never bothered to take it out. It had a rotary dial, too. For all the young ones, that's a phone where you actually have to turn the dial to the number you want. No touch numbers here. We didn't have a landline hooked up, as seven to eight years ago, cell phones were much more convenient. When we would be upstairs, that phone would randomly start ringing. Of course, it's been years since there was a landline hooked to the house, and it would only ring a couple of times before stopping, and never while anybody was downstairs. We would randomly hear scratching on the carport door, almost like a cat. This would happen when we were downstairs. It was on the inside door heading to the carport, but on the car bay side. And of course, upon investigation, there was never anything there and nothing was ever disturbed. We stayed there maybe six to seven months and moved. I'd had enough. I told my father what had been happening and once again he said I was foolish, that there's no such thing as ghosts. Fine, to each their own. He can believe whatever he wants to or not. A few months after I moved out, I got a phone call from my father. He was kind of frantic, which was unusual. He said, I believe you now. I said, what are you talking about? I mean, it's kind of a weird way to start a phone call. He said, about the ghosts. There's, there's something in that house. I said, really? Finally, you believe me. What happened? He said that he was laying on the couch at night. 
He's the only one living there now, and he said that the cupboard doors one night started opening and slamming shut on their own. Another night, a mug had fallen out of the cupboard on its own. The taps would turn on and off on their own. He swears he saw somebody walking around outside at night, but when he turned the outside lights on and went to investigate, there was never anybody there. As a total non-believer, he shook off everything that has happened over the years as a coincidence or the product of an act of imagination, right up until he saw and heard those cupboards with his own eyes and ears. He was quite shaken up. He left again for work, and he did rent the house out to a few different people. He even warned them about the house, and there was only one of the renters out of the two who admitted to him that they too had heard and seen some pretty weird stuff. He never elaborated on what happened with the renters, but after the second one, he put the house up for sale. This was about five years ago, and I've always wondered what has happened in the house since. I also wonder about the stories the current owners could share. I don't know who they are, and I'm not about to drive up and tell them my story and ask them if anything has ever happened to them, no matter how curious I am. Although I have to admit, it's mighty tempting. When I was in my teens, my father bought a house in the country. Newer house built in the 70s, I believe. Neighbors weren't too close by, except for a house right at the end of the driveway. A little background. The previous owners were a husband and a wife. The house at the end of the driveway was the mother of one of them, I can't remember which. The husband found out that he had cancer he kept spiraling further and further into depression as the disease progressed. One day, he decided that he was done. And, as the story goes, he set up tarps in the dining room, right in front of the patio and the patio door. He shot himself. The wife proceeded to move out, and the house was put up for sale. Enter my father. He buys said house. It was quite big, roomy, nice finished basement, my room was upstairs, first bedroom of three down the hallway. It was enjoyable at first. I got to decorate my new room. Yay! As a teenager, I had an obscene amount of posters, pictures, and drawings that I did as decorations. I stuck them all to the wall. It didn't take very long for things to start getting weird. Now mind you, at this stage, I had no knowledge of the previous owner or the story. I would wake up like clockwork every night at about 2 a.m. Strange, but I would just roll over and go back to sleep. Then in the mornings when I would wake up, my posters on one wall, the wall with the closet, would be crooked. As a typical teenager, I would leave them crooked for a few days and then finally straighten them, retack them, and give up. Then I started to notice that all the posters were tilted to the same exact angle in the same direction. Definitely weird. So I ended up taping them all four corners with some pretty good tape and still the posters would fall and end up crooked the same exact way. Eventually I just gave up and left them that way. Remember how I said I started waking up every night at 2 a.m.? Well, it started to freak me out once I realized that it just kept happening. So I would take longer and longer to fall asleep. Then the real fun started. I started hearing footsteps. They would start at the basement stairs. I heard them come up, open the basement door, walk through the kitchen, down the hallway, past my door, turn around at the end of the hallway, and proceed back the way it had come into the basement. The first time I heard this, I figured it was Dad. But no, it wasn't Dad because I could hear him snoring in his room. Then I panicked. In a good old-fashioned way, my blankets went up over my head and I hyperventilated. I seriously thought that at some point my door would open. But it didn't. I didn't die or see any ghostly matter. But man, was I ever freaked out. 
I didn't sleep much the rest of the night the first time it happened, and it was hard to get much sleep at all after that. The next morning, as soon, and I mean as soon, as my father woke up, I told him what I heard. He laughed and said, okay, well, you must have been sleeping and dreamed it. He has zero belief of the paranormal. And here I am, still not having a clue about the history of the house. Okay, okay, maybe I was dreaming. I still woke up most nights, but no footsteps. It's all right, right? Wrong. They sure did come back. At least once or twice a month I would hear those footsteps, and I'd damn near die of a panic attack each time. But knowing that telling my father was futile after the first four to five times I tried, I gave up telling him. Mystery feet never tried to enter my room, so believe me, I was more than happy if it stayed that way. We were there maybe five to six months when my father came inside one day. The lady who lives at the end of the driveway picked blackberries in the backyard, so he was out talking with her. He came in and said, Okay, I have something to tell you. I was like, Okay? Little old lady wanted me to go make pies with her or something like that? But no. He proceeded to tell me about the history of the house. He said that the lady had seen lights come on in the dining room a few times, but it was when nobody was home. She's convinced it's her deceased family member still lingering. I was thinking, yes, he finally accepted that something weird is going on here. But nope. Then he went up and checked the wiring and everything was fine, so he laughed at me and the lady for having really good imaginations. Now, no lights ever went on and off by themselves while I was home, but random doors would open and close on their own. Drafts, right? My father thought so too. Me? Not so much. The laundry room was in the basement. I hated it down there. Always got some serious heebie-jeebies and felt like somebody was always watching me. Then it felt like somebody was pushing or nudging me down the stairs while I was walking down them, and I really started to dislike it there. Flash forward a year or so, I had a boyfriend after a while who started staying the night. Curious, after a while, my boyfriend said, hey, how come all your posters are crooked? I sighed and said, because no matter what I do, they always end up crooked in the morning, so I just leave them that way. He said, no way. So, me being me, I went out and got the best packing tape I could find. I told him to start helping me tape every single corner of every single picture and to make sure they're straight. I told him to make sure he was satisfied that there's no way they could fall off. We got it done. Our mission was complete. I asked him to make sure to remember that these pictures were straight before we went to bed. He said, yep, they're straight. And when we woke up, they weren't. He damn near shit himself. He couldn't believe it. But alas, teen picture-hating ghosty struck again. So finally realizing that I've got someone who half-ass thinks something weird is going on, I fill him in on everything else that's happened there. He said I absolutely had to wake him up when I heard these footsteps. Well, oddly enough, every time I did hear them, I tried. Oh, how I tried to wake him. But no way was he waking up. No matter what I did, he wouldn't wake. I even bit him once just to see if that would work. Still kept sleeping, like nothing had ever happened. One day, he and I were sitting in the living room. We had these big wooden basement doors that were underneath the patio, and they opened up to a little garage big enough to park your car in. They shook so hard that we could feel it vibrating the living room floor. It was loud. It sounded like two people at least were banging and shaking these doors. A pheasant even took off flying at the same time because it was scared. We jumped up, obviously thinking that somebody was trying to break into the house. We ran outside to look, but there was no one, and I mean no one there, except two freaked out teenagers and a pheasant that I'm pretty sure had a heart attack. It was a wide open field. There was nobody anywhere. We would have seen them somewhere trying to make their escape. And keep in mind, the shaking was still going on while we were out there. So we would have seen who was doing it. 
Obviously, we told my dad when he got home, and it was more, ah, you guys are crazy, statements. My dad had this old wooden rocking chair in the corner of the dining room. After a while, this thing started rocking on its own. I told dad. He bought a rug for underneath it and said it was those darn drafts again. Nope, that thing would still rock. But of course, it never did it when my father was around. Not too long after that, my boyfriend and I got an apartment of our own and moved out. But trust me, that's not where the story ends. When I was around nine, a few of my cousins came to sleep over at my house. Since we couldn't all fit on my bed, we decided to sleep on the floor near the door to my bedroom and all share one giant blanket. Sometime during the night, I woke up to somebody tucking in the covers around me. I thought maybe my dad had seen us while on the way to the bathroom and maybe we had kicked off the covers as I was prone to do at the time. I opened my eyes to say something to my dad, and although I could still feel the tucking in of the blankets, there was nobody there. Nobody was tucking us in, yet I could very clearly feel the hands pushing the blanket in around me. I was in the middle of the pack, and I looked to see if any of my cousins were awake or fidgeting, and also to see if they were observing what was going on, but they were all sound asleep and motionless. My little kid logic told me to close my eyes and whatever it was would never know that I had woken up. So that's what I did. I laid there silent and still for what seemed like 10 minutes or so while I felt the blanket move as invisible hands went down the line and tucked each and every one of us in that night. It wasn't the most exciting brush with the paranormal, but since I don't remember much of my life before I was 10, it's my very first memory of anything weird like that. What's interesting is that my dad believes that there's a spirit too. He even credits it with saving my life. Something shoved him really hard once while he was standing in the yard. It shoved him so hard that he fell over. When he looked back to see who had pushed him, nobody else was in the yard. But that's when he saw me desperately trying to get his attention from the window on the second floor. I was three years old, and I was having my very first asthma attack. If he hadn't looked behind him to see what had shoved him, who knows what would have happened. Whatever it was, it eventually moved on. We lived out of the state for a few years and rented the house to one of my aunts and her family. She also saw this thing regularly while they lived there, and so did my uncle. When we moved back and they got a new place and it started appearing at their new house, it was never seen in mine again. Every town has its own creepy stories and urban legends. My small Midwest town had the Salem House. The story was that in the 1800s, a Civil War veteran and his family lived there. One night, he just snapped and killed his entire family before hanging himself in the barn. People who visited always talked about getting cold chills, seeing shadowy figures, having car troubles. The list goes on and on. My friends and I, being big into the paranormal, decided to check it out one night. I knew it was a creepy area of town, but I don't think I could have ever prepared myself for what happened that night. The whole road that is home to the Salem house is pretty creepy. It's in the middle of the country and very dark. About halfway down the road, the whole area becomes surrounded by woods. The night we visited, as soon as we got to the wooded area, I was overcome by fear. I tried to convince my friends to turn around and go back, but they told me that we were already too far along and I couldn't chicken out now. Soon after driving out of the wooded area of the road, we turned onto a long dirt driveway, the driveway to the Salem house. 
My boyfriend, Kyle, stayed in the car with me while Haley, Mike, and Lily went out to explore the barn. Kyle and I sat in silence for a bit and just watched them head out. Once they disappeared into the barn, I got that overwhelming fear again. This time it came with a sharp pain though, as if somebody was scratching my back very hard. Kyle asked me what was wrong and I told him what was happening. He lifted up the back of my shirt and told me that there was nothing there. Moments later, I hear the loud scream of Haley as she, Lily, and Mike come running back to the car as if they were being chased. We start the car and just before pulling away, several handprints of different sizes created smudges on the windshield. We stayed silent the entire way home. I finally told them all about how I felt like I was getting scratched and to my surprise, this time when they checked, my back was covered in scratches. Although this was about three years ago, we never really bring up our experiences at the Salem house, though I have asked several times what spooked my friends so badly. They never would answer me, and thinking about it now, I think that's for the best. My parents bought a home when I was just two years old, and they owned it until I was 13. From the ages of two to seven, I had countless experiences of the paranormal. Figures, noises, things being moved, people whispering my name, singing, and in true Annabelle style, toys moving on their own while being surrounded in a strange blue light. The experiences above have nothing, and I mean nothing, on those I had later on in life. For a while, my parents were divorced, during which time I rarely stayed in the house, and I always dreaded going there. To my distress, when I was ten, my parents reconciled, and we returned to the home. This is when the true nightmares began. For those who have experienced the paranormal, there's something truly unsettling about feeling like you're not alone, but it's another thing to be touched. Yes, physical contact from something you cannot see, hear, or comprehend has to be the most terrifying thing. Not long after moving back to the house, I was home alone and practicing the piano. The house was a split level and I was in one of four downstairs rooms. The door to the guest room where our keyboard was, was closed and there was a window that was near the ceiling. The window was at the ground level of the outside, so if I stood up on the opposite side of the room, I could see the front lawn. The piano was directly under the window, and there I sat playing some mindless scales to warm up. Not long after I started to play, I felt a sense of unease that, ironically, I was rather used to. Figuring it was just that eerie, home alone feeling that every kid experiences, I kept playing and I didn't stop. Until I felt something touch my back. Too scared to turn around, I looked up to the reflection of the window, which I couldn't see much of from my angle, and I saw nothing. It was dark out, so the window was acting as my mirror, ensuring me that there was nothing there. My mind was clearly playing tricks on me, right? I kept playing. Then, as if I were at the barber, I felt all of my hair be lifted up and sectioned. I looked up again to the window to see the reflection of the tips of my hair floating. At this point, I'm completely frozen and ready to just succumb to my fate. I closed my eyes tight and kept my hands on the piano keys. Almost as quickly as the moment started, it stopped. Although I never felt cold, the room instantly began to get warmer, as if the temperature had been lower, and I reached my hands behind my head. At this point, I felt alone. I felt nobody behind me either, so I was starting to feel better. But when I touched my hair, my heart dropped. My hair was completely braided. Safe to say I dashed out of that room into my neighbor's house until my parents came back. That wasn't the last experience I had there, 
but it was definitely one of the most visceral. I have a pretty interesting story to tell about my childhood house. I lived in this house when I was around 5 through 14 years old. It was quite an old house in the Cornish town of Falmouth. I believe it was called the Tregenver House. I'm getting a little bit off topic, but I'll tell you what happened and why we moved. For around the first four years we lived there, we never experienced anything paranormal or weird apart from stuff which everyone experiences, like creaking floorboards at night, things like that. I remember that it was a few weeks until my 10th birthday, and I was really excited, as every little kid is when it's their birthday. So one night I'm staying up thinking about the toys that I'm gonna get. This was a while ago, so I mainly wanted Pokemon-related things. I heard some creaking and heavy footsteps outside of my room. I stepped out to see what was going on, presuming that my parents had gone to get something to eat, and I also wanted something to eat, so I wasn't suspicious of anything. When I opened my door, it's right in front of the flight of stairs connecting the first floor to the second, the sounds completely disappear, so I run into my parents' room to see if they're there and they're both fast asleep in their bed. At this point, I'm scared out of my wits. I step out of their room, and at the end of the hall, to which all the rooms on the second floor are connected, I look down to the end where there's a spare room next to one of the bathrooms. The door is swinging slightly ajar. I bolt into my room and pulled out my Swiss army knife I buried myself in my covers, preparing to defend myself from whatever the hell was in my house. Every Wednesday on the lead up to my birthday, I'd hear the same footsteps coming up the hall at the same time, give or take a half an hour. But after my first experience, I never went out again. I know this doesn't explain the reason for moving in and of itself, but many other things happened in that house, and we ended up moving because of it. My name is Jordan. I was a young kid of seven years old when this all started. I have an older sister by one year. I'll call her Jess. We were both being raised by my mother. She began a relationship with her boyfriend that we'll name Derek. We moved into a house in West Bountiful, Utah. The house sat near a horse farm, which sat north from the house, away from the road about 50 yards from the back door. The house had two wagon wheels buried into the ground halfway for decoration, sitting near the street. We had an elderly lady as a neighbor who lived to the east of us. The next house east was my friend Brian's house. The house was kind of old, but still in good shape. Walking into the front door led you into the living room. The stairs to the right led upstairs, where the bathroom was first on the left followed by my sister's room to the right, then my mom's room on the left, and my room on the right at the very end of the hall. Past the living room was a kitchen that to the left led to the driveway, and to the right led downstairs to another living room. This was adapted into a place where I had my Nintendo 64 set up on a tiny TV. While going down the stairs, there was a crawl space to the right, next to the furnace. Since I was seven, I can't recall how long we lived in this house before things started becoming strange. But to my mom and sister's recollections, the first oddities we noticed was that deep into the night, the toilet would flush randomly. I never noticed this, since my room was farthest from the bathroom but my sister and mom were both convinced that I was being mischievous and doing it. I do remember them asking me if I really needed to pee last night, 
but I said that I didn't know what they were talking about as I hadn't left my room. Weeks later, the toilet flushing became a common occurrence at night. I heard it happen as I was walking to the bathroom one night, so I turned around and went back to bed, obviously nervous. The next day, Derek said it had to be pressure in the sewer, causing our toilets to flush. I took his word strongly since I thought he knew all things about plumbing. But the toilet flushing started to become boring, I assume, for after a pause in the activity, the faucets in both the bathroom and the kitchen were both suddenly blasting water out of them. The knobs opened up completely. Derek sprang awake to the sound of rushing faucets and quickly shut them off. After he turned off the kitchen faucet and was walking back upstairs, the toilet flushed as he passed by the bathroom. I slept through this entire ordeal, but my mom said that it pissed him off so much he actually kicked the bathroom door. The faucets joined the toilet in becoming a common plaything at night, and all of us felt pretty uneasy about it. I'm not sure in which order the next parts of the story should go, but all of this happened in the span of about a year, six months into living in that house. My friend Brian came over, and we were playing Smash Bros on my Nintendo 64 in the basement. After several matches, he needed to use the bathroom, so he got up and ran up the stairs. I kept playing. He came running down the stairs. I thought he was excited to keep playing, but he stood there next to me, breathing heavily. His eyes were as wide as dinner plates. He stumbled over his words and asked if there was something wrong with my bathroom. Before I could say anything, he starts frantically explaining that the toilet flushed right before he got to the door, and that as he was done and was leaving, the faucet turned on full power right behind him. I told him that that's happened many times before, but only at night. Brian wanted to go back home after that. He didn't even look back as he walked down the street. I was sad. I was sure that Brian wouldn't want to hang out anymore after the house had scared him. This was, from what I recall, the first time that somebody from outside the house experienced its oddities. I told my mom about it, and she said that it was strange it had happened in the daytime. There were other times that my sister and I would stay weekends with our dad, every other weekend usually. On one of these weekends, my mother and Derek were in bed. She can't recall what time at night it was, but out of her sleep, she could hear the soft sobbing of a woman. She laid there half asleep, wondering if she had left the TV on in the living room. But the sound wasn't coming from downstairs. It seemed to be coming from the room they were sleeping in. The sobbing became more pained and louder. Derek bolted awake thinking that my mom was hurt but then they both just sat there in silence as the sobbing turned into a cry of unimaginable pain, as if the woman was either being tortured or in pain of losing a child. Derek quickly got dressed, saying that the neighbor lady next door might be hurt and might need help. He ran out the front door and over to the neighbor's house, but by the time he got to her door, there was no screaming or crying. He slowly walked toward the house and the crying got louder. There was no mistake that it was coming from our house. Derek checked every square inch of the house when he got back, but there was no one in it except for him and my mother. As soon as it had appeared, it stopped. My mom says that that was one of the hardest nights sleep in her entire life. One that I was present for happened about a month after the night of the crying woman. It is, of course, the dead of night, and we're all sleeping in our rooms. Suddenly, my mom and Derek were awoken by a blinding light, as bright as a lighthouse. My mother and Derek sprang up and tried to find the light switch in the house, but as they flipped it on, the light stayed. Derek thought it was a semi-truck shining its brights through their window, but as he opened the window, he realized that their window faced the horse farm. They had no window facing the streets at all. As soon as he spun back around from looking outside, the light died out. I remember the commotion afterward. Derek was running all over the house in a panic. 
He checked the fuse box, grabbed his tools, and tore apart their light fixture at 3 a.m., trying to find any logical explanation and shouting in frustration the entire time. My mother would stay up late most nights. She loved her horror movies and crime shows, so she'd watch them while we were asleep. It wasn't far from midnight when my mom heard the voices of children giggling. The only light on in the house was the TV. She assumed that my sister and I were trying to scare her. So she pointed at the stairs and said, both of you go to bed now. The giggling continued for a little longer before my mom stood up and marched up the stairs, but no one was there. The giggling though was getting louder. She finished climbing the stairs and opened my sister's door only to find her fast asleep in her bed. She checked into my room and found me the same way. After she went down the stairs again, the giggling finally stopped. My mom claims that afterward, she sat there and thought of the woman crying for a while before this occurrence and thought that these children giggling had some morbid connection. My mom caught the elderly neighbor one morning in her driveway and asked if she knew anything about our house. The lady said she lived on that street for half of her life and never heard or saw anything bad happen inside of the home. Just families moving in and out over the years. We never looked further into this theory. The time passes and we now refer to our ghostly friends as the kids and the lady. The kids loved to play around in mine and my sister's rooms. They'd open and close our closets, slam my sister's hope chest to startle us, and still loved to play with the toilet at night. Of course, now being eight years old, I had a constant, uneasy feeling in that house. My mother would assure me that our ghosts were a happy family that needed a place to stay, but this didn't settle my fears at all. I had grown accustomed to having multiple light sources in my room, a lava lamp, two plasma balls, and a fiber optic light. All of them were on the headboard of my bed, and I needed these on at all times to feel comfortable enough to sleep. When they were on, I never had anything bad happen in that room. My mom and Derek understood that I needed them on and never touched them while I slept. But from time to time, I would wake up and find that some, if not all of my lights had been switched off. Not just the power strip they were plugged into, but the little manual clicky knobs on the wires themselves had been turned off. I'd usually wake up late into the night to pitch darkness and scramble out of fear to get all of my lights back up and working. One night, after turning them all back on, I noticed the closet door, which had been closed when I went to sleep. It was wide open, but that was all. The next part is rather hard for me. Even as I tell this story now, I have goosebumps all over. I had a very gruesome dream that I could only describe as a horror that no young boy could ever dream of on his own. I was sitting in a room in the house in dress clothes and I was crying. Loud bangs to the door of the room and a hellish scream echoed through the empty room and I huddled into a corner and screamed. The room went dark with a shadow as the door opened. I couldn't see what was in the doorway, but I kept screaming for whatever it was to stay away. Silence fell. For what seemed like an hour, I sat there in the corner staring at the blackness of the door. Suddenly, people came walking through the shadows. They were all of my family, from my mom and dad to my sister and even a couple of cousins. I didn't leave the corner to greet them. They all just stood there, staring at me with pale faces and glazed eyes. My sister smiled eerily at me and would take stiff steps toward me. I would scream and she would step back and giggle. My dad walked up to me, towering over me. As he knelt down to my level, his eyes went from glazed and dull to being a void of darkness with small glints of light for pupils. I cowered in fear, turning my head from him. He then grabbed the top of my head and forced me to stare him in the face. Then he said, 
You have to say your goodbyes or they're going to be lonely in heaven. Jess screamed in a shrieking voice as my dad grabbed me by my ankle and held me upside down. I was equal height to his face now and I could see all of the faces of my relatives at that moment. They all had the same eyes as my dad, but had gaping and bleeding mouths, almost like their jaws had been nearly torn off. They all chanted the word, heaven, over and over as they carried me into a living room where a bed was set up. In the bed was a corpse. It was my sister. Still held by the ankle, they held me above her corpse I remember every detail of her face. Her skin was olive green and white. It was cracking in places, and her eyes were cold and cloudy and lifeless. I stared at her face in shock and disbelief. One of her eyes moved and stared back at me before she suddenly sprang from the bed and wrapped her arms around me, pulling me into the bed. She screamed and shrieked, as she wrapped her rotting fingers around my neck and began to choke me. I screamed with my last breath for somebody to come to my rescue, but at the last moment I saw my sister placing her thumbs over my eyes and pressing in. I felt the pain of my eyes popping and all I could do was scream. I was suddenly woken by my mother. I was apparently shouting in my sleep and flailing uncontrollably for several minutes before she got me to open my eyes. Not to my surprise, my lights were all off. I could barely see my mom's face as she held my head in her arms. I was in complete shock. I was shaking violently, unable to speak, darting my gaze over every inch of the room, looking for the demons that nearly had me. I struggled to grab my mom's arm and stuttered, asking where Jess was. At that moment, Jess, who had been awoken by the noise I was making, flipped on the light as she walked in. Upon seeing her, I broke into a nervous breakdown. I tried to crawl away from her, still choking on absolute terror and unable to scream. I grunted and wheezed at her, tears pouring down my face like a waterfall. My mom told Jess to go back to bed. Jess left the room, and my mom asked me if I wanted to stay the night in her bed. I couldn't answer. I was still in shock. She picked me up out of the bed and took me into her room and put me in the spot next to her. She threw blankets over me and said to try to get some sleep. I laid there, shaking like a leaf, the dream playing on repeat through my head as I trembled. Not even being near my mom made me feel safe at that point. I remember being like that for hours afterward. The exhaustion finally caught up to me, and I fell asleep once again. My mother says that when she looked at me the next morning, she noticed that I had slept through the remainder of the night, with my eyes open. I woke up a couple of hours later in a haze. My entire body felt heavy and weak. I made my way downstairs to where my mom and sister were. They asked me what I dreamt about. It all flooded into my head again, and I started crying hysterically. It would be several years later when I finally told them what the dream had been about. My mother called my school and let me stay home that day. She asked if I was hungry, but food was the last thing on my mind. She led me to my room and said I should have a nap since it's daytime and things will be more peaceful. I laid in my bed under the covers and wept. A chill ran through my spine and I stopped crying. Listening carefully, I could hear the whisper of a child. Shh, don't worry, it'll be okay. I laid there frozen. I slowly pulled the blanket from over my eyes, only to witness my closet door slowly closing itself. I stared at it quietly for some time before hopping out of bed and running down to the living room. I didn't tell my mom about the closet or the whisper. I knew she would just blame them on the dream I'd had. So I kept that one a secret for a couple of years. My mother believes me now though, now that I've told her everything while we were sharing our experiences. Weeks later, my aunt Dana stayed with us for a week. It was a weekend where we were going to my dad's house. My mom and aunt were alone in the house while Derek was at work. 
My mom was watching General Hospital, and my aunt was using the shower. My aunt came running down the stairs out of nowhere, pale as a ghost. She asked my mom if she had walked into the bathroom a moment ago. My mom said no, of course not. My aunt described looking through the foggy shower door and seeing a woman with blonde hair in the bathroom staring at the mirror. My mother has brown hair. She then turned and walked out without making a sound or speaking a word. My aunt stared back up at the bathroom and said, there's something very wrong with this house. She's not the only one who's ever said those words. I got my friend Brian to stay the night at my house with the promise of late night gaming. He remembers the incident from before and asked how it was living in a haunted house. I said it's not all that bad, jokingly, of course. I didn't tell Brian about any of my personal stories in fear that he might end our friendship over it. The night hit about 11 p.m. and we switched from games to cartoons. We both fell asleep with the glow of my tiny TV upon us. Everything was fine until I was shaken awake by Brian. He was hysterical. He grabbed me and pulled me close and said, I hear them. They giggle at me when I'm sleeping. There's something wrong with this house. I want to go home. Please let me go home. His scream woke up my mom and she ran down the stairs to find Brian hyperventilating. She grabbed all of his belongings and walked him out of the house after he calmed down and down the street to his own house. She came back and said that Brian's dad didn't want his son to come over anymore just to get scared to death. I don't really blame him. He still came over sometimes, but he never stayed the night again, and he especially avoided the basement from that time on. There were a couple more parts to the story, but they played out in similar fashion to most of the other activity. My mom's relationship with Derek came to an end, and we were packing up stuff to move to a different city. After all of our belongings were removed, we walked slowly through parts of the house, talking about our stories of creepy happenings. My sister and I, feeling a bit brave due to us leaving and never coming back, had a surge of courage to ask the kids if they liked playing with us. It was dead silent in the house. My sister and I giggled to each other and said they probably hated playing with us because we were annoying. My mom says she felt something a bit different, almost like there were a couple of people who were sad to see us go. Derek also felt the same vibe. But after two years in the house in West Bountiful, we left. My mom and I still bring up the stories from time to time. We both get goosebumps from the blinding light story, and she's blown away by how terrible my dream was. I recently revisited that dream a month ago, not to my choosing, of course. Played out the exact same as that night when I was eight years old. Only this time I woke up calmly and shook it off. It was after that dream that I decided to write about what I can only describe as a ghost story. It may appear as fiction to many, but to us, it was a living reality. It saddens me that we didn't do more research into the house to see if there was ever a problem or a tragedy there. I don't live far from there currently, but there's a good chance that the house and many others were demolished in a housing project. Either way, I feel it's best left as it is. A creepy story. I'm 26 now and I have a love of horror movies and creepy places. Maybe my exposure to these terrifying events flipped a couple of adrenaline switches in my head. I still don't have a definite answer as to whether ghosts really do exist, but I can't deny what we went through in the West Bountiful House. Before this, I had never experienced anything ghostly, except some chills and some shadows, before I moved into this house with my cousin. We were both going through divorces, and she needed a house with rooms for her kids, and I couldn't afford anything on my own. We found a 100-year-old house to rent, with four bedrooms. It had a yard, and a garage, and it was perfect, and affordable. 
We moved in the day after the eclipse, and it was full of bright summer light, and I was excited. We couldn't get my cousin's bed up the stairs, so she spent the first night with her friend, and I was alone in the house. I couldn't sleep. I was paranoid somebody would break in. It wasn't in a great neighborhood, and the house had several entry points. I got up around midnight for a drink of water. I was looking through the kitchen window and could see a basement window. I saw a light flick on in the basement, and I froze. I locked the door to the basement stairs and I called the cops. Clearly, somebody was in the basement. The cops came, guns out of the holsters, apparently there was a nearby robbery, and searched the entire house. They found nobody. I wasn't too spooked at that point because it's a really old house, you know? Stuff creaks and cracks and shoddy electrical work was probably the culprit. The next week, I could hear my cousin upstairs when I woke up. My cousin was getting ready. I made some extra coffee and left for work without seeing her. I mentioned that she left the coffee pot on and she acted surprised. Turns out she wasn't home. I would constantly hear footsteps upstairs when nobody was there. I hear them so clearly on the staircase that I think for sure I'll see somebody walking down it, but I never do. It was manageable during the day, it didn't seem that scary, but at night I was terrified. I would often be in the house alone, trying to sleep. I could hear all kinds of sounds, kitchen cabinets shutting, doors opening and closing footsteps. Also, just that intense feeling of being watched. About twice a week, I would experience sleep paralysis. I would feel like somebody was standing next to my bed and I couldn't move to look at them. Then I would snap out of it after what felt like hours and I would just be drenched in sweat. This would happen to my cousin, too. I had my friend stay the night with me because eventually I just couldn't handle it. My friend had sleep paralysis and felt like somebody was next to her that she couldn't see. We got up and checked the house after we heard footsteps around 3 a.m. and again found nothing. One night after getting home late, I worked two jobs. I walked in and my hair stood on end. It was a full blood supermoon that night and my cousin was at her full moon circle, so the house was empty. I hear something move behind me, and then a man's voice said, Hello. I know it sounds horribly cliché, but that's what I heard, and it was like somebody was in the room with me. I jumped out of my skin and ran from the house. It took me a while to go back. I spent a few nights at my boyfriend's house. My cousin was in the kitchen when a cabinet slammed shut right next to her. She couldn't recreate it. She heard something call her name while she was in her bedroom, and one night, she heard her daughter talking to someone, begging them to let her sleep. When she asked who her daughter was talking to, she said, The spirit. The sleep paralysis, the footsteps, the doors, the intense vibes all continued. The activity picked up with the moon cycle. I never believed in anything really, but after this house I have realized that ghosts are real, and I believe they feed off energy. I never experienced sleep paralysis before living in that house, and I haven't since. This sounds insane, but I believe that somehow the trauma we experienced during our divorces opened up some kind of door. I feel like I was constantly seeping out anger and fear in that house, and that I fueled something. I feel like I have figured out how to close that door. I'm aware of spirits now, but I don't acknowledge them. I just shut my door and let them pass. I had night terrors from age 3 to 11. I feel like the theory that the Insidious movie laid out is really not that far off. I'm an empath. I can feel other people's emotions in the room with me. Most people can, on some level, they just don't usually think that much about it. I feel like all of these things play together somehow. I know some of my friends don't believe me at all, and I don't blame them, but I am a little bit offended if I'm honest. I'm usually the planner, the one who's organizing everything, and I always have my shit together. I'm just wondering if anyone has ever experienced anything like this, or knows what I'm talking about.
I love haunted walks. I've been on at least six or seven that immediately come to mind. I come from a long line of, let's say, paranormally sensitive women, so I've been experiencing the unexplained my entire life. Not constantly, but often enough that, hey, it happens. So when I go on a haunted walk, usually the people I'm with are watching me as much as they're watching the dark corners of the room. A few years ago, I used to run a hotel. It was a vintage building that had been around since the 1800s, but I'm sad to report that nothing paranormal ever happened in the hotel. Despite its age and unique history, I checked every single room of that building every single day, completely alone, and I never saw any evidence of the paranormal at all. No guest ever reported anything weirder than the crappy AC not working, because the owner was too cheap to replace it. Once we had a maid claim that the largest suite was haunted, and she refused to ever set foot back in there, but I honestly think she just wanted to permanently get out of having to clean the biggest room we had. So, I'm sorry to say it guys, but I have zero scary stories about the hotel. The point is that I used to run a hotel, and as a hotel manager, I would often get free or discounted tickets to events and tourist attractions around the city. These tickets were meant to be used by myself and our front desk staff, so that if a guest ever asked what fun activities in the city should I make sure to see during my stay, the staff could honestly recommend places that they'd definitely been to and give them a genuine account of how they enjoyed their experience. One October, I received tickets to the haunted tour that always appears during the few weeks leading up to Halloween. My front desk manager and I were the only two who were brave enough to go. I had already been on several haunted walks across our country, and she had heard a few of my spooky experiences, so she was very eager to come too. Plus, we had become best friends. It was great to hang out together outside of work. We'll call her Allie. My husband, of course, came as well, as he's always my sidekick during haunted walks. The tour we decided to take included a walking tour of haunted locations in town, and finished with an internal tour of the most famously haunted house in our city, possibly in our country. To protect privacy, I won't tell you the name of the house, but We'll call it the Governor's House. The walking tour before the big event was, as always, very awesome. Very interesting stories, but since we didn't actually go into any of the reportedly haunted houses, nothing truly exceptional happened. I do remember that I had the growing urge to pee. At one point, I actually swallowed my pride and asked our tour guide if we'd be seeing any haunted coffee shops so I could pop in to use the washroom. But much to my horror, she said, Oh, sorry, no, but uh, there's a bathroom in the governor's house, and the plumbing still works, so you can use that. I don't think the caretakers will mind. With a blank stare on my face, I looked at her and hesitantly replied, uh, That's okay, I'll hold it. But by the time we got to the house, holding it wasn't an option. She gave us a brief history of the house and a retelling of the reported paranormal events. Apparently, the governor and his wife lived in the house. They ran the city, until one day, an angry mob of townsfolk broke in, ransacked the place, and murdered them both. Since then, the caretakers who used to reside in the house have experienced a lot of unexplained noises, objects moving on their own and, worst of all, being violently shaken or slapped awake in the middle of the night, but then opening their eyes to see nobody there. Needless to say, they no longer live in the house. Absolutely bursting with urgency, the first thing I did when we got into the house was lock myself in the first bathroom I saw. It was absolutely tiny, very dark, and definitely the last creepy place I wanted to be without pants on. Not to my surprise, there was no line to use it. Half-jokingly, I said, Okay, ghosts, just hold off for a few minutes, 
let me have my privacy, and then you can do whatever you want after. I should really know better than to offer spirits a deal. When I emerged from the bathroom, everyone on the tour looked at me like I was crazy for going in there alone. Apparently, each of them would have gladly chosen to pee their pants. The guide gave us permission to walk around the house freely, as long as we were careful not to break or take anything. Allie was eager to have her first ever ghost encounter, so the first thing she did was make us go down into the basement. One of the stories that the guide told us about was a rocking chair that was known to rock on its own, so Allie was determined to find it. And since nobody else was willing to go down into the basement, we had it completely to ourselves. Once we were downstairs, we saw three rooms. One was just a closet of mops and other cleaning supplies. To the left of it was an archway leading into a pitch black room. I thought it strange that this was the only room in the house that didn't have its lights on. And to our immediate left at the foot of the stairs was a kitchen, which also had its own archway to the dark room. We decided to explore the kitchen first since we could clearly see in there. I loved all the vintage plates, but Allie was fixated on finding a ghost and made a dash, alone, straight into the dark room. I sighed and followed behind her. The room was so dark that as soon as you entered it, you couldn't see your hand right in front of your face, which was weird because it was right next to the brightly lit kitchen through a large open doorway, but no light dripped in. You could turn around and see the entire kitchen, and you could see the faint streetlights through the window, but the actual room itself was pitch black. Not wanting to accidentally bump into and break any priceless antiques, I took out my camera and started to aimlessly snap photos to get the light from the flash. It didn't occur to me until this moment that I probably should have used the flashlight app on my phone, but during creepy moments, you're prone to make quick and odd decisions. Every time I snapped a photo, I got a blink into the room. It was a dining room with a large wooden table dead center, but it wasn't really the furniture that caught my eye. It was footprints. It's hard for me to really explain it, but every time I took another photo, I could see large, bright blue footprints on the floor, two at a time, making their way around the table, coming closer. After about four or five photos, I was pretty sure that I saw what I saw, so I backed up, back into the kitchen, back into the light. My husband and Allie looked at me. I never noticed Allie pass me to go back into the kitchen. They said my face was pale, and they asked me what happened. All I said was, I'll trick him, and I dashed to the other archway that led into the dark room from the hallway, expecting to snap a photo of the full body of the entity waiting for me near the kitchen. But I was so wrong. The only one that was about to be tricked was me, because when I took that last picture and the camera flashed, all I could see was a bright blue flashing right up in my eyes, only an inch from my face. He was right there, right in front of me, and he was smarter than I was and wanted to make sure that I knew it. I stumbled back and went straight up the stairs, repeating, I'm sorry, you win. I'm sorry, you win. Allie and my husband quickly followed. Despite the weird encounter seconds earlier, we still wanted to see the rest of the house. So after I had had a chance to catch my breath and tell them what had just happened, we made our way upstairs to the bedrooms. Upstairs was uneventful. They were small rooms that were chained off to stop visitors from breaking anything. After that, we left and stood out under a street light out front of the house to recount our experience. While my husband and Allie chatted, I decided to take one last photo at the property, this time from outside. I didn't notice it at first, but while we were in the house, every light in the house was on, except for the dark room in the basement. But now, not two seconds later, looking into the house from the outside, it was reversed. Every light in the house was off, 
except for the dark room in the basement, where I could clearly see the rocking chair on the other side of the dining room table by the window. Another strange thing that happened that night was that absolutely none of the photos I took in that house were actually saved on my camera, not a single one. My husband had even worse luck, as he told me that the moment he walked into his house, his fully charged camera just completely died. A flat, empty battery the moment he crossed the threshold. But the most terrifying thing I saw that night was that picture I took from outside the house. If you had looked up to the second story window in the master bedroom, there are two distinct bright yellow eyes floating in the darkness of the house, staring directly at us down on the street below. When I showed this picture to my husband, he was so freaked out by it that he asked me to delete it immediately because he didn't want it in our house. Being sneaky, I remember saving it on Facebook before I deleted the photo from my phone so that I could share it with my friends. But after Halloween that year, I haven't been able to find that photo since. It's completely vanished and no one I know can find the copies that they saved of it either. So, I've never been the kind of person to believe in ghosts. I'm a non-religious guy. But I've seen some odd things in my 26 years. Nothing to convince me 100% that the paranormal is legit. However, I have one interesting experience that tends to get interest every time I tell it, and honestly, has made me question my stance on the paranormal ever since. About six years ago, I was a 20-year-old student living in London. My latest flat contract had run out, and I needed a place to live ASAP. I had very little money and felt guilty needing my parents to be a guarantor, so as any broke Londoner would do, I googled the cheapest place possible, somewhere I could move into that day or the next. That's how last minute this was. I was fortunate, or in actual fact, misfortunate, to find a place available to move in that day. Contract signed, I had a place to live. I moved into this detached house with all my stuff the following day. It was a dirty house, but the flat occupants were all 20 to 30 year olds, four of them, and very friendly. The area was quiet, and I felt reasonably comfortable. The house was always damp and cold. It was autumn, so it's not surprising, but it was always an unpleasant atmosphere. The garden was overgrown and creepy. The windows that faced it were scratched, cracked, and looked very dirty. The hallway lights didn't work, so the entire interior of the living room and hallways connecting to the rooms were pitch black at night. The bathroom was just something else. On my first night after speaking to one of my new flatmates, I was told that they have all experienced weird noises, especially scratching on the blackened window in the bathroom. I laughed this off as utter nonsense. Probably just a tree brushing it when it gets windy outside, I thought. So after a couple of weeks, I finally started noticing weird occurrences in the building. My room's window faced the driveway, and I liked to keep my curtains closed, just because it was west facing and I didn't like the sunlight pouring in and blinding me every morning. So I would close the curtains in the morning, head to class, come home, and find the curtains opened more than halfway. This wasn't a one-time occurrence. This happened every day. In fact, I could come home from class, close them again, go out to work or see friends, and come home to open curtains. Yet when I was in the room for hours on end, they never moved. Bit weird, but whatever. My windows were closed and locked, and so was the bedroom door when I wasn't there, and I was the only one with the key, I hope. Above me was an attic. Nobody lived up there. It was a locked storage room. But at night, I could hear what sounded like feet stomping. 
two people walking around, kids running, and sometimes whispers. Bit freaky, but I thought maybe someone in the house had access to this room and was using it at night, for who knows what. But no one was up there. The room was locked. I would sometimes go up at night and go to the door and try to get a sense of who the hell was in there, but no luck. I never saw anything, but I could always hear these footsteps. One of my flatmates was a very religious man. I could hear him praying at least five times a day, and he was always very friendly and open to talk about his faith and to listen to me stress out about the awful state of the house. But he himself didn't hear or notice anything weird other than the unhygienic state of the place. He decided at one point to head home to Algeria for a few months with his room locked. After six to seven weeks of living there, one of the other occupants moved out and a room was available there. I told a friend of mine that was as desperate as I had been weeks prior and he moved in within a few days. Things were great. We worked and went to the same uni, so it was cool hanging out with a friend. I told him the stories. Due to his religious beliefs, he wasn't a believer in ghosts. And like me, he wasn't phased by the stories. But he began to notice oddities too. The same stomping noises upstairs. The scratching windows. My curtains opening on their own. He felt like he was being watched all the time. He noticed the shed in the garden had a broken panel and could easily imagine someone being inside, sometimes watching us in the kitchen when we made food. Routine pest control opened the shed during a visit one day and found half a dozen dead rats and a pile of hollowed out bees in there. Creepy, but no monsters, right? My friend and I were eating dinner after work in the kitchen one night. I was facing him and the door to the hallway, whilst he was facing myself and the sliding glass door that gave access to the overgrown jungle garden behind. I remember him turning pale, jumping to his feet, and asking me in a very frightened tone, Can you come to my room? I laugh and asked why. He said, Seriously, can you please just come to my fucking room? It's not a joke. Then he bolted to his room like he was running away from something. I finished my sandwich with the last bite, didn't even think to turn around to see what he was so spooked about, got to his room and he locked the door, sat on its bed and turned on his PlayStation. After a few minutes, he calmed down and as he started playing, he told me that he saw something in the garden, a woman in a white dress. She walked across the garden, half a meter from the glass, almost floated past, he said, and then she vanished. He kept repeating, we have to leave, we have to leave. And that the noises were one thing, but that when you see something, everything changes. My room scarred him and everyone else the most. Another flatmate told us they thought they'd seen me in my room peering at them on the driveway through a 20 centimeter gap in my curtains one night. They said they saw the shape of a person's head. The only thing was, I wasn't there that night, or on any of those occasions mentioned, and I certainly don't peer at people through my window. After that, things got worse. Two nights after the kitchen incident, I'm woken up at around three or four in the morning. My friend is banging on my door in the pitch blackness of the hallway. I open it and he comes in shaking with fear, saying his bed was vibrating and moving and that he can't stay here any longer. The next day he speaks to a friend, he has a place to stay, so he packs up most of his stuff and he's gone. Within a few days another person left, a little creeped out but mostly annoyed with the poor state of the house. At this point, the remaining occupants and I are all looking for alternative living arrangements. Remember the religious guy that went back to Algeria? Well, he's been gone for months now and hasn't returned. The landlord makes a visit once a day and he has a spare key, so he decides to inspect the room to make sure all is okay. So he opens it up and we go in. His room was amazing. It was warm, cozy, not damp or cold, it was honestly like a different house altogether. It was really nice, 
and I really don't know how to explain that. Finally, I had decided to move in with my partner, who had avoided this house the entire time I'd lived there, maybe visiting once or twice. She hated it, hated being there, and always felt uncomfortable. On my last night, I again heard weird noises, but this time in the hall. I was aware that I was home alone that night, as the only other flatmate left was on holiday. It was, as it always was, very dark when I opened the door. Nobody was there. I walked into the living room, and the window at the back that faced the side of the house was making weird scratching noises. I needed to use the bathroom, and as a necessity, I had to carry a flashlight to do the job during these hours. I walked into the bathroom, did my business, and as I'm zipping up my pants, my flashlight briefly shines over the window. For some reason, I looked, almost as if I was expecting to see something. I didn't. I walked out of the room, and I don't know why, but I decided to look at that window once more, without the light. I saw the shape of a large man. I went back to my room and locked the door. All night, I heard feet stomping upstairs in the attic. I couldn't sleep, so I moved all my things into a pile in the middle of the room, sat on the bed, and waited for sunrise. I got a taxi first thing in the morning, and finally got the hell out of there. And whether I believe in anything paranormal still or not, you couldn't pay me to go back. This is another story from my haunted house. This is about my youngest brother that I mentioned in part one. He's 10 years younger than me and has Asperger's syndrome. Everyone in my immediate family is 100% convinced that he's a medium. I think that's why our house is haunted, because I had a dream about that. I think they're drawn to him. Anyway, when he was maybe three or four, he was pretty developmentally delayed. He could speak, but he chose what he spoke about very carefully, and that was usually only his two special interests, Toy Story and the aliens that came to talk to him at night. There was a nursing home being converted into an antique mall in my hometown, and one afternoon, my mom went down there with my brother in tow to see about renting a space. The second they walked in the door, my almost nonverbal brother said, this place is haunted, and was totally fascinated. He wasn't scared at all. He took off running through the halls while my mom spoke with the owner about rates. He eventually found his way back to my mom and would not stop tugging on her until she acknowledged him. When she spoke to him, he started telling her and the owner about all the ghosts that were there. He said that they were all old people and that they were really bored. He said one old man was quite weird. The owner actually verified this by saying multiple contractors had quit because they said it was haunted. Another example. My mom loves yard sales and would sometimes have estate sales for people for a profit. She had trouble finding a daycare that would accommodate my brother so he was usually with her. She had an estate sale for a lady that was referred to her by an acquaintance. While preparing for the sale, she purchased a gorgeous bedroom set that ended up being my bedroom set. After their sale, she met with whom she thought was the homeowner to pick up the bedroom suite. They were standing in the bedroom chatting when the husbands were disassembling the furniture, and my then seven-ish year old brother comes running in, saying that the sweet old lady in the kitchen gave him some cookies and that they were very delicious. My mom looked at the lady, who then burst into tears. She said that this was her mom's house, and that her mom had recently passed. The neighborhood kids always called her the cookie lady and would often ring her doorbell in hopes of receiving a cookie, which she was always happy to provide. Such a sweet little quip. There are also darker stories from this house, but always nice to end on a bright note once in a while.
I grew up in a haunted house. I have so many stories. But this one was on my mind today. Sidebar. Most of the encounters revolve around my brothers. I believe that my middle brother has abilities. And I believe that my youngest brother, who is also autistic, is a medium. I'm a little sensitive, but nothing like them. One particular evening, my teenaged brother and two of his buddies were hanging out at my parents' house and nobody was there but them. My brother got a phone call from a girl, so he went upstairs to his room, leaving the two friends downstairs. When he came back down about 15 minutes later, he found the house completely quiet and totally dark. The TV had been turned off and the lights as well. He said that the only light was the last little bit of dwindling daylight trickling through the windows and the glass on the front door. He started laughing and calling for his friends, thinking that they were hiding from him and playing a joke. He walked through the downstairs room by room, but couldn't find them. He started feeling really nervous, so he began trying to call his friends, but they weren't answering, and he couldn't hear their phones ringing from where he was. He went and checked upstairs to see if maybe they'd snuck past him and were hiding, but they were nowhere. By now, he said the entire vibe of the whole house had changed. He was feeling very anxious. He ran down the stairs and exited the front door directly across from the steps on the front porch, leaving the front door slightly open. As soon as he stepped outside, the front door slammed, and something from the inside of the house started banging on the door with great force and intensity. It really scared him, and he was also getting irritated, so he opened the door to confront his friends. He was laughing, saying, Oh, ha ha, okay, y'all got me. But inside, the house was silent and still. It was at that point that he heard a car door shut in the cul-de-sac, and he turned around only to see his friends arriving at the house. They told him that they had left when he took that phone call and ran to the gas station. They swore on their lives that they knew nothing about the door. When I was a little girl of about 10 or so, I would always go shopping with my aunt for my birthday. But this particular time was a little different. She wanted me to stay the night and then go shopping the next day. I agreed to do this because who doesn't love going shopping with your aunt as a kid? I was always creeped out by her house for the longest time before I stayed that night. My dad and brother have had experiences before me. They always camped out in the backyard in the woods. She had a big place, a house, a barn, a pool, even a pond, and lots of land. Sounds perfect, right? Anyway, they said that they saw a fog surrounding the house. Not the barn or anything else, but just the house. Creepy. And they also heard things in the woods, too. Yes, I am thinking what you're thinking. It was most likely animals. The fog was harder to explain. Either way, I figured that they were just trying to scare me, so I didn't think too much of it when the opportunity to stay there at night came up. Let's get on to that experience. I was up in the bedroom, right at the top of the stairs. If you walked straight up the stairs, you could walk straight into the bedroom. The catch to the bedroom is that it had a baby gate on it, so it was very hard to get in and out quickly. There was a home office to the left of the stairs, and then to the right, there was like another living room area, with an old-time bedroom connected to it with dolls and glass tea sets. Oddly enough, that's the room that I felt the safest in. Off of the living room area was a long hallway that led to my aunt and uncle's room. I was laying in bed watching my favorite movie, Mary Poppins. It was at least 9 p.m. at night. Bedtime for a child like me, right? I fell asleep during the movie. I woke up with the TV off and to a room that was completely pitch black. The door was open and I could barely see the staircase leading down. I tried to close my eyes so that I wouldn't be so scared. But what happened next? I can never forget. 
I heard footsteps coming up the stairs, and they weren't heavy, so I knew that they weren't my aunt or uncle. In fact, it sounded like a child walking up the steps. I hid under the covers and hoped that it would go away. The footsteps came all the way up the stairs, across the room, and stood right next to my bed. I tried very hard to be still and quiet. Finally, the entity turned away, and I heard the little steps go back down the stairs. I was really relieved, until I heard them ascend the staircase once more. I was so scared I wanted to scream for my aunt, but she was so far away she wouldn't have been able to hear me anyway. It came back into the room again. As I hid under the covers for the second time, it came and stopped by the other side of the bed, closest to me. I felt it tug on my blanket, and then it turned away and walked back down the stairs. So this time I got smart, or stupid. I don't know, you can decide that for yourself. Once I heard that it was far enough away, I jumped out of bed. I opened the baby gate, and I ran all the way to my aunt and uncle's room and crawled into bed with them. Let me tell you, I scared the crap out of them. Once they finally made room for me, I got all cozy, but I couldn't sleep. Anyway, it was about a minute after I got into bed with them that I heard the baby gate slam. I was so terrified, but at least I was with my aunt and uncle. The next morning, I woke up in their bed alone upstairs. Now, you might not believe this, but I don't really care if you do or not, but I woke up to three scratches on my chest and they were very painful. To this day, nobody really believes me that it happened, besides my best friend. This event still haunts me. I don't really talk to people about it because nobody ever believes me and I don't want to get ridiculed, but I just had to vent. Whatever it was, I still don't know. A demon posing as a child, probably. Something evil, that's for sure. But I guess I'll never really know. In Thessaloniki, Greece, several people consider a certain house to be very haunted. The house was said to have been the mansion of its previous owner, and today it has not been inhabited since it's dilapidated and the surrounding area has been transformed into a warehouse for building materials. It's rumored that those who have stayed there at night have heard terrible noises from ghosts roaming in the rooms, making them flee in terror. It is also said that the previous owner's building is accompanied by a curse that he put on it, and that anyone who lives there is in danger of going mad, and anyone who tries to demolish it is in danger of dying. In the past, two contractors decided to demolish it, but on the day of the planned demolition, they suddenly died. One died from a heart attack, and the other was killed in a traffic accident in Athens. I don't have any personal experience with this house, but I don't think I want any. About 10 years ago, my mom, two sisters, and I, and another small family that we were friends with took a short trip to Northumberland. It's not too far from Alnwick Castle, where the first and second Harry Potter films were shot. My dad and the father of the other family had to work, so it was just our two moms and us seven children, aged between five and 15 years old. Because the other family was quite wealthy and we were not, they paid for the accommodation, which turned out to be an old country house built in the late 1700s. Newton Hall. It has since been stylishly refurbished into a wedding venue, but was then an eerie and isolated shadow of its 19th century preoccupants. I remember us all being shuffled through dark wood-paneled passages 
into a large staircase lined with old portraits. We joked about it being like Hogwarts, the portraits' grim inhabitants with their eyes alive and moving, following us as we climbed the stairs. What was first a joke soon became a genuine concern in the following couple of days. As a side note, I'm still amazed at how we had the whole place to ourselves, me being young then and not fully appreciating what the cost must have been to rent it out. My mom still claims it was because there were no more holiday rentals available in the area during summer, implying that this grand hall was a sort of last resort, but I don't think so. Anyway, in addition to the creepy paintings, there was a huge Native American style totem pole with its garish peeling paint and beady eyes glaring from multiple heads. This stood watch on the landing of the second floor. In a so-called playroom were various animal heads mounted on the walls, and in the tall corridors on the ground floor were benches, their legs fashioned from a brutal mesh of deer antlers. It was the benches that were the first cause for alarm. On the first morning, upon waking up, we noticed that one or two of these benches had moved a few inches from their proper placement at the wall's edge. However, this strange but subtle event was not given any thought, at least until the next morning when it happened again. I remember distinctly that the blame was put to the eldest of the seven children, Michael, who had a sort of mischievous manner about him, but he denied it. This physical disturbance in the already extremely scary house was enough to make us sleep in pairs. I remember that my older sister and I were taking turns sleeping on the side of the bed that faced the wall, rather than be exposed to anything that might come in the night. Only one other thing happened that seemed poignant enough for me to remember now. Three of the girls developed some kind of rash while we stayed at the hall. The doctor diagnosed it as empedigo, an infectious skin rash which explains the coincidence. However, the cause still remains completely ambiguous and was never discovered. I don't know if it was a natural infection or something more sinister. Either way, the home was the scene of one of the creepiest things I've ever experienced, before or since, and I genuinely hope to not experience anything like that again. So, my family moved into the house in question in 1999. I was five at the time. The house isn't too old, built in the 70s, and I live in a very small community. So as far as I know, nothing bad ever happened there. Just to give you a quick layout of the house. When you come in the front door, to the left is a hallway, and the last door on the left is my bedroom. But there is a bathroom at the very end of the hallway. And the way the house was laid out is such that whenever the bathroom door is open, the mirror reflects back down the hall toward you. Things only happened after the sun went down. Ever since I was young, I would always wake up in the middle of the night either thirsty or hungry, so I would go to the kitchen to make a snack. While walking back to my room down the hall, I would always feel something right behind me, reaching trying to grab a hold of me, which of course forced me to speed walk or light sprint back to my room, where I would sit quietly trying to calm my heart. Whenever the bathroom door is open though, and you could see your reflection in the hall, I never felt like I was being followed, but I would see shadows running around behind me or peeking their heads out around the corner like they didn't want to be seen. Shortly after we moved in, we got a dog, since then we always had dogs in the house. We've had three in total, and most of the time, if I was ever home alone, they would come and hang out with me. And every dog, even to this day, will occasionally just stare at my bedroom door that leads to the hall, or even snarl at it. Fast forward a few years to 17 to 18 year old me. I'm working a part-time retail job where I keep the keys to the store. 
On some occasions, I had the mornings off and someone would need the keys to open, so I left them in the mailbox outside my front door just so I wouldn't have to wake up early. It happened on two occasions where my coworker John would come to get the keys in the morning, and as he was getting back in the car, he would see somebody staring at him through my dad's bedroom window, which was the room next to mine. John stared at him for a few minutes and waved a little, but the figure didn't move or react. He would just look down to start his car, look back up, and the figure would be totally gone. He described the figure as a wrinkled old man with a bald head. Nobody in my family has ever matched that description, and at the time, my entire family had left for work and I was still sound asleep in bed. I'm also not an old man. John had refused to ever go back to get the keys again after that. I don't know how many entities I have in my home, and though I have an uneasiness and nervous feeling, I never felt outright threatened, until one day. I was 22 at the time, I was just in the basement getting laundry on a normal day. Nothing was off, nothing felt weird, it was 100% normal. I was finished folding all my clothes, so I went to carry them upstairs to my bedroom. And as I was climbing the stairs, I heard loud stomping coming from behind me, down the hallway where the laundry room was. Then they sped up, as if somebody was running full sprint toward me. I spun around, and I saw this black figure round the corner and barrel up the stairs. It made it to within an inch of my face, and then disappeared. I almost shot myself. I've never felt such anger and malice in my whole life. I ran to my bedroom, slammed the door, and just sat there in silence, listening for any bit of movement at all. But it was completely still. Those are the experiences that I've had so far. I can only guess what might come next, but I think it's safe to say I definitely live in a haunted house. I've had many paranormal experiences, but I thought I'd share this one in particular. My mother-in-law died quite unexpectedly during Christmas in 2013. She was in a coma for about a week before she died. She lived in a senior living community in Southern California called Laguna Woods. While my mother-in-law was in the hospital and following her death, my husband, one-year-old son and I stayed at her place. At the time, we lived in Texas, but we're from Southern California, and all of our family are here too. One of my first experiences was in the middle of the night. I picked up my son out of his pack and play because he was crying. I held him as I walked to the living room to sit on the recliner and rock him. I didn't turn on any lights as there was enough ambient light to see. Just as I was about to sit on the recliner, I was startled because it looked like someone was already sitting there. I immediately stood back up because of my natural reaction of thinking somebody was already there. It sure did give my heart a jump. From about then on, I felt a presence. It didn't scare me, but I was definitely aware of it. I don't believe it was my mother-in-law. I believe it may have been a previous owner. I felt that it was probably a woman, but sometimes it felt like a man. So my mother-in-law's death brought together some of my husband's family who had been estranged. My husband's uncle has an adult son with whom they had a falling out for several years. Word of my mother-in-law's passing got to the estranged son, which is a cousin of my husband, and he showed up at the memorial and surprised his family. They had a positive and emotional reunion. He only stayed for the memorial and then left for home. After the memorial, my husband's side of the family and I went back to my mother-in-law's house for an after-party visit sort of thing. They stayed for several hours and it was a great reunion. We ordered pizza and I called my sister who lived in the neighborhood to come over. She came and socialized and it was nice. 
nothing remarkable happened until the next day. So my sister calls me the next day to catch up and see how we're doing, and we talk about the previous day and night's events. She commented on how nice it was to see my husband's family, and how great it was that my husband's uncle reconciled with his son. She added that it was so nice that the son had come over to the house afterward. I said he didn't come over, he went home immediately after the memorial. My sister said, really? I could swear he was there. I explained that the only men present were my husband, his uncle, and an older cousin. My sister said she saw a man, maybe in his early to late thirties, wearing khaki pants and a sweater vest standing between the living room and kitchen. She said she made eye contact with him a couple of times and he smiled. She said he looked like he was listening and observing the conversations that were going on in the kitchen and living room, but he wasn't talking to anyone. She said her intention was to go and chat with him, thinking that it was the formerly estranged son, but was caught up in conversation with other relatives. She said that when she was finally free to go and chat, she couldn't find him anywhere. She didn't think anything of it at the time, she figured he just left. Since I already had an experience with the recliner sitting person, this made my blood run cold and honestly gave me the chills. Eventually, my husband had to return to Texas to work. My son and I stayed in California for a few weeks to clean out my mother-in-law's house. It was during my stay that more weird things happened. One night, I was lying in bed reading when I felt someone watching me from the hallway. My body had its own reaction to the presence that I couldn't control. I felt anxious, but not scared. Just that I knew someone was in the house besides me and my son was an eerie feeling. I finally made a deal with the ghost or ghosts. I said, listen, I know you're here and that's okay. Just don't scare or harm me or my son. Otherwise, you're welcome to stay. I can't recall the exact timeline, but one morning I found my one-year-old son completely unclothed in his pack and play. He had never ever removed his clothing before this and he's never done it since. Even his diaper was missing. At the time, I thought it was some new phase with him taking off his clothes, but he never did it again. Not even a sock. I truly believe some entity was responsible. It was just too out of his character to take off all of his clothes. Again, I reiterated our commands to the ghosts. You're welcome here, just don't scare or harm me or my son. I had help from my family packing away items that we wanted to keep. During this time, another sister of mine came from the hallway and said that she smelled perfume strongly in the hallway like Chanel number no. 5. There were only three of us at the house that day and all of us were working together in the kitchen. No one had been in the hallway other than to pass through to get to the restroom. I smelled the perfume a couple of times too, on different occasions. My mother-in-law had all kinds of aversions and I never knew her to wear perfume, so I didn't think it was her spirit. Also during this packing day, I was packing up her china from the china cabinet, and I suddenly got an overwhelming scent of body odor. I even did a pit check of myself, and it wasn't me. I did a covert sniff of my sister and friend helping me that day, and they didn't smell like it either. I was hesitant to tell them, but then I just had them come over to the china cabinet area and ask if they smelled anything. They both said B.O. and it wasn't any of us. I just chalked it up to another spirit encounter. Another time, I was getting ready to host the estate sale in the house. Everything was prepped and ready for a 7 a.m. start time the next day. As part of the setup, I had my mother-in-law's shoes neatly displayed on a shoe rack in the master bedroom just a few feet from the side of the bed that I was sleeping in. I got up that morning and showered. Nothing was amiss. When I came back into the room, the racked shoes were on the floor next to the bed that I had just woken up from. The rack was still in place properly, it's just that now all of the shoes were on the floor. I froze in place when I entered the room and saw the shoes. I was like, what the hell is going on here? There's no way they could have just fallen over by themselves and then been neatly placed there. They had been squarely placed on the rack the night before. 
I would have had to step over them to get out of bed. Additionally, some of the shoes were far from the rack. Even if they had fallen, there's no way they could have rolled that far. And it wasn't my son because I immediately checked on him and he was still sound asleep in his pack and play in a completely different room. Fast forward to later in the day of the estate sale. Another couple of friends came over to help me. After a busy morning, we had a lull in the afternoon. We tidied up a bit and put things back in place that had been handled by shoppers. We took a break and sat on the porch and chatted while we enjoyed the lull. I recounted to my friends about how I thought the house was haunted. One friend was really spooked when I told her about the perfume. She said that she too smelled it in the hallway earlier that morning. She said that she was walking behind a man in the hallway and she had an overwhelming scent of perfume. She thought it was odd that a man would be wearing such strong women's perfume. I said, well, you've met my ghost. Now for the really freaky stuff. So after I recounted all the incidents above to my friends during our break, I did a walk around of the house just to double check that things were in order for the next round of shoppers. I go into the master bedroom and the frigging shoes are on the floor again. I screamed this time. My friends came running to see what happened. They saw the shoes and they were like, you're messing with us. I said, I swear to God, I'm not messing with you. These shoes were not on the floor before. When we tidied up, I re-racked all of them. And the shoes were almost in the same exact position that they had been in that morning when I found them on the floor after my shower. Freaky, man. We eventually sold the house. I asked the realtor if there was a disclosure law for haunted houses. She said she's never heard of such a thing. I told her about how I thought the house was haunted, but she probably just thought I was crazy. Either way, I definitely experienced some paranormal activity there, and I would be so curious to find out if the new owners did as well. As a kid, I was a huge fan of the paranormal, mostly due to my love for movies like Ghostbusters, but never in my life did I think that I would live in an actual haunted house, or in my case, a haunted mobile home. This all started when I was around four years old. We lived in a pretty nice mobile home. Growing up, my aunt would babysit us, as both of my parents worked crazy hours to support our family of five. Before we went to sleep, my aunt had a habit of telling us ghost stories. One night, as my paternal grandmother was visiting from Puerto Rico, my parents moved my twin and I to the living room as my grandmother claimed our room for the night. I was already creeped out about sleeping in the living room, which was pitch black. What made it worse was that they decided to put the cup with my grandmother's dentures next to the sofa. Having a very overactive imagination, I started to scare myself with ideas of what those teeth could do to me in the night. I struggled to go to sleep as my youngest sister, who was about three months old, was getting fussy and not wanting to sleep herself. On what took my mom a while, she finally got my sister to sleep before 10 p.m. I was relieved, and then I went back to trying to get some sleep myself. As the night progressed, I was sound asleep until I was awoken by the noise. I didn't know what it was at first. And then I realized it was a girl laughing. Scared out of my wits, I hid under the blanket. I heard the laughing get louder and closer. I shook in fear and attempted to look up, but I heard the girl run away from me and start running all over the living room and into my baby sister's room. It was then that I heard my baby sister crying hysterically. I heard the laugh through all of the crying. I just laid on the sofa trembling in fear as I heard both the laughter and the crying. Merged together, it was truly eerie. A few moments later, I heard running, and this time it was my mom getting up to get my sister and take her to the master bedroom on the other side of the trailer. I don't know how I did it, but I did manage to go back to sleep. The following morning, I asked my mom about it, and she told me she was getting that trailer blessed by a priest. 
A priest did come, and all of the activity stopped, or so we thought. After the first incident, I started elementary school. I became a very avid reader, as my now late maternal grandfather had gotten us to start reading at a very young age. I would read books on ghosts every chance I had, which I actually still do. Nearly two years after my first encounter with the ghost, my little brother was born. Everything had been okay, and that's when it started again. Around this time, I wasn't sleeping in the living room, but I could still hear the running from my bedroom. The reason being that the nursery was in the room next to the room that I shared with my twin. I started sleeping with the radio on just so I could avoid hearing that ghost running and laughing. One day I was told to shower as I had gotten pretty dirty from jumping into all the puddles outside. I heard my mom say that she was taking my siblings with her to the store and she'd be right back. The store was just two blocks away, so I figured it would be about 10 to 15 minutes to shower. I was singing in the shower and then I heard that laugh. It scared me as I had only ever heard that laugh at night and when one of my siblings was around. I immediately shut off the water, got a towel and went for the doorknob. I kept trying to open the door but I couldn't, it was jammed. I started crying and the ghost started pounding on the door and laughing at me. It seemed to have gone on for a while until, as suddenly as it started, it stopped. I then heard my mom call my name. She very easily opened the door and saw me on the ground sobbing. I had told her what happened and she yet again called another priest to come and bless the trailer. Nothing happened there after that last blessing since we moved about six months later. I don't know what's going on there now though. The whole experience is a big reason that I usually shower with my door open halfway now. I also recently looked up the history of that neighborhood. As typical as it sounds, it seems that the area where I lived was at one point a makeshift cemetery before our city had an official cemetery. Our trailer had been positioned on top of the grave of a little girl. The whole neighborhood is known for a lot of hauntings. Sometimes I wonder if they removed the bodies or not, but I'll never know as it seems the trailer I lived in was moved and it's now a garden and parking spot for a house that was built on the lot next door. So a few months back, I moved into this beautiful two-story house with my mother, and we had a roommate with two kids in a great neighborhood. The price was suspiciously cheap, but at the time, we didn't think twice about the price. Anyway, the first night was a little creepy. I thought I heard footsteps coming up the stairs. My mom was close to the stairs on the second floor, so I always heard who comes up and down, but... I just dismissed it, thinking it was just the house settling, as they say. Plus, I thought to myself, people always get a creepy vibe the first night they move into a new place, right? So after a few tosses and turns, I eventually fell asleep. Now this was the first night, and the next encounter didn't happen for a few weeks, but this definitely got everyone in the house spooked. That night after work, I came home, happy that I had the next day off. So as soon as I got home, I got ready to play a game. As I sat down, I felt this presence in the room. But it was only me, and it literally felt like something evil was looking directly at me. I felt drained, but at the time, I didn't think much of it. Looking back on it now, it was almost like something was stealing my energy or feeding off of it. But as normal, I dismissed it and went to go ask my roommate if she wanted to smoke and she said yes. So we went outside and we were talking for a good bit. But out of nowhere, she brought up how she felt about the house. Then she told me what happened to her earlier that day. She told me that when she came outside to smoke as she was sitting on the stairs, which is where we always smoked, she happened to turn and she saw the blinds from our living room open. She saw a figure looking directly at her, but when she turned to get a better look, it vanished. 
She said she didn't go back into the house for a few hours, but when she did, nothing was there. To me, it seemed like nothing. I honestly thought she was just seeing things. But we both felt like there was always something watching us. This is when things get a little scary. About a week or two passed, and my roommate and I were down in the basement smoking because it was snowing outside. We finished up, and then her two kids wanted to play, so we both stayed downstairs and watched the kids play. We were sitting a good bit away from the stairs when we saw her youngest son look up the stairs. The creepy thing is the way he turned and made it look like somebody had called him. Mind you, we were both looking at him at this time, so when he turns, he then slowly looks up the stairs as if he was trying to make out what he was looking at. As soon as his head stops, I'm assuming that's when he saw whatever it was he saw, and he started crying, like literally bawling. When his mother called his name, he just smiled and ran towards her. From our point of view, we couldn't see up the stairs because there was a wall covering it, but we know he saw something. That's when we knew the house was probably haunted. Since she was home more than I was, and more than my mother was, she had stories about doors being opened that were originally closed. You know, the normal haunting stories. But now we started to believe her even more. My mother said she started to feel depressed whenever she got home. This was the scariest thing that happened to me personally. We were moving, and at first everything was going smoothly. I was packing up the living room, and my mother was packing up her room. The roommate had already moved out, so it was just the two of us. After a few minutes of moving, I heard a loud bang. It was as if a bowling ball had fallen off of a countertop. It came from upstairs. So I went to go check it out. Nothing fell. Nothing was on the ground anywhere. My mom and I were pretty spooked, so we left to get some extra boxes and then we came back. When we got back, it was nighttime, and I went upstairs to pack up the kitchen. As I was doing so, I heard this loud, demonic screeching sound. I know it sounds far-fetched, but it's true. At the time, I didn't think much of it. In my head, I knew it came from in the area I was in, but when you're in a situation like that, sometimes defenses take over and you just try to brush it off. So I brushed it off. Thought it was just a car from outside that had a bad break or had to brake hard. Anything other than what I'd actually heard. I proceeded to pack the kitchen. When I opened the cabinet, I heard the loud bang again. So I looked around. And then I looked back into the cabinet, proceeding to close it and run downstairs. Literally nothing had fallen in that room. I was running downstairs when I heard the screech again. But this time, it came from inside the cabinet. I was still close enough to tell. It was almost like I felt a gust of wind blow past my head at that point. And I swear it felt like something went through my forehead. It felt like a punch. It wasn't like a fist punch, but like an energetic punch. It didn't hurt, it was more like a force that went through my body that I could physically feel. I booked it downstairs and told my mom what happened. Needless to say, we moved a lot faster than expected. If anyone has any experience with this stuff, please tell me what really happened to us. I always find it kind of odd, ghosts and demons and stuff like that, but maybe they are real. Something clearly was going on at that house. I just wish I knew what it was. I've had some crazy things happen to me at my house. My neighborhood sits on top of a Native American burial ground. There are even some ruins and a burial mound in my friend's backyard, literally. Also, there was a Revolutionary War battle about a mile down the street. Fun stuff, right? Ever since I moved into that house with my parents about 13 years ago, I was four. My little brother was around one. Now I'm 17 and he's 14. A lot has happened. My brother, who was six at the time of this story, used to run around the house claiming to be chased by a monster. 
My mom and I were sitting on the couch one day and he was standing in front of the TV, but then he started shaking and ran to my mom and sat on her lap. He said that a lady tapped him on the shoulder and asked if she could speak with his father. You could bet my mom picked up both of us like footballs, got in the car as fast as possible and went to my grandma's. For the longest time after that though, things have been quiet. If something happened, it was very minor. Within the last five years, however, things have really kicked up again. For example, once I was standing in the kitchen at around age 13, I was staring out the window and I heard my name whispered in my ear really softly. I remember saying, yeah mom, only to look and see her fast asleep on the couch in the next room. Another time at around three in the afternoon, while I was home alone with my brother who was napping upstairs, I heard a knock on the door and a couple of kids giggle pretty loudly. I answered the door right away, too fast for them to have run off, but no one was there. My mom heard a loud crash once and a little kid giggle while in the living room. She ran into the kitchen to call my dad and tell him about it. While she was in the kitchen, the garbage can lid started swinging. My dad, who's never experienced anything paranormal until last month, was working in the garage. The cap that keeps the air inside of a bike was thrown at him from across the room. I don't know why all of a sudden these things just started happening out of nowhere after all these years of silence. My mom runs around the house with holy water after every experience because she's scared that it's going to hurt someone. I kind of doubt that. It's never hurt anybody before. It's only given us inconveniences and scared us, but I guess anything is possible. Does anyone have any explanation? My girlfriend landed a gig where she has to watch this eight-year-old, and she decided to bring me along as well. When we got there, the mother was running late, so we sat in the living room and talked to the kids. The little girl that we were babysitting, and also the teenage daughter, were in there. So as the conversation naturally runs its course, the little girl mentions the ghosts that she's seen, and met, and even felt. I'm a pretty happy-go-lucky sort of dude, so I edged along the topic of these ghosts, to which the little one happily obliged. However, I noticed that the older sister started to get a little nervous or anxious, and tried to talk over her younger sister. This intrigued me. The girl went on to describe all the ones that she has seen and felt, explaining that there are good ones and bad ones. So whatever, right? Just a silly kid's imagination running wild at night. Apparently they had already had somebody come in and cleanse the house though, meaning that it was a reality for the family after all. On a final note, the little girl also mentioned that she thinks they missed one. The cherry on top is that the most active room in the house was right beside where we were sleeping in the basement. Fast forward to the nighttime and when we were trying to fall asleep, my girlfriend and I started to feel a bit nervous, and that feeling kept multiplying until I started conversing in my own mind with whatever was in the room with us. As I finished my sentence, saying something like, I know you're here, I felt ice-cold chills run from my left side to my right side, and as they took over my body, I stood up and said, hello, right to my girlfriend. Safe to say we spent the rest of the night upstairs, I don't know if it was just nerves or my mind playing tricks, but it was definitely weird. I grew up in several haunted houses. Even now, we have an entity in our kitchen who we jokingly call the fridge ghost, as it likes to hang out by the fridge and occasionally open it in the middle of the night. But for now, I'm going to talk about a house I lived in until middle school. It's located on a street called Cherry, which my friends and I always joked about for obvious reasons. 
However, nothing about the feeling I had when I lived in that house with my family was anything to joke about. My friends never wanted to spend the night at the house I grew up in. All of them had the same bad feeling staying there. The sinking feeling that formed in the pit of their stomachs before something would happen. And unusual things inevitably would, more often than not. Doors would regularly open and close on their own. And this was something that I chalked up to the tilt in the foundation, at least at first. But when you hear your doors, cabinets, doors leading to the house, essentially anything with a hinge, slam in the middle of the night, you start to question if it's just regular house noises. The windows would open and shut on their own as well, which is a little harder to pin on a shifting foundation. There were a couple of times that the televisions would turn on and off on their own. Sometimes the volume on the TV sets would go up and down as well. And there were other times the channels would show up on the television sets that I've never seen. I could probably blame the odd television behavior on magnetism or the fact that both television sets were quite old. However, the strange things I would see on those off channels through the static are enough to convince me that there might have been something else going on there. I would often hear noises in the vents, like things were crawling around in them. Sometimes it sounded like bodies were being dragged through the ventilation shafts. Sometimes I would hear scratching on the walls or the windows or other out of the ordinary sounds like footsteps on the floor when no one else was there. My mom used to tell me that it was little woodland creatures who got into the insides of the walls, but I never saw these animals. The closest I came to seeing anything close to that was one family of skunks we found living under our porch. But after moving them out safely to the woods, we never saw any other animals that could account for making the types of noises I was hearing. Sometimes I heard whispering, and other times I heard yelling, like a faint cry through the walls. There were other times I would find weird yellow liquid on the walls or other similar substances. My mom used to tell me it was mold and not to touch it until she could clean it. But it didn't look like any mold I've ever seen. It didn't look like any of those substances could be made by anything living. I would also see ghostly figures wandering through the house. When I was young, I used to talk in great detail with what I think was a child female entity. It was more like a one-way conversation with the entity, although sometimes it would answer in its own way. I wrote an essay about my friendship with that ghost for one of my classes later on and submitted it as fiction so the teacher wouldn't think I was crazy. But the truth is that my friendship with that ghost and some of the other presences was very real. Of course, there was the typical haunting stuff too. Objects being thrown, pulled, or just simply going missing altogether. I used to joke with my mom that the wall trolls or house gnomes had made off with our stuff, to which she would just roll her eyes. When my mom started seeing some strange entities peering at us through the windows or as we were sleeping, she started to take my stories a little more seriously. She won't agree with everything I have claimed to see in that house, but she will definitely admit that there were presences that would appear. I often saw toys come to life, including a doll my aunt had brought me back from Russia. I had a dream that the doll was trying to kill me by choking me to death. When I woke up, the doll was sleeping next to me in my bed. No one had ever moved it there that night. I ended up blessing the doll and throwing it away. To this day, I don't like dolls and I won't sleep in the same room with one. I remember that the landlord who lived in the house next door was always asking us how things were going there. My mom told me to keep quiet about the things we saw because the rent was cheap and she didn't want to upset her. But even though I never got any direct answers from the landlord, I could see by her behavior that she must have known something was off with the house. Perhaps the strangest thing was that the house didn't particularly have a dark past or a history attached that would make it stand out as a hub for spiritual activity. The landlord was cranky and her attitude could have contributed to the overall negative energy. But other than that, we never knew what in particular made the house so haunted. I didn't exclusively see evil entities in the house either, 
Like I said, I made some friendships with the ghosts, and I even saw other entities, what I can only describe to be little people and entities that looked like what people say greys are, but they weren't aliens. This leads me to believe that the house was built on top of some kind of ley line or portal that opened up into other realms. Maybe instead of a haunted house, we just had a house with a gateway. I'm not sorry that I had the experiences that I did. In fact, I think it broadened my horizons and showed me from an early age that there's more to the world than what we can physically see. I will always think of the friendships I formed with the spirits and other entities fondly. For some people, my experience might have a rational explanation, and that's fine. I've always had an open mind, and I'm happy to listen to many sides of an argument. But for me, the experiences I had in this house growing up were tangible, and not just the imagination of an elementary school kid. They are something that has colored my view of this beautiful and mysterious world, and has opened my eyes to all kinds of realms of possibility. So this happened around seven years ago, in 2012 or 2013. I started high school, and the place I attended was in a different city from my hometown, so I stayed in the school's dorm. The place was on the outskirts of the city. It was a large area with two school buildings, two separated PE buildings, a study hall, a kitchen and cafeteria, and the dorm. It was a custom for freshmen to stay in the big bedrooms, the ones that could host up to 12 people. In the room that I was staying in, there were only seven girls, including me, throughout the whole year. Seven is a bad number in my country, similar to how some people don't like 13. Through the school year, we experienced really weird things happening. Every month, we gathered a handful of screws that weren't missing from anywhere. We found weird candy wrappings, old-style ones that nobody had had in the room. Once, three of us had to go home during the week because all of us had had some sort of accident. One time, our lock broke, which locked half of the group out and the other half in. The room was separated into three sections, and all three had double windows. One time, the middle inside window broke during the day and there were just a lot of other small things that happened. We usually joked about them, even though we were all a bit uneasy, because they were happening so often. And because they were so frequent, we just shrugged them off. Then, the scariest thing happened. It was March 13th. I remember this vividly, because we have a national holiday on the 15th, and that meant a long weekend. One of my roommates was a sleep talker, and she usually fell asleep before everyone. We had a habit of making fun of her a bit because it was always gibberish to us. Well, not that night. She fell asleep pretty early and talked about her boyfriend in her sleep. We silently laughed at her and after a while, the others went to bed. Three other girls and I were sleeping in the last section, far from the door. We pushed together three beds and slept cuddled up most of the night. I was sleeping on one end of the beds, and the sleep-talking girl, Henriette, on the other end. There were two other girls between us, Yvette and Ata. I almost fell asleep when Ata let out a small scream next to me. I quickly sat up and saw that Henny was pulling Yvette's ponytail and was choking her. We quickly get her hands off of Yvette and cuddled up on the bed, trying to stay away from her while calling her name hoping that she would wake, but she didn't. Then she started to talk to us about, quote, the people who were locked up in the attic. She was talking about how they were free now, and they were getting closer. She told us that these people would kill us all. By that time, everyone in the room was freaking out. The girls in front kept telling her to cut it out, but the people in the back, where I was, we feared for our lives. I'm not a religious person anymore, but I was back then, so at one point, I started to quietly pray. 
hugging the two sobbing girls. I didn't even say two lines when Henny said in a menacing voice, Don't pray. That won't help you. One of the girls in the front screamed and turned the light on. It took us five minutes at least to wake up Henny, and when she woke up, she seemed terrified and started to cry and kept asking us what had happened. I left that school at the end of the school year, but that night still haunts me. A few weeks ago, I was talking to my mom. It was a Monday night and she looked pretty tired. So I asked her what was up. She told me that the night before, at about five in the morning, she was woken by the sensation of being watched. She had her back to the wall, but she felt as though someone was behind her, laying in the bed with her. She felt a cold chill and was paralyzed with fear. After a few minutes, she finally convinced herself to look. Of course, there was nothing there, but it took her quite a while to fall back asleep. The funny thing is, at the same time in my room in the basement, which is nowhere near her, so her moving would not have woken me up, I was awoken by a sound, so I sat up to look, and there was a man standing at the end of my bed. Of course, it scared me so much, within a second I flung my covers off to sit up, but he was gone. There's a chair at the end of my bed, with no space to stand, and he couldn't have been that tall while sitting. We were both spooked. Today, I was sitting alone in my basement working on homework, and someone ran their fingers through my hair. I'm pretty sure our house is haunted. I would like to share a personal experience that I had in my childhood home in the early 90s when I was six years old. This isn't the first experience, and it definitely wasn't the last, but it's the only time that I ever truly saw her. A quick backstory, the house is a brick colonial, built by one of the very first families to settle outside of Philadelphia. They were a very affluent family who owned a large portion of land in the area and worked in the city. The house was lived in by their descendants well into the early 1900s, so, as you can imagine, a lot of history, births, deaths, and such were going on within those walls. As a child, I suffered from nightmares, a lot of them. It was commonplace for me to wake up in the middle of the night, jarred awake by some terrifying dream and this time it was no different. On this particular night, I had awoken from a scary dream, and in order to calm myself down, I laid quietly in my bed and scanned the dark corners of my bedroom for some unknown threat. I have no idea what I expected to find, but I definitely remember the feeling of what could be hiding here in the shadows. As I looked around, nothing seemed to be out of the ordinary at first, but then all of a sudden, there she was, standing in my doorway, staring directly at me. Her face was emotionless. She was very beautiful, with shoulder-length brown hair that had large waves toward the bottom, and she was wearing a long white nightgown. Forgive me for the cliché, but that's what she was wearing. I stared at her in shock and confusion, and she just stared back. I didn't understand what was happening, but what I did know was that there was a woman in my house in the middle of the night that I didn't recognize, and she was looking directly into my eyes. She was clear as day, as if somebody was just standing there, watching over their child as they slept. The wheels in my head were turning, and all I could come up with was, this person should not be here. The next thing I remember doing was throwing the covers over my head, as you do, with my heart racing, and thinking over and over, please go away, please go away. I have no idea how long I hid under the covers, but when I emerged, she was gone. From what my mother tells me, I didn't tell her right away what had happened. 
I think she said that I told her a couple of days later that I saw a woman in the house. From that point onwards, even to this day, when I visit my parents, who still live there, you had better bet that that door is shut. Friends ask me how on earth I could live there. The way I see it, her presence has never been malicious, and she lived there first, so it's just as much her house as it is mine if she chooses to stay. She does seem to have a sense of humor, though. I thought about saving that story for a different day, but it does directly correlate to the original. So, I will add it here. Fast forward to last summer. I was back home for a short time helping to run the family business, which is also on the same property but in a separate building. The topic of hauntings came up with one of the employees that I had grown close with. I told her that we have a resident ghost in the family home, and told her the story that I just told you. She jokingly said to remind her never to come to visit. I reassured her that it wasn't that bad, and that I personally hadn't experienced anything recently when I visit. I even made a joke that perhaps she had moved out. We laughed, and that was the end of it. Or so I thought. That very same evening, I came downstairs to ask my mother something, and found that I was alone in the house. The property is pretty large, so it's not uncommon to be around and not know where somebody is. I went into the kitchen and found some almonds to snack on. Just then, I felt like someone was in the house with me. I figured it was my mom coming back, and I checked around the corner, but there was no one there. I called out to her and received no response. It was strange, but I shrugged it off and went back to snacking. I had my back to the entrance to the kitchen, and I was just sort of standing there staring out the kitchen window and daydreaming. That is when I felt it. Someone poked me on the back of my arm. It was a playful poke, the kind you do when you sneak up behind someone and tap them to get their attention. In the time it took me to turn to see who was there, I remember wondering who it could possibly be. My parents really are not the type to sneak up behind you and poke you. It was no one. No one was there. I fully expected someone to be standing there, so when there wasn't, I was so taken aback that I let out a startled yell. I power walked straight for the front door and left the house. The feeling I had was like reality slapped me in the face. I'm completely convinced that it was her giving me a playful nudge, saying, I didn't move out guess who's still here. That really freaked me out. I can handle little things here and there, but being physically touched? No thank you. Anyway, that's all. I just wanted to share my story. My story is from when I was growing up at my parents' house in Burton, Michigan. Since I was about seven or eight, all the way up until I moved out, I witnessed several odd occurrences. My dad was an over-the-road truck driver, so I was home with my mom most of the time. Weird things that have happened include tapping on the walls, voices, being touched, feeling like you're being watched, and even a full-on person that disappeared in front of me. There have been several instances where I, and my friends who I have never told this to, have heard chunks of conversation coming from other rooms or downstairs. When I went to investigate, it would immediately stop. I was home alone, the TV was off, and the windows were closed. There have been a few other events, such as tapping on walls, doors shutting, and very clear footsteps walking along the hardwood floors. Once, they even went past me so close that I could feel it in the floorboards. The creepiest thing was one day a friend and I were down in the basement, which consisted of a large family room, a laundry room, and my dad's workout room. The door to the workout room did not have a doorknob since they were refinishing the house. There was only a hole in the door for one. I don't remember why, but my friend and I looked through the hole and clearly saw a man sitting on a weight bench. She thought it was my dad. We didn't think anything of it until shortly after at dinner when I asked my dad why he wasn't at the table. I then learned that he was a few states away out on the road still. I had thought he came home. 
I told my mom and she immediately called the police thinking that there should have been someone in the house. She said she heard commotion in that room earlier in the day, but she thought it was us. There was no sign of anyone being in there. Another creepy thing happened in the basement. Some friends and I were in the family room playing Nintendo 64, and clear as day, a man walked right past the double sliding laundry room doors. The room is like 30 by 8 and has a set of the bifold closet doors as an entrance. Almost all of my friends saw this. The man walked past and right before he was out of sight, turned toward the wall and made a motion like he was opening a refrigerator door and putting something in. He then walked out of sight. We went in there to see who the hell it was and there was nobody there. I've been living on the other side of the state for three years, but my mom still lives there and is most of the time alone with the dog since my dad is still on the road a lot. She says that she still hears the conversations and the footsteps quite often and has seen the guy in the basement twice. I'm skeptical, but honestly, I don't know what to make of it. There have been multiple witnesses and I've tried to debunk everything, but I just don't know how to explain it. When I was in my late teens, early 20s, my dad moved into an old house, one of the oldest left standing in my town. Our town has a rich history with battles and rebellions. Through some research, I figured it was built for an earl back in the day. The house was split into two apartments. When he first moved in, I didn't experience a whole lot, just an overall feeling of strangeness there was a staircase that led to a solid wall. Hollow walls with no doors going into them. Certain rooms that were just freezing cold. It just always felt as if somebody was watching. After a few months, I experienced the first thing. What I thought was sleep paralysis. I had fallen asleep on the sofa watching TV. I woke up to feel somebody breathing on my cheek. I could clearly hear the breaths right next to me, and I was frozen. After what felt like an hour, I managed to move. And at that exact moment, a distorted face came flying out of the corner toward me before disappearing. Maybe a month after this, I woke up in bed, and I could hear footsteps on the balcony outside my bedroom. I thought maybe somebody was trying to break in. It went on for maybe 10 minutes, I didn't investigate, but the next morning I asked my dad if he had heard anything, but he hadn't. We went outside to see if anything was disturbed, and there was a huge handprint, bigger than either of our hands, on the condensation on the balcony door. I freaked out, but my dad played it down. He's a massive skeptic. The next night, he heard somebody on his balcony and ran out to see who it was. As soon as he got outside, all of our bins under the balcony were fallen over, but no one was to be seen. Another day I was in my bedroom. I had a guitar in the corner and out of the blue it made a noise, as if somebody had strummed the strings. There weren't any windows open and it wasn't just a breeze or something. I ran, but my dad again tried to explain it away. The next day he was in my room putting away clothes or something and it happened again. He ignored it, and it happened again. He said something along the lines of, F off, I don't believe in ghosts. And he said that it sounded as if somebody hit the guitar. There was a bang and it fell over onto the floor. This was the first time he genuinely couldn't explain away what had happened. I think it actually rattled him a bit. A few weeks later, I got home from work at approximately 4 a.m. Nobody was home. I walked in, turned the three living room lights on and the TV, and turned the hall light on and went into the bathroom. I come back out and looked up from my phone, and all the lights in the living room were off, and the TV, but the hall and bathroom light were still on. I instantly started texting my friend to come get me, 
when boom, all the lights turned back on, and the TV too, at top volume. I put it down to some electrical issue. I was naturally scared, but I tried to rationalize. Again, I fell asleep on the sofa, and I woke up to the door handle of the sitting room door, slowly turning. It was loud since it was an old house, and I got out of there. It took me a while to go back to the house after that. When I eventually did, I brought a friend to stay the night. We were sitting in the living room, and the neighbor in the other apartment came onto our landing, just outside the door, and started screaming, like full belt, high pitched screaming. Then just started loudly pacing back and forth on the landing, talking and chanting to himself. We couldn't figure out what he was saying, but it was absolutely terrifying. From speaking to my dad afterwards, he said that the neighbor had just started doing this one night a week or so prior, every single night. Numerous other events have happened. My dad's CD player turning itself on, leaving a room to come back and seeing a door that had been closed was now open, things going missing and appearing somewhere else, weird sounds at night. My dad has since moved from there, but everybody that I've talked to that has been in that house has mentioned that they just feel uneasy there, that there was something else there. I don't know, maybe it's all in my head, but I think something legitimate was happening in that house. This is a story about a house I lived in a year ago near my IT campus in the west of Ireland, which I believe was haunted. To begin, before living there, I was always pretty skeptical of haunted houses, and for good reason. As a teenager, we would often visit haunted houses in our locality, which never proved to be so, at least while we were present there. A few days after moving into our new college house for our final year of college, my friends and I went out to do some shopping and get food. Upon arriving back, we noticed that someone had left the oven on. We each denied it, but we knew that someone had to have left it on because it was on. Looking back, this was probably the first unexplained incident, as thinking about it, nobody even had food to put in the oven. Over the following few weeks, we started to notice odd things happening. Creaks, groans, and movements from out the corner of our eyes. At this point, two of the housemates were convinced of a haunting. However, myself and another were still not so convinced. It was soon only me that was left unconvinced, as one day while the other non-believer was home doing study, they looked up to see a face peering at them before vanishing. It finally clicked for me when I woke up one night just before Christmas to see a very large man, or what I believed to be a man, staring at me from my wardrobe. Then things started to get really strange. Boot prints started to appear on the ceiling, making tracks across the roof by the year's end. And one of my friend's girlfriends swore she saw him upstairs in the room when he'd been downstairs with me all along. Our shower, for which there are three switches that you need to turn it on, would come on in the middle of the night. And one room off the kitchen would send shivers down our spines any time we went in there. There was one night in particular which really scared me. I always locked my door before going to bed, and I distinctly remember doing this that night. When I awoke in the night, I could see the large man again, this time at the end of my bed. I shut my eyes telling myself it was just a dream and went back to sleep. The next morning, my door was wide open, and so were all the doors in my wardrobe and the guys had told me it sounded like I was dragging my school bag from one end of the room to the other all night. So many other things happened in that house, but this has gone on long enough. I just decided to tell this story after telling a Galway person about living in the estate without saying which house I lived in, and he told me of a creepy haunted house at the back of the estate, which a family he knew had moved out of a few years prior. When I told him what number it was and how I knew, he almost fell out of his chair. 
At least I know I'm not alone. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. We all got out of the house unscathed, but it really made believers out of all of us. My friends lived a few houses down in an old house they were renting. They often talked about the house being haunted. They said that things would move by themselves or disappear, only to reappear later. They mostly talked about this pair of jeans that was set out when my friend was getting ready for work. When he went to go get them, they were gone. He figured he must have forgotten and just set them down elsewhere, so he started looking around. He couldn't find them, so he just got a different pair and then went to work. When he came home, they were folded up on the kitchen table. He asked his wife where she had found them. She said she hadn't seen them. They went to the kitchen and she claimed she has no idea how they got there. One time, I walked over to their house and I was going in the side door. As I reached for the doorknob, I saw it twist and open up, just a few inches. I thought it was them telling me to come in, so I waited for them to say something. After a few seconds, I opened the door and went in. I said hello and waited. Then I went into the house looking for them and calling them. That's when I realized the house was empty and they weren't home. I got this really funny feeling, and then I started to leave. And that's when I heard a baby crying in their bedroom. I thought, what in the world is going on? But I walked into the bedroom and the crying stopped and there was no baby. I got out of there as fast as I could. They later told me that that was the kind of stuff they put up with all the time, but they did move shortly after that. I was 13, soon to be 14, when I moved into this house. I was always very connected to the spiritual world because my mom was a very strong believer, and I was very curious about this topic. Everything was quite normal when we moved in, even though I had a weird feeling about a corner in my parents' room. That corner gave me a feeling of fear. Whenever I came into my parents' room, I got this unwelcoming feeling and an urge to leave, but I didn't think too much of it until I started to feel like I was being watched whenever I was home alone. The first time I really thought about the house being haunted was when my mom told me that for a second, she had felt like time stopped and she heard a male voice asking for help. At first I thought she was just trying to scare me, but she was genuinely very concerned about it. Even though that was pretty scary, my mom and I decided not to pay attention. We thought that if we just ignored it, it would stop and go away. A few months passed and nothing happened, at least nothing like what my mom had experienced. I still felt like I was being watched and I just couldn't stay in my parents' room, but the energy was really off. I was really depressed and my mom and dad started to fight a lot. My mom and I started to fight too, my mom was also feeling depressed, and our life just took a downhill turn since we moved. Everything got worse when one of my cats died. After my little buddy died, I started to feel the strong smell of cigarettes and men's perfume and a masculine energy around the house. It wasn't the perfume or cologne that my dad used. My mom came to me asking if I had started smoking. And I said, no, of course not, but that I had smelled the same smells as well. Then my mom told me that she had started to have these weird dreams about a man. I have to admit that while I felt very afraid of what was going on, I also felt this weird excitement to know more. And I started to do more research about paranormal activity. Now, I don't know if that triggered it to get worse or not, but boy, did it. I was now constantly feeling observed and oppressed. Then, one afternoon, when I was home alone, I was talking to my friend on the phone, when I suddenly heard a loud noise coming from the front door. 
My dog started barking like crazy, and I immediately thought that somebody was trying to break in. I slowly went there to see what was going on, and I quickly discovered that there was nobody outside. I really started to freak out. I went back into the living room and continued to talk to my friend to calm down. I hear another loud noise. The door of my parents' room had just closed itself. I opened it to see if the window was open, trying to find an excuse for what had just happened, but the window was closed. At this point, I was losing it. When my mom got home, I told her what had happened. She told me to just ignore it, that if there was something in the house, it was just trying to scare me, and that if it was bad, it would feed on my fear. I thought that what she said was just a little too Hollywood, honestly, but I still followed her advice and played it cool. A little bit after that, on another afternoon, I fell asleep on the couch. I woke up with a loud A in my ear. It was the voice of my mom. And I swear to this day, I can still hear the voice of my mom in my head, crystal clear. I even thought that my mom was already at the house, but it turned out there was no one there. Then another cat died. Two years at the house and two of my cats had died. If I'm being honest, all I could think about was how in horror movies the pets always die. I was terrified of the house. I avoided it at all costs, and I didn't like to be home alone. I just couldn't handle the fear at this point. I constantly felt watched. I couldn't even go to the bathroom at night. It's like I wasn't even living in my house. I just felt extremely unwelcomed there. Then my mom started to have dreams about all of us being dead, and we always died in the worst types of ways. I was also having very vivid dreams. Some of them I remember clearly to this day. My mom then decided to do a cleansing to the house, and everything calmed down for a while. Then my mom told me that when she was trying to put my little sister to sleep, she made a gesture like she was offering her pacifier to someone. And when she asked her, she told her she was offering it to the lady. My mom completely froze and didn't say anything. I wasn't sure what to think anymore. And by now, those things just started to feel really normal. I was scared, but curious. And I wanted to see something, not just hear it or feel it. Through the whole time that this was going on, I felt excited to see something. Even though I wasn't sure how I would react, I still wanted it. Well, that day came when I was trying to sleep in my room. Everything was dark, and I was facing the ceiling just whispering the lyrics of a song to try to get to sleep. I wasn't thinking about anything paranormal. And the funny thing is, in the moment when things were happening, I was never even thinking about the paranormal as a cause either. But I saw this light come from the corner of my room. I quickly looked and faced it and I felt it looking back. Even though it was just a light, I could feel some kind of presence in it. When I processed what it was, I gasped, and it moved fast to the left, then to the right, then disappeared. When I tell this, it seems like it lasted minutes, but the truth is it only lasted for a couple of seconds. It was super fast. I can't really explain what I saw. It was like a lantern, but alive. I don't really know. It was white, and unlike the other things that happened, this one actually didn't make me feel scared. I did a little Google search after that, and I found out that what I had seen is typically called an orb, and the color white meant protection. At this point, I was very confused, but I had this feeling that the thing that I had seen was not the thing that was scaring me. I thought of my uncle who passed away when I was seven, Maybe the orb was him protecting me from whatever was in the house. Maybe not. All I know is that, after that, everything calmed down. This was the last event that I can remember, and it happened in the very last year that I lived in the house. Shortly after all this, I moved. But now and then I think about that home. Why could I never go into my parents' room? Who was the man that asked my mom to help, and appeared in her dreams? Was it him that made everything smell like cigarettes and cologne? Who was the lady? I never got any answers to these questions. 
One month after I moved, I had a dream. I was in my bed, and I knew I was sleeping, but I could see my room perfectly, and I remember thinking that a bad entity was there. Then I saw a very bright light that covered my vision, and I woke up feeling very protected. I think that was the last time that I felt like something was with me, at least at my house where I still live until this day. I have a lot of weird stories that have happened to me, but anyway, I moved to the haunted house when I was almost 14 and left when I was almost 18, and never for a second did I think I was crazy, even though nobody believed me other than my mom. And I get it, it sounds like scary movie stuff, but I hope you'll feel differently and actually believe my story, because it did happen, and I still really miss my cats. I grew up in a haunted house through my childhood years and when I was a young adult. Sometimes I wonder if it was real or just in my head, but I wanted to talk about it. Heads up, there is some mention of animal death in this story, so if that's not your thing, maybe don't listen to or read it. Anyway, when I was a very young child, I lived in a very old house. I think the house was originally built in the early 1900s. It was originally a doctor's office and home. Right next door was the town's hospital. The house was originally a one-story, one-bedroom, one-bath house and was later turned into a three-bedroom, one-bath, one-story house in 1960. I live in fear in that house. All you felt living in that house was fear and nothing else. I would either look down at the floor or close my eyes if I had to get up and walk to the bathroom. I always felt watched, and sometimes when I walked into the kitchen to get to the bathroom, something invisible would come up and hit me, or my body, or I'd be checked to the side. It would also happen if you stood at the kitchen sink. Something invisible would come from nowhere and body check you to the side. Then we had our dad's old non-battery operated plug-in radio that would turn itself on all the time. Even when it wasn't plugged in, it would still go on, all on its own. It did for years, and we just got used to it. But then we had a social worker therapist lady come for a visit. We came and sat down at the kitchen table to talk about the radio turning on with the lady there. I tried to do my best to ignore it, but I couldn't, and I had to explain to the lady what happened. She was actually okay with it. Apparently, it wasn't her first time with the paranormal, so that was cool. Years go by, and I'm home alone taking a bath. Out of the blue, the front door opened and slammed shut, and I could hear somebody stomping all the way through the house and into the kitchen, and then stop. I got out of the tub quickly, covered myself with a towel, and then threw the bathroom door open. No one was there. I was still home alone. You can't break into my dad's house. My dad put in key entry only locks and hard bar grids over the outside of the windows. The living room windows were triple paned and the bedroom windows were double paned. That house was like Fort Knox. Again, a few years later, my big sister lost her keys one day. She always put them in the same spot every day, but that one day when she went to get them, they just weren't there. We searched everywhere for the keys, and when we finally stopped looking, the keys showed back up in the same spot they should have been in to begin with. The second time they disappeared, they were found outside on the ground in the drive. It was outside the fence. There was no reason for them to be there. The third time the keys went missing, they weren't found until many years later, inside the compartment in the dashboard area below the radio of the car. She didn't find them, but the car dealership that she took the car into to trade it in found them. That was pretty creepy. The house, or the negative thing in the house, turned dad into a very negative person. He went from an awesome dad to a very abusive dad over the years. I took the brunt of that abuse because I was the youngest and the most sensitive to the paranormal. He never abused my big sister, 
just me. The negative thing in the house also grabbed Dad and body checked him a few times, but he kept that to himself for years until we no longer lived there. One time when I was home alone in the house, I was standing in front of the kitchen but kind of standing sideways because the kitchen stove was next to the sink. Something in the living room in front of the pellet caught my attention and when I turned to look, I saw this mist or fog come up through the floor in front of the pellet stove and start moving toward the first bedroom. That was mine and my sister's bedroom and then it just disappeared in front of me. Oh, and this is the best one. When I came back home for a little bit when I was a young adult, my sister and I had a bed together for a few nights. But one night in bed, my sister in her sleep just sits in my bed right next to me. As soon as she laid down next to me, a very bright young man came up through the bed on my sister's side of the bed, leaned over her and grabbed my right leg below my knee. I wasn't asleep at all, and I was just laying there wide awake. I couldn't sleep because at that time, I was pregnant with my first son. But yeah, I could see the outline of this young man. He looked like a high school quarterback, slim, tall, biceps. He lit up the room, he was that bright. After he disappeared, I looked at the radio clock in our room. The time was 3.47 in the morning. We also had something in the house kill two of our cats with antifreeze. Someone opened a brand new bottle and dumped it in the corner of the house. Nobody was home when it happened. You needed a key to get into that house. One cat died right away, the other two weeks later. It was slowly killing two more of our cats. We could never keep pets in the home. They all started to die shortly coming back home. Years later, dad and sister moved out and he rented it to a friend from work. We had a six foot tall, large dog kennel in the back. The guy put his bulldog inside and chained him in the kennel. Then he locked it up and left for a few hours. Later, he found his dog hanging on the opposite side of the gate by its chain. Obviously, he was dead. That's never happened before and we had two dogs in that thing before and they were even bigger than the bulldog. We were all completely shocked when that happened. Even the work friend became a very negative person after moving into that house. To this day, I want nothing to do with that place. It now sits completely abandoned. Dad can't sell it, which honestly is probably for the best. It's not safe for anyone to live in. The ghetto where I'm from is divided by a golf course. One side of the street is project housing and the other side is nicer homes built in the 30s to 90s before the projects were there. I lived in a 1934 two bedroom house, bright yellow tile. I was 26 and I lived with my girlfriend who was 24. After living there a few months, my girlfriend started saying she felt uneasy in the hallway which was very small and had a crawl space in the ceiling. I brought my dad over to get up there and take a look because, you know, could be something scary up there. He found nothing except insulation. A while later, I took a nap for about two hours. My girlfriend was in the next room folding laundry after work. She comes to wake me up, shaking my shoulder. She asks how long I'd been asleep. I said a couple of hours. She said, so you didn't just walk through the house? I said, no. She said, but I just saw you walk through the hallway. I asked if she was sure and she said, yes. I told her it wasn't me and there's no one else in the house. Fast forward a year. I'm trying to quit smoking and I lost my vape. My buddy had been staying at my house for a couple of weeks and he's helping me look for my vape. I walk out to the car and I get in the driver's seat. I'm digging between the seat and the gear shift, and suddenly, something or someone is talking into my ear. Not whispering, speaking, right into my left ear. There's that SOB right there, it says. I'm frozen. 
It's the dead of night. Nobody is around. My buddy is still inside. After about a minute of complete silence, I finally open the car door and go back inside. I tell him what just happened. That's when he goes, huh, probably the same person that calls my name at night. What? He'd been hearing somebody say his name from behind him on the couch he slept on at night ever since he started staying with me. I'm creeped out, but not enough to move. The rent was great, and I was not easily shaken. Fast forward a few months. My mom comes over to pick me up and to go shopping. I throw on a shirt in front of the hallway and say, Hey, how does this look for today? My mom turned around, and her eyes go over my head. She starts to back up and tries to adjust her eyes. I said, What? She said that a black shadow had just gone up the wall behind me into the room behind me. I thought, oh, so now there's that. Fast forward a few months more and I'm watching TV in the living room with my buddy. We hear a loud bang. We go into the kitchen and all the cabinets are open. A single jar of Nutella is on the floor and a huge hole has been punched in the wall beside the refrigerator. Interesting, but I'm still not leaving. Fast forward a few more months. My buddy moved out, my girlfriend and I broke up, and she moved. I was living there alone for the first time. I go to lay down one night. My bed was freshly made, so the covers were tight. I cut the light and laid my head back. Suddenly, there's pressure on either side of my feet, like someone has one hand beside each side of my foot and is pressing down, as if you're looking over top of me. It lasted all of 30 seconds before I sat up and turned the light back on. Nothing there. Still not moving. Fast forward. I get a new girlfriend. She starts staying over. She says she sees faces in the mirror in the hallway. I'm like, yeah, weird things happen here. Nothing has ever tried to harm me, so I stay. This goes on for a couple of months, until one day I come home to my girlfriend on the porch. It's dark. She says she will not go back in that house while I'm gone. She convinces me to move. I'm in love. I want her to be comfortable. So we're in our new house and I'm on my laptop, going through old photos and videos that I took at the old house. I find videos of myself being recorded from my laptop, but I'm not pressing record. It was videos of me watching TV, working out, leaving my bedroom and walking through the house. It stops all on its own. All of the videos were about a minute or so long. I went to the courthouse and found records where the owner and also the town sheriff had died there of old age. And the community seems to believe that there was some kind of brothel there at some point due to a red light on the porch. I'm sure that was just a rumor. One of the neighbors said someone had shot themselves in the house, but I couldn't find a record of that either. I wish I could go on about other instances at the old haunted house, but I've gone on long enough. It was 2009 to 2013, rent was 625, and honestly, I wish I had never left. I bought my first house nine months ago. It's a huge accomplishment for me. On the evening after I closed on the house, I had a little champagne toast in the new place. I invited my boyfriend, my sister, we'll call her Jenna, her four-year-old daughter, we'll call her Mary, my best friend, Aunt T, and my son and brother who live with me. It only lasted an hour or two. I gave everyone the tour, my best friend and Jenna wanted to stop in every room and talk about my plans for it. I ordered pizza. Like I said, we had a small champagne toast. My niece, Mary, had a great time running through the house. She and my sister have a 700 square foot apartment, so my place seemed huge to her. Mary loved my room. I have a closet in my room with a built-in pedestal kind of thing, so we sat her on it and joked that it could be her room. 
All in all, it was a good time. Everyone who didn't live there headed out at about the same time, starting with Jenna and Mary. It was a school night after all. Not even five minutes after Jenna and Mary left, my sister calls me, still driving home. She sounds shaken, and I was worried for a second that her car had broken down or she got into an accident, but no. Jenna said that she had asked Mary if she'd had a good time and if she liked Aunt Dee, that's me, and my new place. Mary said, yeah, I had fun with Aunt Dee, Aunt T and the little girl. My sister said she actually pumped the brakes on the car because her instinct was to stop the car in its tracks. The thing is, there were no other children in the house that night, just Mary. Jenna's not trying to scare Mary, but she wants to know more. So very gently, she asks, Oh, what little girl? Mary says, The one that was standing behind Aunt Dee all night. My sister presses her a little more and asks Mary what the little girl looks like. Mary says she has long black hair and she had on a pretty blue dress. My sister asked if the little girl had spoken to her. Mary said no, she was really shy, but they had fun chasing each other through the house and the little girl was sitting in her house, AKA my closet, when we opened the door. Mary hesitated to walk into the closet at first and I didn't know why. Now I know. So apparently I have a little ghost girl in my house. She likes my closet and me. My house was built in 1900, so it does have a long history, but I haven't looked into it yet. I haven't heard or seen a thing in this house since I moved in but I did not sleep well for the first few nights. I first want to talk about the recent experience I had at my house while I was trying to astral project. I was laying down, doing the techniques, when I suddenly hear somebody breathing right next to me and my dog. At first I thought it was my dog, since sometimes he moves around in his sleep, and I think he has nightmares. While I'm hearing the breathing, I look at my dog, but I can hear him breathing and it's a different pattern than the one that was right next to me. My next experience haunts me to this day. I was in bed, when my dad and I hear the gate button being pressed, it connects to an iPad. We ran downstairs to investigate since we suspected that it might be the police. We open the app to see that it's a black screen. Peculiar, but it was because of the Wi-Fi. For some extra context, the gate camera will snap a photo of the person who pressed the button to be let in. It took two photos. My dad and I went to the windows to see any lights, but there were none. There was nobody in the photo. The next experiences somewhat relate to each other. This happened when I was walking home from school. I was strolling down my road when I hear someone yell, hey. I turned to see if it was my neighbor since we have a few houses on the small patch of road. No one was there. I walked next door to see if anybody was home there but nobody was. The second thing that happened was I was walking in the forest on my property. I was walking on this little trail when I hear snap, not like a twig. It sounded like a firm finger snap. We have tenants down in the yard, but how they could snap so close to me when no one was there is beyond me. It had to have been somebody standing right next to me. It wasn't an echo or anything like that, but nobody was there. The last experience has given me a wider sense of the paranormal. I was dragging the lawnmower when I hear an old woman's voice say, Hey, I turn to see nobody there. So I keep dragging it. Then I hear, stop. It was so loud that I dropped everything and had to look. Nobody was there. I want to be honest. We do have a tenant downstairs, but why would she be yelling at me? I kept dragging the mower, and then I heard mumbling, and then the voice disappeared. What's even creepier is that my neighbor's grandmother lived in this house, 
When she died, I think he just decided it was better off cutting the property in half. Sell one side, my house, and then make his house on the other. So, maybe it was her thinking that I was him or not being happy I was in half of her house. In any case, it's definitely been interesting. Back in the 90s, my parents would often move from house to house. Before I was born and they were pregnant with my sister, they moved into a new house complete with a lake in the backyard. It was pretty old, but still comfy. My parents thought it was all fine until some strange things began to happen. For starters, they said that when taking showers, the radio would often switch to random static noises. The lights would flicker and hair dryers would just shut off suddenly. All right, no big deal. Just an old house, nothing strange at all. Of course, my parents started speculating some strange things were happening after living in it for a few months. One night, they had some friends over. This picture of a little boy was hanging on the wall, overlooking the living room. My parents joked around and talked about how it was evil or something. Just as they did that, all of the lights turned off, as if on cue. One night, both of them were sitting in bed, trying to fall asleep. My mom told me that while sleeping, this weird blowing noise blew right in her ear. She said something like, stop doing that, thinking that it was my dad. He said, I'm not doing anything. They both felt this weird blowing noise in their ear, like right next to their ears. I would honestly be terrified too. Then finally, after having crazy and terrifying experiences, the last thing that happened was their breaking point. When getting home with groceries, the magnets on the fridge were strangely arranged differently than they had been before. Not only that, but while getting all of the bags out of the car, my mom swore that she saw a shadow flash by in the living room. My dad looked over and said that he saw it too. They both called the police thinking it was an intruder, but when the police arrived, they couldn't find anything. They ended up living there only six months. That was the last straw. When they moved out, there were some rumors going around that supposedly somebody had died in that lake behind their yard. When they came back to see the house a little while later, it had been condemned. I grew up in Southern Pennsylvania, not far from Gettysburg. When I was eight years old, my parents decided to build a house on vacant property surrounded by fields, and it was beautiful. I lived with both of my parents and my two older brothers, who were 15 and 17 at the time. Though I grew up in the area, we only stayed in this house for four years. My first night there was not what I expected it to be. I was laying in my bed and had just closed my eyes. Then I heard a voice that sounded like a soft whisper about six inches from my face say, help, help, over and over, just repeating the same word until I finally fell asleep. I tried my best to forget about it because I thought there was no way the house could be haunted. It was brand new. Certainly I was just tired. About a month goes by and I'm sitting on my bed doing what I used to love doing most, which was read. I glanced up and looked at my doorway because I had seen something out of the corner of my eye. At that moment, I had officially seen a full body apparition of what appeared to be a soldier from the 1800s but he didn't see me. He was just walking by my room very slowly. I still remember every detail of his appearance 20 years later. He was covered in blood and looked like he'd been shot or stabbed. This lasted for about five seconds. Still being creeped out, my curiosity got the best of me. 
and I walked out of the room and searched all over the house, but I found nothing unusual. About a week or two goes by, and I'm in my bed, trying to fall asleep yet again, only to be disturbed before I even had the chance to close my eyes. This voice was very deep and masculine. I couldn't understand a word it was saying because it was speaking in a different language. It sounded annoyed and angry. It happened every night at the exact same time for two weeks before it suddenly and inexplicably stopped. After that, I had a night terror. I am absolutely terrified of spiders. I had woken up in the middle of the night and I could see what looked like a tarantula crawling on me in bed. I swear it was there. I definitely saw it. I was panicking. My dad came in the room to check on me and found that everything was okay. No spider. Before I could fall asleep though, I heard what sounded like two men laughing right next to my bed. At this point, I was getting used to all the messed up things that were happening. One summer, I stayed up late every night so I could watch Hannah Montana at midnight. One night, when the clock struck midnight, I heard my back door downstairs open. Then I would hear a woman say my name, as if she was calling for me or looking for me. I'd hear the door shut, followed by footsteps, and then there would be silence. This happened every night for almost two months. It never failed. It didn't even bother me at this point. I knew it wasn't my mother because she worked 12 hour night shifts at the hospital almost every night. There were no other females around, but one night it too stopped altogether. I was up at midnight and nobody had called my name. I went to sleep and everything felt peaceful for once. I woke up to the sound of someone knocking on my bedroom door. I looked at the clock on my cable box. It was 3 a.m. I assumed that it was one of my brothers and I told them to go away. But then the doorknob started turning, but it wouldn't open because the door was locked. I have always slept with my bedroom door open, always. And I definitely wasn't the one who locked it. The knocking and doorknob rattling went on for what felt like forever. And then it stopped. A few minutes later, I hear what sounds like scratching at the door. I think to myself, what the heck? Is it my cat? But then the knocking, scratching, and turning of the handle start happening at the exact same time. No way in hell my cat could do all three at once, let alone the knocking and turning of the doorknob. It would happen for about 30 seconds, and then it would stop. It happened at least five times. Sometimes the knocking would be so hard it sounded like pounding and my whole door was shaking. Whatever was on the other side of that door really wanted to come in. It got so bad that it woke my dad up. He heard all of the commotion and as soon as he opened his bedroom door, it all stopped instantly. He called out to me, but I was too afraid to say anything. He went back into his room and closed the door but the same scenario repeated itself three more times. My dad made me sleep in his room. We never spoke about it, ever. Things seemed to be fine for a while. Then whatever was in my house struck again. My brother had gotten up to go to the bathroom. He turned the hallway light on, noticed that my bedroom door was closed as it was across the hall from the bathroom. He comes out of the bathroom and the hallway light is off and my bedroom door was wide open. He looked inside my room and saw me still sleeping. Everyone else in the house was sleeping. He woke my dad and brother and told them what had happened. They searched the house for a possible intruder but found nothing. More months go by and we are all awoken by our smoke detector going off in the middle of the night. We all go downstairs in a panic just to find out that the stove was on, full blast, big flames on top of the stove, in the middle of the night. What the hell? One day, it was just my father and I. My mom was at work as usual. My oldest brother was at work and my other brother was at baseball practice. I'm downstairs, 
but I hear what sounds like somebody running upstairs. Forgetting that both of my brothers aren't home, I go up the stairs and see somebody run into my brother's room and slam the door. It was loud. I thought for sure it was my brother, and I wanted to go in there and see what he was up to and why he would be running around like that. I opened the door and nobody was there. I watched the door close right in front of me. I felt sick to my stomach just standing there, realizing that the only other person that was home was my father, and he was in the shower. I continued to see weird things all the time. One day, in the middle of the day, I saw my German Shepherd run upstairs full blast as if she was chasing something, but I never saw what she was chasing. Whatever it was went under the bed, and she was viciously growling at it. At first I thought it was my cat, until I saw him sitting on top of the bed. It appeared that he had been sleeping until we burst in and woke him up. One night, my cousin was spending the night. We were walking through the living room when she saw the reflection of another person on the glass of our big bookcase. Another time we were in my backyard and she told me that she saw somebody looking at us through the window. I guess this happened on a few occasions, but it wasn't anybody we knew. My brothers almost never had friends over, so that was not a possibility. I remember one day I was walking down the basement stairs. When I got to the bottom of the stairs, I saw what looked like another apparition, except the apparition looked exactly like my older brother, but it also didn't look human. It was almost white and blue, and his eyes were pure black, like something trying to be him. When he saw me, his eyes got really big, and he looked terrified, and ran away and went into the crawl space. I ran upstairs to find out that my brother wasn't even home. I never went back down there after that. A few months later, I was with the same brother, and we were in the living room watching George Lopez late at night. I'm into the show, but he muted the TV. He looked at me and said, did you hear that? I told him no, I hadn't heard anything. We sat still for a minute, and then I did hear it. Together, we both heard footsteps coming up the basement stairs. My brother grabbed a baseball bat, and we went to the basement to investigate, but to no avail. The rest of our family was sleeping upstairs. The next night, my mom was up late at night sitting at the dining room table, doing whatever it was she was doing. Around 3 a.m., the shelf in the dining room flew off the wall and put a hole in the wall that was adjacent to it. We looked at the nails in the wall that had held the shelf in place, and they were still perfectly straight. We moved out of that house when I was 12. I still experience paranormal things, but nothing that comes close to what I dealt with in that house. I believe there were a lot of spirits there, and I'd love to know about what happened there previously to cause so much activity. We were a regular church-going family, so I'm sure if there was anything demonic there, that probably pissed it off even more. But I don't know. What do you think it could have been? Ghosts? Demons? Poltergeists? All of the above? What's your story? If you like haunted houses, you would love my dad's home. It's a two-story brick home, built by a family back in the 1840s. It was owned by the same family until my dad bought it. There's a rumor that it has a tunnel entrance on the property because of the Underground Railroad. I lived there by myself for several years during college. Dad lived with his girlfriend. Paranormal stuff happened on the daily, so much so that it was just routine. Footsteps throughout the house and going up and down the stairs during the day was typical, but mostly at night and in the early morning. If it was at night, I would usually just turn up the TV. Several times, I was woken up by a man who shouted, Hey! When I'd look around, a man's silhouette could be seen leaning casually against the doorway of my room. I got the feeling that this ghost didn't like me, 
but I didn't really give a damn and I would just roll back over and go to sleep. Often, I would also wake up to the feeling of my bed shifting, as though somebody had sat down. Once I felt something rub my back, not in a malicious kind of way, more like a motherly way. I'll also experience very strong and sudden aromas. They'll come out of nowhere and last just for a few seconds. Usually it's cigar smoke, my dad and I don't smoke, old ladies perfume, or freshly baked bread. Items would always go missing and then magically reappear in other areas of the house. You never, ever feel alone. You always see somebody just out of the corner of your eye. I had to keep the blinds closed because I kept seeing somebody walk across our front or back porch, but nobody would ever be there. I always got the feeling that if you glanced at the top of the stairway, you would see somebody standing there. Very often I would hear feminine humming. It definitely had tune and inflection. It wasn't our central heating or air conditioning or anything mechanical like that. After a particularly active paranormal night, the next morning there was a random dirty, rusty, handmade nail about three inches long laying on its side outside of my bedroom. The only time I felt genuinely scared was when I was playing a video game at about 4 p.m. I heard the front door open and my dad whistled his distinctive whistle. I heard footsteps and keys being placed on the counter. Without looking up from the game, I said, Hey dad, I didn't know you were coming here today. I would have ordered pizza or something. He didn't answer me, and I thought maybe he just didn't hear me. So I paused my game and went into the kitchen. It was totally empty. No keys on the counter. His shoes weren't by the door. The door was locked and his car was not in the driveway. I thought, wow, kind of rude for him to leave so soon. So I called him and said, where'd you go in such a hurry? Dad sounded confused. I haven't left work. I'll be here late tonight. My dad works about an hour and a half away. There's probably more things that I just can't remember right now. My friends have all hated that house and they would never come over. Whenever family comes over, they get weirded out by the vibes, which is strange because most of them don't believe in these things. I live in a small town in Canada, and my house was built in 2007. Before that, it was farmland. My great-grandmother and her kids immigrated here from Ecuador in the 70s. Throughout my family's bloodline, every woman in the family is believed to have had some kind of sixth sense. My great-grandmother's sister was a powerful medium. My grandmother's older sister is also a medium and reads palms. My mother does tarot readings and informs me on her past experiences with ghosts when she lived in Toronto with my grandmother and great-grandmother. Ever since I was a baby, I've been seeing ghosts everywhere. My grandma told me that I would point to the corner and talk to it like somebody was there. I'm 16 now and I've been living in this house for the past 15 years. Paranormal experiences have happened to me here for as long as I can remember so it's just a normal thing now. My mom doesn't encourage me thinking about those things, though. She tells me it's all in my head. A month ago, my dad's parents came up from Texas to renovate our basement. On their last day, my grandpa told me that he thought our basement was haunted because of all the voices he was hearing near the cold room. I told my mom about this, and she lowered her voice and told me that she had lied to me. She had said that it was all in my head, but she'd been telling me that to protect me. It wasn't all in my head, and that I had been seeing ghosts. She used to keep me in her room as a child and pray to God to keep the spirits away from me, because she saw them too. So far, I've noticed one ghost or entity or something that keeps reappearing in different places. I first saw her when I was eight or nine, my cousin and I saw her in my closet. She had pale skin, long blue-black hair, and wore a deep blue dress. 
The most notable feature is that her nails were painted a shiny metallic blue that glistened in the dark. She held out her hand to us and we ran away. The second time was when I was 11. At the time, I had a loft bed that was up near my ceiling. My bedroom is on the second floor. I was lying in bed after coming home from school and I saw that lady slowly walk by my window. Her nails were still painted that shiny blue. It was the most notable ghost I've ever seen ghost in quotations because I'm not really sure if that's what she is. Apart from that, my younger brother and I, Lex, both saw a glass cup on our table slowly slide over to the other side of it. I always see figures in my room and hear music in the shower drain. My entire family hears people talking in our bedrooms. My brother and I have started to wake up with long scratches all over us. The house was blessed by a priest when it was made, but I don't think it worked, or maybe it wore off. I'm getting scared, and I don't know what to do. Update. We had a priest from our local church come to bless our house again, but I don't think it was effective. A few weeks ago, I had the house to myself with my brothers, while my parents and grandparents were out. Lex and I were watching TV in the living room, when we saw our youngest brother, Michael, age 10, sprint out of the washroom and into the dining room, which isn't visible from where we were. We didn't think anything of it, until Michael came out of his bedroom on the second floor to get snacks. We were absolutely terrified and retreated upstairs. Maybe I'm just doomed to live in a house with ghosts. I live in a relatively old house in Scotland. I have always felt another presence at home, and I have believed in the paranormal since forever. It all started when my sister and I heard the floorboards creak in the middle of the night. When she went to check, nobody was there, and the entire family was fast asleep. A little while later, I woke up and I saw a little girl in my room just looking at me before literally jumping and never seeing her again. Until recently, I always thought that I had tricked myself into imagining her, as I remember dreaming about a child and playing with this girl. The other day, my sister heard a little girl giggling. She's the only girl in the house now. When she told me, I instantly connected this to seeing the little girl. But perhaps this could explain more occurrences as well. My sister once told me a while back that sometimes when she looks out of the corner of her eye at the doorways, she would see a shadowy figure darting from room to room. I didn't really believe her. Well, until it happened to me. I was sitting in my parents' bed because I sleep in a closet-sized room with no Wi-Fi, and I glanced up to see this shadowy figure skip into the bathroom. I immediately went to check to see if anybody was there and to my surprise, the room was empty. But nothing will ever scare me as much as what happened about a year ago. I woke in the middle of the night or early morning, which is very unusual for me. I should mention that I sleep facing the wall as I hate being open to the rest of my room. I laid on my back for a brief second or two before hearing three perfectly synced and identical claps. At the time, I assumed some robber or burglar was checking to see if I was awake, so I bolted under the sheets and faced the wall, lying motionless as I was terrified. My brother and sister were away at the time, so I was home alone with my parents. In the morning, I asked them if it was them, and they said no. My parents have never been sleepwalkers or anything of the sort. After doing some research, I found out that apparently ghosts clap to communicate sometimes. My biggest regret is not looking to see who, or what, was clapping. My whole family believes me though, excluding my skeptical brother. Can anyone explain this? Or has anyone experienced anything like it? I'd love to know.
there's a little boy that inhabits my mom's house. My mom has owned her home for 18 years now. There have always been small, bizarre occurrences around the house, the kind that you can explain away or simply ignore. Things falling off of counters or going missing, strange noises or that feeling of being watched, footsteps down the hallway all the time. We never talked about it, and I never felt scared or even had any idea that our house was actually haunted. Until one night. The bathroom at the house is located at the very end of a long hallway, and my bedroom is directly next to it. It was summertime, and I was about 14 or 15, that age where you would stay up talking to your friends on the phone all night. I was on the phone with my best friend. It was 4 a.m., when I distinctly heard footsteps running down the hallway, into the bathroom, and the bathroom light clicks on. Immediately, I get up to check out what's going on, thinking that maybe it's one of my younger sisters. If somebody like my younger sister was running to the bathroom at 4 a.m., obviously something is wrong and I wanted to help. Maybe 10 seconds elapsed before I look into the bathroom. There's nobody there and the light is on. I check on my sisters and my mom. Everybody in the house is sleeping like the dead. I'm absolutely horrified, and my friend on the phone experienced the whole thing with me. The next day I told my mom. She tells me that she knows the house is haunted by a little boy in a red sweater, because she has seen him herself running down the hallway. Years later, my stepdad on one end of the hallway and my mom on the other both see him again, the boy in the red sweater. He yells like a child playing and runs down the hallway into the bathroom, and then he disappears. Something about this is just inherently sad to me, the idea of a child stuck in a purgatorial loop. What was he running from? What was he running to? Who is he, or who was he? And what happened to him? In 2006, I was 18 and had moved to Victoria, BC with my best friends. We were working as construction laborers for said friend's father, and he had put us up rent-free in a very old home close to downtown. Not directly related to this story, but from our living room, we could see Beacon Hill Park. It was literally 50 feet away. And the father's favorite local watering hole was the James Bay Inn Pub which we frequented often. Both, I realize afterwards, were places of numerous accounts of paranormal activity. The Beacon Hill doppelganger is a well-known, well-documented, unbelievable story, and I suggest Googling it. The James Bay Inn pub was formerly a care center in the 1940s, and a national treasure of ours, Emily Carr, passed away in a room that is now the men's washroom for the pub. I did not experience anything at either location, but I'm just emphasizing that Vic is supposedly one of the West Coast's most haunted cities, and the proximity may or may not have had something to do with this, but I digress. The house we were in was very unsettling right off the bat. Holes in the upstairs drywall, like a previous tenant had thrown their entire body at the wall. The unfinished basement had two by four framed walls, no drywall, isolating several bedrooms, which were pieces of plywood on four cinder blocks for a bed. Squatters had been there. It had windows with no panes of glass anymore, only wrought iron to block intruders. Just a place you only go to use the laundry machine or dispose of trash. The trash is important. The kitchen was obviously old, had faded green linoleum floors and a big spot in the middle that had been sanded down to the wood subflooring and we thought nothing of it. Being in our first place with no supervision, we were typical semi-responsible guys and treated the house with a decent amount of respect. After a few months of working and partaking in nights on the town, as well as drinking a fair amount, 
we grew lazier and more careless in maintaining our space. For some reason that I can't totally recall, we had begun to throw our bags of trash into the basement, as it wasn't being collected by the city. This became increasingly easier and easier to do. We had two puppies living with us, a Chihuahua and a British Bulldog. One day after work, I was taking a shower and the Chihuahua was mulling about in the bathroom. The door had no handle, just a small chain lock so it could sway three to four inches open or closed. A very distinct three knocks occur and I see the door move. No biggie. I just say, almost done, assuming my friends needed the bathroom. The dog is now trying to get into the tub or shower with me. I finish up and towel off and go tell my buddies that it's all theirs, but nobody's home. I call them and they're all at the gym and have been for a while. I grab the dog and leave immediately, and we drive around the city as my mind races. I return later and my story barely shakes up my very macho friends. Maybe a week later, I'm in bed and I have a floor lamp with a dimmer and an indicator LED on that dimmer to let you know that there's power to the light. The light is fully on like every night. So I close my eyes and the light is now off, but the LED is on so I know the light has power. After I get done checking that it has power, I think nothing of it, close my eyes and the light goes back on. I say a few prayers, sleep, everything's okay. But something had adjusted the dimmer in that room. Next week, I find myself home alone with the dog sitting on the living room couch. We had a set of flimsy sliding double doors that we kept closed and they were directly across from me. Out of nowhere, the doors shake as though somebody had punched them as hard as they possibly could. It was loud and extremely aggressive. So again, I grab the pooch and beeline for the front door, exiting the living room. I remember preparing myself to see something down the hall as I leave the front door, but I see nothing and I drive around town for a few hours. After this, my friend and the bulldog would sleep on the floor of my room every night, and the other friend would start sleeping in the living room right beside us. They had smaller encounters, like faucets and lights switching on and off, but neither was the type to talk much about it. But my macho friends were all sleeping as close together and to me as possible. They were freaked out. I never saw an apparition and those stories were as scary as it got. Upon having enough of the job in town, I informed the friends and the father that I would be moving back to the mainland. Months later, word got back to me that their dad never told us the previous longtime owner of the home had passed away in the kitchen and hadn't been found for three months, hence the scrub down linoleum. As he said it, the gentleman had almost melted into the floor and the dad knew that we wouldn't want to live there with that knowledge. As months went by and I thought more about it, it dawned on me how much we disrespected his home. We had a five foot tall trash mountain in his basement, which we never went down to anymore, just threw the bags down the stairs. And the house in general was just a mess. I concluded that he was manifesting his energy to, in a sense, tell us to clean up our freaking act and rightfully so. I never had any sense of malice or ill intent upon me. I truly believe he meant us no harm. I don't think he wanted to terrify us either. It's just that he was part of that house and wanted some respect. So this isn't anything too crazy, but I do have a little story about my childhood home. It was the summer of 2012. Life was good, and I was up at 2 a.m. watching Teen Nick in my house's den. The whole house was always fascinating to me. One of the first houses built in our small town in Kansas during the Prohibition as a moonshiner's illegal party house. 
The whole house is a colonial style, full of Victorian features. From the outside, it looks like a two-story, but there are actually three floors and a half a basement. The architecture was always confusing as to how this was accomplished, but wedged between the top and main floor is a log cabin-themed room, our family room and den. It was a glorified bar room fitted with a monstrous fireplace, an Alaskan moose head from about 1920, and a salvaged chandelier from the former Douglas Opera House. I always hated being in that room at night because I always got a weird sensation, like someone standing over me, when I would try to sleep on the couch after a long night of TV. My best friend and I also felt like this from time to time, sleeping in my own bed, which used to be the master suite. Never could get the cat or the dog to hang out in the den, though. Its door was an inch thick of solid wood and had a very complex lock that remained tucked inside its latch since no previous owners had the key. We never bothered to close it. It would get stuck in the frame because it was so heavy designed to keep the police out if someone tipped off a booze party. There was a nursery on the top floor that shared a wall with this room. It was sold to us with no doorknob to the small 4x10 room. It became our home office. There was a brand new computer and an all-in-one printer and fax machine that remained unplugged, rarely used. My bedroom was right next to it and I always slept with my door open. In the middle of the night, I could often see the computer light up and paper would cycle through the printer. The unplugged printer. Could never get myself to check it out until the morning. Whenever I looked on the sheets, there was nothing on them and we would just load them back inside. It was my sister and I's favorite place to pirate scary movies. We would close the door so as not to disturb mom and dad since it didn't latch. But one night, she left me in the room to go get a snack, and when she came back, she couldn't open the door. I was trapped inside. My mom had to use a butter knife to force the handle. I was kind of shook given the timing. But back to the den. I'm minding my Team Nick business when out of the blue I get a call from my friend. She tells me that she's doing a Ouija board session which I've always done my part to stay far away from. She says that her presence told her to call me. She informed me that I was wearing a black shirt, which I was and I only own one. I hung up the call and immediately went to my bedroom to wait out the next few hours to daylight. That same summer, my mom, grandma, sister and I went on one of our late night drives where we would blast oldies cruising the back roads. As we were driving, an unidentifiable creature ran in front of our car and across the road. None of us agreed on what we saw. We thought that it was a very large white rabbit or cat or small dog. It was moving unthinkably fast for any of those animals though. It made it across the road in two hops. At the time, we joked about it and kept on our way. When we got home and stepped into the foyer, Heavy work boots start down the upstairs hall and down the stairs. They stop at the den level. From the foyer, you can see the part of the staircase that leads to the den, and no one is there. We're all looking at each other, waiting for my father to continue his trip down the stairs. Then he comes up from the basement, followed by our dog. The cat is chilling in a window on the main floor. We sent him upstairs to investigate. He checked everywhere, even the attic, and there was nothing. Could all be a coincidence. When we moved into an apartment that fall, nothing else strange seemed to happen though. I'm tempted to ask the family who lives there now if they've ever experienced anything. The original owners are buried in the morgue just down the street. And sometimes I think they make a trip to their old home. All the homes in my neighborhood were built in 2009 or 2010. 
seven homes in all. One of the homes across the street was purchased by a single female with two boys and a child on the way. Her boyfriend did live with her, but didn't help purchase the home, and he was not a good guy. They fought all the time. I'm pretty sure he was on meth, and he cheated on her constantly. He even tried to approach me, so I reiterate, not a good guy. Toward the end, he started getting abusive. She had him locked up, but let him come back when he got out. One day, an ambulance showed up at the home. We were all told that he had committed suicide, had gotten high on meth and shot himself in the bathroom. All right, this was believable. After his death, she asked me to help her watch the home as his friends and family were accusing her of killing him and were pulling up into her driveway and then leaving and basically just trying to harass her. I thought this was suspicious, but whatever. As a single mom, she had to work all the time. The oldest boy would watch the little one while she worked. He would always come down to my house to stay, but wouldn't tell me why. But I liked the kid, so no worries. About four years went by like this and she told me she was moving. I was kind of shocked because these were really nice homes and fairly cheap, but I figured it was just because of what had happened previously. Finally, she told me that they were moving because of the paranormal activity in the home since his death. The little one was the most bothered by it, and that's why he stayed at my house all the time. She proceeded to tell me what really happened. They were in a fight, and he had a gun in his hand and was threatening to shoot her. They had a struggle over the gun, resulting in him shooting himself behind the ear. He fell to the ground, crawled down the hallway, and died in the living room. The little one said that he could see him at night, crawling down the hallway. The doors would open and close on their own, and they would hear disembodied voices and feel negative energy, stuff like that. She said her guests would see and hear stuff too. She wouldn't go into much detail, and I understood why. I didn't press the issue. The boys were struggling in school, and she wasn't doing so well either. They moved, and the house sat empty for about a year now. Well, my daughter and her husband have decided to purchase this home. I asked them what they would do if they saw him crawling down the hallway at night. They joke about it, but I mean, come on. That would be some scary shit if you've never really experienced anything paranormal before, or hell, even if you had. My son-in-law is a huge skeptic, but my daughter has had some experiences. I wonder if it's still active or if he moved on when they left. A morbid part of me can't wait to find out. In order to set a little background, this took place in Western Wyoming. It was a small town, and at the time it had maybe 2,500 people. This was the first home that I lived in during the time that I spent in Wyoming. We moved here because of my dad's job. The family and I weren't very enthusiastic because we loved our home in Oklahoma. My dad and mom went up and looked for houses without us so that we could finish school and wouldn't have to stay in a hotel. The housing market wasn't doing so well and the choices were very limited. In fact, it came down to one choice. The house that we had to move into was built in the 1930s and it was rather different from the house we moved out of. It was single story with a large basement. The staircase to the basement was immediately to the left when you walked into the front door. No door at the bottom and the steps were steep. It was fairly dark without any lights on. We move in within three weeks of being told that we're moving. My dad spent the first night there alone and never told us what he experienced until years later. We were about eight to 13 years old between my brother and sister, so he didn't want to scare us. He decided to sleep in the basement because the TV was down there and the basement was fairly large. 
he said that it was late, around 2 a.m., when the TV turned on to static by itself. He's not bothered too much by it, but then he hears a door creak open and some footsteps. After doing a little investigating, he lays down again but doesn't sleep much due to weird noises. Jumping forward sometime, this would be my first odd experience that would make me a believer later on in life. Every night, my sister and I would pick a VHS movie from a large bookshelf in the basement. Since I was too afraid to sleep in my room in the basement, we slept in a bunk in my sister's room. My mom tells us that it's time to put in a movie and go to bed, so we agree to head downstairs. My first choice was one of my two favorites, which was The Land Before Time. I asked my sister, without turning around, does Land Before Time sound good to you? After about a minute, I get impatient, and I say, well, how about The Lion King then? Not much more time passes and I get upset, and I tell her, fine then, if you're not gonna say anything, we're gonna watch my movie. As I slowly turn around to address my sister, I see that nobody is there. Here's the real kicker. I look back to the large bookcase and see two shadows, plain as day. My shadow, which is to the left, and a smaller shadow that clearly looks like a little girl on the right. This is when I realize something is not right and I freak out. After screaming and starting up the stairs, I take one final look back to see that the little girl is moving down the hallway to my room. Well, at least her shadow is. There was absolutely nobody in the basement to produce that shadow. The shadow disappears into my room and then to top it off, the light comes on. So I'm screaming bloody murder at this point and I run to tell my parents. They tell me that it was just my imagination. So then I ask where my sister is and they tell me that she's been in her room waiting for me to bring up a movie. Again, years later, I get told that they had both seen a little girl in the house too. They knew full well that it was not my imagination. The last thing that happened was to my brother. He had a room in the basement, but he wasn't a chicken like I was. One late night, he was woken up to his door creaking open. He thought it was me because sometimes I would get scared and come sleep with him. After a few moments, he said a small head peeked through the door. He said, what's wrong, buddy? Can't sleep? The door slowly shuts and he hears footsteps down the hall to my room. He decides to get up and come see what, who he thought was me, was doing. After leaving his room, he sees my light is on and my door is open. He walks into the room and every single toy from my wooden toy box is out. This is very unusual for me because my parents were quite strict and would kick my butt if I left my room like that. He asks me the next day what I was doing down in my room so late, and I had no idea what he was talking about. My mom vouched that I was passed out in her room after we all watched movies. To sum up this story, my brother and I both had recurring dreams about a little blonde girl being stuffed into my toy box in the closet. Another dream that we both had was this kind of tall old man beating us in the basement bathroom. We've come to think that maybe a kid was killed in that house and the negative energy manifested because of that. Something I forgot to mention, all the toys were cleaned up the next day and were meticulously placed, all standing up in an odd order. Nobody in my family ever placed them like that and no one had been in the basement aside from my brother and he said that he certainly didn't do it. In any case, I'm really glad we don't live there anymore. When I was a young child, about 10 or 11, I moved into a small country town. I've been there before and my parents grew up there. Everyone who lives there knows that the whole town is haunted, from the school and even the church hall to everything else. 
And once it goes dark, most people who live there go inside because you can see spirits walking in dark places and that's pretty much the extent of it. But the house that I lived in had a spirit who likes to mimic voices specifically of your loved ones and even likes to look like them. It would only target me and my older sisters and only when we were home alone. I would wake up with bruises and scratches, same as my sister. One time I was home alone and heard my older sister call out for me from our room. I got up and saw her walk into our room, just slightly but I could tell it was her. I called her name but she didn't answer, so I followed her in. I entered our room and saw that it was empty. I thought that she was messing with me, but she's pretty tall, so there wasn't really anywhere she could hide. Then suddenly I heard the front door open. I went and saw my older sister with the rest of my family coming home. She hadn't been there. This wasn't the first time that something like this happened, and it certainly wasn't the last. Fortunately, I moved out of there about two years ago and I've never woken up with a random bruise or scratch ever again. My family friends lived in a small coastal town in California, and it has really old buildings there including the original state capitol. They lived in an older house built around the 60s or 70s, and it was a single-story home. I was small, maybe two to four years old, and my parents never let me or my brother go there. My uncle and auntie didn't really let anyone else go there either because of, well, all of it. It was haunted by a little girl or something. They would see a shadow, ironically the dog's name is Shadow, down the hall, hear a laugh, doors would slam shut or suddenly open, and they would hear footsteps running around. The dog, Shadow, would stare down the hallway and start to growl and bark, and even start to whimper after they found scratch marks on him one time. After this, they didn't want anyone to go to their house, especially not kids. The daughter, who is the same age as I am, came crying to her mom, saying that the little girl with black hair and white threw a toy at her. The oldest brother had his lights flicker, his dog barking and his door slamming shut all the while. It scared the crap out of everyone. But one night, another one of my uncles had to drive by their house to pick up my uncle and auntie to go to a party. He saw a girl that looked like the daughter crouched on top of the van with her hair over her face, just tapping on the windshield of the car. He called my uncle to ask if their daughter was outside, but he said, nope, all the kids are at their grandparents. But as soon as he got off the phone, it was gone. In the morning, they saw a small handprint on the driver's side window and small scratches on the front windshield and a dead morning dove on their porch. They moved about five months later. My family never really had money. My mom was a cleaning lady for the majority of my life and occasionally cut hair on the side in our basement. My dad was the get-rich-quick type who never wanted someone like a boss to answer to, and his ego, unfortunately, got in the way of making a living. At times, he did make some big money, but it was always in lump sums, which he spent as quickly as he got. In 1998, he invented and patented this newly engineered golf club and partnered with a few investors, and money was coming in frequently. He was even doing interviews on the local news about it. It caught some major buzz locally and then nationally within a couple of years. Finally, he was bringing an income into the household. We always rented. I lived in three houses I know of by the time I was eight years old. 
Around my 10th birthday in 2001, my mom and dad told us they were looking for houses in a nicer area to buy. About a week later, my mom brought my brother, two sisters and I to see a house not far from the house that my parents rented. We pulled up and it was huge. Well, huge for us. We walked into the front room and it was wallpapered with, well, the only thing I could use for reference would be Snozberry's wallpaper from the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory movie. The carpet was mint green and had two white fringe doors going into the dining room. The previous owner's son, who was a middle-aged graying man, didn't exactly greet us with a smile. He almost looked frustrated, like we were late, but we weren't. My siblings and I looked at each other as if my mom was crazy for wanting this weird-ass house. Then we saw it. He showed us into the kitchen. The kitchen was huge, with high ceilings. It was half of the first floor, and all knotty pine. The walls, the cupboards, the walk-in pantry, shelves that rounded the entire kitchen. That was the selling point. It was beautiful, and something you don't see much of in humble old colonial homes. Two small bedrooms upstairs with barely a hallway, both knotty pine as well. A little overkill, and also creepy for a bedroom that isn't in a cottage, but hey. My parents opted to make the whole semi-finished basement into their master bedroom. My mom was dead set on buying it and persuaded my dad. We still talk about how all of us felt this pull into this house. We moved in a couple of months later at the end of summer. My job that afternoon was to attempt to put mine and my brother's bed frames together with the headboard. I didn't know what I was doing, so I started stacking all the nuts and bolts to see how high I could get them before my dad finally came in to do it for me. My mom promised my sisters, who were directly across the hall from me and my brothers, that if they got the smaller room, they could paint it. So my brother and I got the bigger room, with one built-in dresser and a little small door that went into a huge attic, which was another room in itself. I haven't dared to go into the attic, or even wanted to open the door, though. The door looked like it was meant for children, though. Almost like an entrance to a treehouse, or a door for a Keebler elf's hut, like on those cookies. I didn't like that, and I definitely didn't like that I had to sleep next to it. As I'm sitting there, stacking nuts and bolts, I hear a woman clearly say, No. I look into my sister's room thinking that it's one of them, or my mom, but it wasn't. I would have heard somebody coming up the stairs and hit the hallway. So I turn around in my sister's doorway, and I feel the air get thick. Like, I could almost feel the body heat from someone standing too close. I can only explain the feeling as almost like that feeling when you can't focus because someone keeps fidgeting and moving around. I ran down the stairs and out the back door where my mom was smoking a cigarette, talking to our new neighbors. To them, I just looked like some kid running around the new house, but I was terrified. Fast forward to winter and we're all settled in. My godparents came over to give me a gift a couple of weeks before Christmas. I opened it and it was a lime green comforter that had football helmets of every NFL team cool if I ever cared about football at all. It was big and warm, so it quickly became my favorite thing in the world. They left late, and we were told since it's Saturday we can watch TV in our rooms until whenever. So I brought my new comforter to bed and turned on a nick at night, quickly falling asleep. I wake up, and the TV is still on. Mind you, mine and my brother's twin beds are right next to each other and both are against a wall with a gap in the middle to get out. I look over at my brother, and his back was to me. Then I go to look at the TV, which is directly in front of us on the built-in dresser, and I adjust my eyes. I see a woman sitting on the edge of my brother's bed, dark long hair, what looks like a dark purple cardigan, and a dark floral skirt. The only light source was from the TV, and it was illuminating her features. 
I couldn't put into words or reference how she looked until recently when I watched the movie The Knowing, which is a horrible Nicolas Cage movie. But in the movie, you couldn't quite see all of the alien's face, just a silhouette of the light and darkness. That's the best way I could describe it. I see a ring that appears to be catching light on her finger. I have no clue if it was on her finger or if she was holding it. She just sat there on the edge of my brother's bed, head down and admiring this ring that was catching the light off of my television screen. She didn't seem to notice me. I tried to sink into my mattress and slip my head under my new comforter. And I just laid there in shock. I waited until I heard my mom start the coffee pot to run to the kitchen and tell her what had happened. I even drew her a picture. She believed me. My dad, not so much. Almost the exact same experience happened again two years later with my sister when we switched rooms because two teenage girls obviously need a bigger space. There was nothing paranormal that we noticed happening in between those experiences. It happened and we would never bring it up. My dad's new and improved golf club had one little problem. There was a defect. The head was flying off left and right on numerous orders. My dad was back to being broke. You'd think a mortgage, a wife, and four kids would give him a little pep in his step to get a steady job, at least in the interim, but nope. Back to the drawing boards and back to us kids helping clean banks with my mom on the weekends for extra money. The fighting started, the divorce happened, dad moved out and mom stayed in the house with us. By this time, I'm 14, my first year of high school and finally I could go out with my friends, even the ones who had cars. My mom started drinking heavily on the weekends around this time and would frequently call whatever friend I was with that had a cell phone and spout out her Taco Bell order because she knew we would end up there at some point before I came home. My sisters worked doubles together at an Italian restaurant every weekend, so my mom would always be home by herself having a pity party and getting drunk. My mom calls my friend and I tell her not to answer. I told her that I would just get the regular Supreme burrito with no beans that she always orders. I get home and she's in the living room and she starts telling me about a man she was talking to. He looked like a young Elvis, she said, and he sat in the chair across from where she laid on the love seat. She was drunk. I didn't pay it any attention. She was just rambling about a dream, I was sure. The next day, the friend who my mom had called came over and told me that she wanted to play the voicemail that my mom had left her when she called the day before. My mom had said, hey, I just wanted to see what you guys were up to and if you go to Taco Bell, could you get me the regular thing I ask for? Then the phone stays connected. She never hangs up. At first you hear nothing, then a conversation between her and a man. At points, she interrupts him wondering who he is. You can't really tell what he's saying, only bits and pieces, but my mom's voice is clear. Then he told her at the end, as clear as day, please lay on your side just in case you get ill. I got instant chills. My friend was visibly disturbed, even after already hearing it, and I felt sick. We played it for everyone, and they all had the same reaction. My mom remembers none of it. She doesn't remember telling me about the man, and she doesn't remember the incident. We forgot about it, and we never talked about it anymore. My dad got sick of living with his own mother, and the house was in his name, so he legally kicked my mom out. And at this point, my older sister moved in with her fiance, and my other sister moved with mom, to a house that they rented a few minutes away. My brother and I stayed behind because my mom got a job as a caregiver for that winter in Florida. As soon as my dad moved back in, things took a turn. He did not believe in ghosts. He was a huge skeptic. Until around 2007. He sat up in bed late at night and was smoking a cigarette. He had a big solid oak sleigh bed and it had a huge headboard. He started hearing knocks and felt the vibration on the headboard because his back was resting on it as he sat up. He stood up and it stopped. He sat down and relaxed his back, back up against the headboard. 
something started knocking, then pounding hard on the headboard. He stood up and came to the basement stairs and called us down there so that we could witness this, trying to make us believe in something that we already knew was there. A couple of days later, Christmas lights flew across the room like somebody had yanked them. A couple of days after that, loud sounds of what sounded like scraping metal across concrete came from the attic. A week later, my brother's sleeping and gets punched in the face. A couple of days after that, my dad's girlfriend sees a hand appear over him in bed. That upcoming weekend, the kitchen chair moved into the hallway while we were all in the living room watching movies. Coffee teaspoons and hairbrushes would disappear and reappear. Sounds of people going up the stairs. Friends who knew nothing about any of this would see what looked like someone walking back and forth from the upstairs bedroom. It got bad. We were all terrified. My dad was screaming into the void. He couldn't protect us or beat the ass of whoever was doing all of this. By this time, my dad was working, probably just to get out of the house which meant he had to take plenty of business trips. While coming home from Virginia, fate had it that at the airport, he met Jason Hawes and Grant Wilson from the sci-fi show Ghost Hunters. They were coming to investigate a haunted prison for the show. My dad just started watching their show because of all the things happening in our house and only went over to them with the sole intention of getting help for what we were going through. They set him up with contacts to a paranormal group that they knew well for our area. They came, they saw, and they told us that it was definitely paranormal activity. The psychic said that there was a man who liked to hang out in the basement and the living room. A greaser type, with slick back hair and cigarettes rolled in his sleeve, kind of like a young Elvis. Also, he loved my dad's new car. A woman who was reserved and quiet who liked the attic and the naughty pine bedroom was there too. An impatient and angry old woman who paces around everywhere and likes the living room was also there. The team set up cameras, tripods, and microphones around the whole house before shutting off the lights. The only things eventful that happened the night of was a camera and a tripod were thrown to the ground in the attic and everyone heard that metal against concrete scraping sound. It was so loud it sounded like it was in the middle of the room. They left and when they came back a few days later, they had evidence. A woman's voice was caught saying no before the camera and tripod flew forward in the attic. The investigators, while bending down to go through the attic door to set up the tripod, said that one of the cameras in the naughty pine room caught a woman saying, crawl out, you have to crawl out. There were growls. There were snarky remarks said in the basement and a man's voice saying, where is she? The investigators did the whole spiel. You're dead, it's time to go to the other side. It was a lot to take in. My dad, who was raised Catholic, asked if they could set up a home blessing, which we got that afternoon and we all had to take part in. It did definitely settle down after that. There are a lot more things that went on in that house, but I'm writing a novel over here. This house somehow sticks with all of us in my family. My friends still talk about the house. I dream about it all the time. It sounds funny, but there's a definite trauma that lingers when you spend your adolescent years living in a place like that. I think it's so strange, like it still has a hold on all of us. Everyone's pins, passwords, and top secret codes are the numbers of that address, still, and we haven't lived there since 2010. The weird pull that we all have to this house, telling each other when we happen to drive by it, the way we weirdly miss it, it's just strange. I am a 27 year old female and my sister is 26 with a husband who is also 26 and a nine month old baby girl. They got married coming up on two years ago this summer. Just before they got married, they started to build a new house 
on a plot of land that's essentially in the woods, on a dead-end road with most of the 16 acres going uphill. The road itself is pretty quiet, with maybe 10 houses total, pretty spaced out new houses. They only have one next door neighbor. This is important. So, as I said, they just built this house not even three years ago. The thing with the property, though, is that they found at least one, and maybe another, partial house or building stone foundation. Now, our dad, being the history detective that he is, had found an old property map that basically said that there used to be a farmhouse right where their now backyard is, hence the stone foundation. My dad has gone there to do metal detecting quite a few times, and he's found some neat stuff. Some was just the typical metal containers, cans, trash, and junk that he found at the foundation, tossed in by who knows. But a few neat things were a belt buckle, what appears to be, according to his treasure hunting online forum, either a woman's or a child's sword or knife guard and that dates to when the farmhouse was there, in the mid to late 1700s. Now for the spooky stuff. So, I've stayed overnight there a few times, in the guest bedroom, over a year ago at least. My sister and I went out drinking, and I just ended up staying overnight. I was alone in the guest room, snuggled in bed, when I felt like something, or someone, was watching me. So much so that I pulled my blankets over my head and tried to sleep. Then I had the urge to close the closet door randomly. I eventually fell asleep and thought nothing of it after the fact. I never mentioned it to her or her husband, since they're both highly Catholic and participate in church and stuff, so I didn't think they would get me. That's the only experience I've had, if that counts. Fast forward to now, she sent me a photo on Sunday which sparked our conversation. The picture was of her side entrance door that goes into the mudroom. In the top corner window, there is what appears to be, I haven't seen it in person, a smudged handprint. At first my thought was, okay, maybe the builders did it, or maybe it was something there when the door was being made or put on. So I told her that, and then she texts back that it's not on the inside or the outside of the window. It's between the panes. Weird, right? My sister said that it was definitely not there before, since she's basically a neat freak and has washed the door windows before, many times. My second thought was we've had some rain and humidity recently, being almost summer and all, so maybe it was some moisture of fog and stuff like that that was between the glass panes that just looked like a handprint. It literally does look like a handprint though after looking at the picture for a while. I'm studying the picture and I start to get this weird thought of maybe it's somebody scoping the house, but it's on the top window facing downward and it's as if they, or it, had their left hand pointed down, pressed from the outside. I tried to recreate how it would look or feel if I did it myself. It's an extremely awkward position, especially if you're peeking into a door or window from the top pane, like six feet off the ground. She was thoroughly freaked out, I think. I usually try to eliminate all of the obviously logical reasons of what it could have been. A raccoon? A person? Moisture? I ask her if she's had anything weird happen, out of curiosity. This was her actual text message back to me. Quote, I was running on the treadmill a couple of months ago at night. My husband was gone, and I got a very forceful tap on my left shoulder like someone wanted my attention." End quote. Obviously, I've redacted her husband's name. I think it was probably a muscle twitch or something, but she was freaked out after that. Then she goes on to say, quote, And I hear voices sometimes. My husband thinks I hear the neighbors, but when I'm inside, it literally sounds like a man and a woman on our porch. 
end quote. It was a super quiet area. Like I said, they only had one neighbor. It could have possibly been her neighbors with sound traveling or something, but still. I asked about the baby, and she said that she does look off into random corners like she's watching something, but that doesn't seem that odd to me for a nine-month-old. Nothing really with the monitors either. I'm going over today after work to see my niece. I meant to mention to her to maybe check on her carbon monoxide detectors, just to be safe. So I'll tell her tonight. It's one of those situations where some of the stuff is pretty weird and other stuff could possibly be explained. I was hesitant to even tell the story since nothing super or overtly paranormal has happened yet, just feelings and weird things. But I wanted your thoughts. What are your suggestions? What do you think is going on, if anything? When I was between two and 14, I lived in a haunted house. Lights would turn on and off without any people in the room. My little brother, who was about three, would point and scream and cry at the corner where the front door connected to the garage wall. The worst thing was, I used to get in trouble for wearing shoes in the house while people were asleep. The thing is, I didn't even wear shoes in the house. I would take them off the minute I got home and leave them by the door. Whenever I left my bedroom door open during the night, I'd see a very tall man in a sort of old-timey barbershop hat standing in my doorway. When I closed the door on him, I would hear him walk down the hall. I'm also fairly certain that there were two graves in the crawl space under the house. I mean, anthills aren't usually six feet long. Right? This happened in 2021. My family and I were living in a pretty old house at the time. Like, really old. There was mold, wood creaking in the middle of the night, and when the wind would blow, it sounded like the windows would shatter. I have three different things that happened at this house. My dad and I were driving back from a spirit Halloween store for Halloween decor because it was around that time of year. When we were walking up to our door, we heard a loud bang on the window near the bottom right corner. We had cats at the time, but they never really jumped at the windows and we checked. Two of them were asleep upstairs, and the other one was outside, nowhere near the window. My thought was maybe something had fallen and hit the window, but nothing was laying next to it. If you take the palm of your hand and you slap it on your window, it sounds exactly like what we heard. The second thing that happened to me was a little creepier. There were wooden floorboards that led from my kitchen to my living room. The kitchen had a tiled floor and the living room had carpet. Whenever you would walk through these wooden boards, they would make a mind numbing creaking noise. Now I've had my cats walk over these boards and they won't make a sound. And my cats are decently large and heavy. When I was home alone and sitting on my couch, I heard the floorboards make a noise. I've heard them make noises before, but this one sounded directional. I was obviously hesitant to go check, but eventually I did and there was nothing there. The third thing that happened is almost impossible for me to explain. I didn't see this one, but my dad did, and I didn't know this up until today. He walked into the kitchen and past the countertop. As he walked, a small glass moved about four feet across the countertop, almost as though somebody had slid it. There was nobody in the house at the time except for me, my mom, and my dad, and we were not there, in the room. The windows may have been open, but even if they were, the wind couldn't have been enough to slide that glass across the table. 
This one is kind of a bonus, but not necessarily that creepy. I have a habit of speaking in my sleep. I've said really weird things before, like get the shovel or run. But my parents said that in this house in particular, they heard me scratching my wall in the middle of the night. My bed was pushed up against a wall, and apparently my hand was in the air clawing at the wall. Another creepy thing happened too. My room is hallway adjacent to my parents. Apparently in the middle of the night, I sat up and blankly stared into their room. My dad looked over and asked me if I was all right. I didn't respond, but I put my hand up and waved, kind of like Forrest Gump in that one gif. I'm not sure if my house is haunted or if I'm possessed or both, but weird things are definitely happening here. My mom bought a house when I was in the second grade. It was built in 1856 or 1857, I'm not entirely sure. The guy who built it was a prominent doctor. He had a few kids, but I don't know a whole lot about him. I do know that over the years, a couple of people died there, mostly him and his kids. But we got the house because the woman living there had lost her sister and she wanted to move into a nursing home. The house was not used to treat patients so far as I know. There was a hospital built maybe 80 yards from us where I'm fairly sure he did most of his work. I know that place is very haunted, but nothing malicious as far as I know. Anyway, I feel like that's enough background on the house. We lived there in the early 2000s. I was six or seven and we moved out when I was 13. We didn't live there a very long time. The house just seemed to be bad luck. We had a dog named Snowball. He was an American Eskimo dog, 20 pounds, fluffy and white as, well, snow. He would just stare in dark corners a lot, as would my cat. I'd hear my mom call for me a lot, but when I went to look for her, she wasn't even home from work yet or hadn't called me. A few times we would be in the kitchen or the living room and we would hear something digging through my shoe boxes full of Polly Pockets. My bedroom was directly above the living room and the floor was thin. When we would go upstairs to look for the cat or the dog, they were usually right there in the living room with us. The cat liked to stay under the couch but when we would investigate, all my dolls and accessories would be thrown about my room and the door was closed. Snowball liked to chew on my dolls as he had a gum disease and I guess it felt good, but he really didn't like being alone and his favorite spot was on the green couch where he would look out and watch the street. He was also old and only went upstairs when it was cold and we would all sleep in one room because he liked the heater. Otherwise, he was downstairs. My cat did the same thing. She was often very close to us. She liked the spot on the red couch where she could watch TV. None of the pets liked going upstairs unless we were there. I spent a lot of time outside, but I also liked to sit in the office. I would play Neopets, RuneScape, and watch videos on various sites. I'd feel like somebody was watching me all the time. I'd turn around, but I was alone. Sometimes when I was outside, I know that my mom was still at work, but in her bedroom, through the window, I would see a man looking down at me. I don't remember being afraid of him, just kind of got used to seeing him. My mom would always say, oh, that's just Dr. Green. I would wave to him and he would just vanish. One night, I woke up and somebody was sitting on my bed and it was freezing as they were pulling my blanket down. I woke up mad and then panicked because pulling at my blanket was the man in the window. Then I could smell it. Something was burning. I woke my mom up and we found that the microwave was shorting out and had burnt through the cable and was on the verge of catching fire. After that, I made my grandmom take me to his grave 
and I'd leave flowers for him there all the time. Dr. Green was a nice ghost. He would just appear, and he only woke me that one time to warn us. Then there was Luke. Luke was malicious. He terrorized the pets. It's why they wouldn't really go upstairs. He always appeared in dark corners, and I could never bring myself to walk past him. It felt like if I did, something bad would happen. He was more active, too. Cabinets would fly open, things would fall off shelves, and he would throw things at us. In the dead of night, you could hear heavy boots slowly climbing the stairs. Sometimes the TV would randomly flip channels. You'd hear groans, and he actually attacked us. I regularly had nightmares, and I would wake up with strange bruises and cuts and scratches. This was also happening to my mom. We know his name is Luke because my mom used to record QVC and this sewing channel on the VCR. I think it was QVC, and they were doing some craft thing, but they asked the caller what their name was, and very clearly in a masculine voice, someone says, Luke. Then the woman who was actually the caller and was live on the show goes on to say her name and go on about the product. We were only guessing that the friendly ghost was Dr. Green, as the man always appeared in similar clothing to the photos that we had of him, very nice suits and a hat. Luke was dressed in ratty looking clothing and he wore huge boots with spurs. I can still hear his boots clanging up those squeaky steps. Lastly, there was the ghost dog. I love animals, but I hated this dog. It was huge, black, and made me feel sick to my stomach whenever it would appear. And it appeared everywhere. Outside, the carport, downstairs, upstairs, and especially the cellar. I could hear its toenails clack on the hardwood, and I would hide under my blankets. The hair on my arms and neck would raise, and I could hear it sniffing me. It makes my skin crawl to think about that dog. If you looked at it, it would growl and vanish, but I only saw it twice. I heard it all the time though. I would also have nightmares about this huge black dog following me around. It was a recurring dream that scared me so much as a kid. I'd be in the yard and there was a creek that ran through it. It went under the road and there were those huge steel cylinders that let the water pass. I could crouch and walk through them, but I'd see the dog there, and it was guarding what looked like a kid's body. It would immediately wake me up. I never thought to look up and see if a child had died there. I was a kid, and it scared me to even think about it, but I still see that dream vividly. I own a big black lab, Great Dane Mix, and sometimes he gives me flashbacks to that dog. I could go on and on about the odd things that happened. More happened to my mom, and she has weird pictures, videos, even called a priest to cleanse the house, but I don't think it ever helped. It may have, but the people who live there now have fixed up the house a lot. I've been tempted to knock on the door and ask them, but I feel like that would be weird. I drive past the house every time I go visit my grandparents. Also, stepping back on the property makes me feel uneasy. When we were moving out, I was packing my things. Something knocked over my corkboard, and I was frustrated because it broke. I told whatever it was to leave me alone, that I was leaving. I turned back to what I was packing, and then I heard a voice behind me very clearly say, if you come back, I'll kill you. I don't want to take my chances with the paranormal. With a threat like that, I don't want to mess with it, especially as this voice was very different from Luke's. It hissed, it made me feel sick, and made the room very cold as well. Whatever this thing was, I don't want to get to know it, and I don't want to tempt fate. A few years back, one of my best friends and business partner was, and still is, a single dad. 
His ex-wife was in and out of mental institutions for years, and he had sole custody of his two kids, a boy, age 10, and a girl, age 14. My friend had to travel to New York to oversee the multimedia setup for the auto show for the Ford display. I was back at the office with the programmers during the day, and I would stay with the kids each evening. Their house was a new two-story rental in the Woodlands, Texas. The development was built in a heavily wooded area just north of Houston. Weird stuff started happening the first night I was there. I was watching TV with the kids. The den lights would go off. The light switch was on the other side of the room. I went over and the switch was turned off. I thought it was a problem with the breaker or there was another light switch. But if there was another switch, who turned it off? I flipped the switch on, the lights came back on, and I went back to sit down. The lights went off. I walked back and I found the switch flipped back down to off manually. That disturbed me. This went on for a while. I asked the kids if this had happened before and they told me that every now and then, the lights would go off. So now I'm trying to act unconcerned in front of the kids. Suddenly, there was a loud crash in the attic. I, we, went upstairs and opened the attic door to check. There was nothing in the attic. It was completely empty, and thus we had no explanation as to what had made the loud noise. I'm thinking that there's someone else in the house. Their mother had shown up unexpectedly before at their old house, but she was in jail at the time and supposedly didn't know this address. Things quieted down and it was eventually time to go to bed. I let the family dog in, a lab, checked all of the doors and made sure they were locked. And then I went up to the guest room, which was between the kids' bedrooms. I left my door cracked, and I had just turned the bedside lamp off. As I was laying down, I saw the silhouette of a boy crouched down between the cable box and VCR lights on the other side of the room and myself. I thought the sun was getting ready to try to scare me. So I turned the bedside lamp on and said, gotcha, but there was no one there. Then there was another loud crash in the attic. This woke the kids up and now they were scared. We then heard a door slam downstairs. I told them that it was a new house and noises happen. I also told them that I would sleep in the day bed out in the hallway. I made my rounds again and we all went back to bed. When I woke up the next morning, the kids and the dog were all asleep on the floor next to my bed. I still had four more nights to go. The next day, I got to the house as it was getting dark. The wind was starting to pick up and all of the tree limbs were swaying. There was thunder in the distance. However, the kids seemed fine. I helped them with their homework and made dinner. No, we're not going to McDonald's again and we all finally sat down to watch TV. The storm was worsening and there was more thunder and lightning. The den in the house was huge with large floor to ceiling windows and the walls went all the way to the rafters. There was an interior balcony on the second floor that wrapped around three of the walls. There was an exterior balcony facing the backyard. You could see through the upper windows out to the lower part of the outside balcony. So now the rain is coming down in sheets. The wind is blowing and bursts of lightning are happening everywhere. Suddenly, the daughter says she sees something moving out on the balcony. I look up and it looks like a pair of legs in dark pants scurry past one of the windows. I'm thinking, do I get the gun out of the master bedroom? But that opens up a whole new can of worms. So instead, I run up the back stairs from the kitchen to the second floor hallway and out through the balcony door. 
The wind is blowing cold rain right into me, and I get soaked, but I don't see anyone on the balcony. I go back downstairs and tell them there's no one outside. Shortly thereafter, I tell them it's time for bed. The son goes right to bed and goes to sleep. The daughter is afraid of storms. The dog won't go into her bedroom and her cat is nowhere to be found. I tell her that I will sit with her until she goes to sleep. I bring a chair into her bedroom and set it on the left side of her bed. We talk about storms and I tell her about being in a tent in the army during really bad storms and how nice it is to be in a house for this storm. We both fall asleep. There's a loud clap of thunder, a flash of lightning, and I see a dark figure about five feet tall standing in the far corner of her room. I jump to my feet, but now I don't see anything. I don't want to wake her up, and so I carefully walk around her room and check the hallway. I slowly sit back down. I eventually doze off again. Later, I hear a noise and I started to look around. The cat is curled up on the foot of her bed and the dog is starting to lay down at my feet. The storm has passed and looking outside her bedroom window, stars are shining up above the tree line. I go lay down in the day bed out in the hallway and just as I fall asleep, I hear a door downstairs slam shut. It sounds like the kitchen door to the garage. I go downstairs. The kitchen door, door to the garage, and front door are all shut and locked. I start to walk over to the master bedroom suite, but something tells me not to go there. I head back upstairs and lay back down. What seems like seconds later, the alarm goes off and it's time to start a new day. I have to get breakfast going and it's my turn to drive school carpool. Most of the days in that house went about the same. All I know for sure is that something was wrong with that house. When I was a teenager, my family moved into a new house in Ohio. Well, it was new to us. As soon as we moved in, my mother started saying that she felt the house was haunted and that she could sense a presence there. She said she heard somebody call her name and felt somebody put a hand on her shoulder. One time she woke up with somebody holding her feet down and she couldn't shake off whatever it was, so she started screaming. She also heard muffled voices. We didn't believe her at all, until both my sister and I started experiencing strange things. My first experience was when I was reading a book in my bedroom at 3 a.m. I'm a night owl, so this wasn't that unusual. Everyone should have been asleep, but suddenly I hear very heavy footsteps right outside my bedroom door. They were too heavy to be my mom's or my sister's, so I just assumed that my dad was walking around checking up on us. I sprinted to the door, and when I opened it, I was shocked to discover the hallway was dark and nobody was up. Our attic had several feet of fluffy insulation covering the entire area. There was nothing stored there, but at times you could hear steps coming from the attic, running up to the side of the house. They always ran up to the side with the driveway, as though they were trying to see who arrived, and this happened almost every time that somebody would pull up to the house. In the daytime, it was almost cool, but in the nighttime, it was terrifying. There was always something clicking loudly under my bed and in the closet at night, and I always tried to convince myself it was the air vents. However, all the air vents were on the other side of the bedroom and they never made clicking noises. I sometimes saw an outline of a person standing next to my bed if my head was covered with a sheet, 
but when I pulled the sheet off, nobody was there. I heard sighs, as though somebody was standing right behind me. And one time, I heard a whisper that said, Come play. I prayed a lot, and that usually helped. I would also ask them to quiet down, and that helped as well. One time, my boyfriend and I were doing homework in the basement and heard the garage door open and voices of my parents in the kitchen. We ran up to say hi, only to discover an empty house. Another time, my boyfriend stayed overnight in our house and he slept in the living room. In the morning, he asked if we were all playing a joke on him at night, as he kept hearing a ball bounce on the stairwell leading up to the bedrooms on the second floor and in the kitchen. But every time he got up to see what was going on, no one was there. I don't think we even owned a ball, and we certainly didn't play with one in the house. One time, my mom heard a baby crying outside of our house at night. We lived in a safe and perfectly normal suburb. There was no reason that a baby would be in our backyard. Another day, a lid flew off of a cooking pot and got halfway embedded into the kitchen ceiling. It wasn't a pressure cooker, it was just a regular lid and pot. Another time, we left for a family vacation, and my boyfriend was asked to take our paper in. He said that he was in the house and decided to make my bed for me. We had left at the ungodly hour of 5 a.m., and I never got to it. He said at first he got a juice and felt like somebody was breathing down his neck in the kitchen. He kept turning around to find nobody there. Then he walked upstairs, and while he was making my bed, he felt something grab his legs from under it. He got freaked out and ran out of there, and he refused to enter the house again. He just diligently hid the papers behind a flower pot outside until we return. One night, my sister woke up to a black caped figure standing silently in her room. She said there was also a bright orb near her window. Her windows faced the backyard and trees, and being on the second floor, there was no possible source of light from cars and things like that. She covered her head with the blanket, and when she looked out, the figure and the orb were still there. She went back under the blanket, and after some time, they were finally gone. One day, our cat disappeared without a trace, and we never did see it again. Not sure if that was related. My dad was one person who never experienced anything. No voices, no steps, no TV and radios blasting out on their own. He is hard of hearing, so that could be a factor. But one thing he can't explain is waking up at 4 a.m. next to a lit tea light candle that he swears burnt out at midnight. The candle was right in front of his face, and he's extremely sensitive to light to the point where he covers any electronic lights with napkins because they disturb his sleep. It eventually got so bad that I refused to sleep in my own bedroom as I could feel someone move around the room at night and I slept in my sister's room. My dad decided to call a medium and the guy said that there were five spirits in the house, a boy, an old lady, a couple, and a very angry man. He gave us a giant candle with a cross and said to burn it in the bedroom of the youngest child, which was now also my bedroom where I slept in a sofa chair. The candle was in a big glass jar and was hefty. All night it kept shaking and the glass kept making clicking noises against the counter that it stood on. We were also to tell the spirits that this was our house and that they needed to go to the light. Things improved after the visit and shortly after I moved out to attend college, where I slept for years with the lights on, although I never experienced any paranormal activity in my apartment there. After college, I never stayed in the house for longer than a few days, always sleeping with the lights on, as that creepy feeling remained, although nothing notable happened anymore. Eventually, my parents sold the house. I've had many paranormal experiences in my life, but this one has stuck with me for a while. 
This all happened a few years ago in a little hick town. My friends and I were bored as hell, so we decided to find some trouble to get into. My friend mentioned a super creepy house in the middle of nowhere that had been sitting empty for a little over a year. We decided that since we didn't have anything better to do, we should go and check it out. So the six of us crammed into a car and headed over there. It was around 3 a.m., middle of summer. The moon was full and it lit up everything around us. We parked a little ways up the road and walked up to the house. It was definitely spooky in the moonlight. It kind of looked like the creepy house from the Blair Witch Project. We were originally just going to walk around the property, but my boyfriend at the time decided to kick the door open and explore inside. Three of my friends stayed outside to watch for cops. The cops didn't normally patrol the area, but we wanted to be extra safe. The other two and I went inside. I made it maybe six feet into that house before I got hit with a really weird, heavy feeling. It felt like I was wrapped up in a thick blanket, but instead of being warm and cozy, it was cold. I got out of there as fast as I could. My boyfriend and our friend, let's call him Tim, teased me, saying that I was being a wimp. I knew something was weird in that house, and I refused to go back in. Tim decided to record their walk through the house. After walking through, Tim picked something up, threw it at my boyfriend, and started screaming to try to spook him. Well, it worked, and they ran out. The three of us then started looking through a shed in the back. We found various hunting traps. They looked pretty old and rusted, so I assumed they were just hung up for decoration. My boyfriend decided to take one to remember that night. I'm pretty sure that the trap he stole had something attached to it. A lot of weird stuff started happening at our place after that, but those are stories for another time. We left shortly after. When we got back, we watched the video that Tim took inside the house. After we laughed at my boyfriend's screams, Tim said he thought he had heard something weird in the video. So we played it back. And sure enough, while they're running out of the house, there's a voice in the video that doesn't belong to either of them. It was a woman's voice, clearly saying, she died here. We collectively lost our minds. I was the only girl there that night, and the sound of them screaming and running would have drowned out my talking. And like I said, I had already left. I wish I still had the video for proof, but I had a falling out with Tim and deleted our messages, so I don't have the video anymore. I still beat myself up over not saving it. I used to be terrified of the paranormal, so I didn't save it when he first sent it to me. I've come to accept since then that I'll always have weird paranormal experiences and it'll always be a part of my life. Still, that video was the first paranormal experience I've ever had solid evidence of. I live in a three-story, four-bedroom new house. Prior to it being a house, this plot of land was a residential home, and before that, I have no idea. My partner, our young children, and I have lived here since it was built, nearly six years ago. I've never felt anything bad or good in this house, except for the bedroom on the top floor. That bedroom was our youngest child's bedroom. It was her bedroom from about six months old until about two years. She never slept well ever. She would always wake up during the night, sometimes crying uncontrollably. We just put it down to her being a crappy sleeper. However, sometimes if we couldn't settle her back down, we would bring her into our room, which was directly next to her room. She would just sit and stare into the hallway outside and would refuse to be put down near the doorway. And if we tried to carry her out into the hallway to show her nothing was there, she would freak out. She no longer has that room as her bedroom. She shares with her older sisters now. The middle child, a boy, now has that bedroom, 
and he claims to feel fine in there. However, when it was our youngest daughter's bedroom, she would wake in the night and my partner would go downstairs to make her a bottle and I would go in to comfort her. While comforting her with my back to the door, I would always feel like there was something or someone watching me, so much so that I would feel forced to glance back over my shoulder. That's the backstory. During a conversation we were having as a family tonight, myself and my partner were talking to the eldest child, 15 years old, and she just so happened to sleep in her brother's room last night. He was at a sleepover at a friend's house and she wanted to escape the two younger ones. We asked her how she slept, totally normal question and we certainly didn't lead her answer in any way. She said, eh, not so great, I felt on edge like somebody was watching me from the doorway. I wasn't scared, I just felt anxious. How she described her feelings was exactly how I had felt in the past when I would often be in there comforting our youngest. Neither my partner nor myself have ever spoken to the children about this before, so there's no way she was just regurgitating what we've said. I felt a shiver go up my spine when my stepdaughter said this tonight because it was so accurate. My partner immediately looked at me as if to say, wow, that's exactly what we've said. A friend recommended we invest in some selenite to place in and around the room, and we might do that. But I just wanted to share this story and see if anybody else can relate. I know that there's something in my house. When my husband and I bought this house, we were told that the woman who had lived here previously walked from the bedroom to the kitchen, collapsed on the kitchen floor, and passed away three days later in the hospital. Apparently she collapsed on a Wednesday. Our bedroom is the same bedroom that she had. This summer, we were sitting out on our deck enjoying an evening breeze when I see a shadow walk past my front window through the blinds, coming from our bedroom and headed to the kitchen. I freaked out thinking that somebody was in our house. Our son was staying with his aunt that night. We came running in, stupid thing to do if somebody was truly in the house, I guess, and we searched every nook and cranny, nothing. Now we're hearing voices, and the other day, my soda flew off the table by the rocking chair. I think I made her mad somehow, but I'm not really sure what I did. And I'm not really sure what to do now. It seems like things are about to get interesting. When my husband and I first married, we lived towns apart due to work. We also had a toddler. We decided to move in together as quickly as possible and went house hunting. I have always enjoyed stories of supernatural or paranormal occurrences, and I joked about how much I would love a haunted house. I was later told by a clairvoyant that the universe delivers. We finally settled on a house that was in our price range it was built in the 80s, so no concern of lead paint, and not a lot of historic value either. Everything went smoothly, for the most part. Our toddler would awaken in the middle of the night and explain that her stuffed animals would move or fly. We figured she just wanted to sleep with us. Moving was a big transition for such a youngster. We got pregnant with another kiddo quickly, and he went out of country for about a year for work. Things were normal for the most part. The baby, six to 12 month age range, would sometimes stare at the front door and cry or point behind me when I was doing dishes. I didn't think it was too weird. My husband returned and I eventually decided to remodel the house. It had not been updated since being built. It was a major undertaking. My youngest was probably two years old at this point and the oldest was six. I became convinced that our house was haunted at this point and continued to be convinced for about two years. 
It's hard to remember the time frames for everything, but I will describe the activities that occurred during this two to three year period. I had a dog who required medication twice daily. It would frequently go missing. I would later find it in the same spot that I always kept the medication. One of my daughters would talk about the little boy that lived in the closet and that she was afraid of him. So we moved the two girls into the same room because we felt that they were perhaps lonely. This gave my husband a room to dedicate to his man cave and online PC gaming. My husband would talk about seeing a shadow dart back and forth in the hallway. I had a dream that when we took down the sheetrock, we found a secret room with dead twins who warned us to get out. All of this stuff seemed like normal occurrences that happen in life. But then I finally became convinced that the house was haunted. My children and husband were all in bed. I had clean laundry waiting to be folded on the chase, but decided to sprawl out on the couch and watch The Breakfast Club instead. Alone time was rare. All of a sudden, a shirt flew from the chase and hit me in the face. I ran to the bedroom and my husband was asleep. I woke him up and he said that he didn't believe me, but I know better because he got really anxious and couldn't sleep after that. The next big event occurred when my youngest told me that there was a man in her bathroom. We had a security alarm, so I knew that that couldn't be true. I had her take me to the bathroom and show me. She described him as being all black and pointed and said, he's right there. He's right behind you. I told her we would just leave him alone and go about our day. We had other things happen that we just explained away. I woke up to a shadow figure hovering over my husband. My dogs would wake up in the middle of the night and bark at the foot of the bed. I would hear noises coming from the kids room and get a terrible feeling whenever I would go and check on them. I sometimes had to walk through a cold mist to get to their room. My dogs would also sometimes bark in the hallway. I finally called someone to intervene when my husband met me at our door freaking out. I worked weekends and I would always come home and tell him about my day while he played on his computer. The kids would be in bed by this time. I would then go and shower and go to sleep. This night, my husband said that I had already been home and talked to him about my day. I had then told him that I was going to go shower. So when he then heard the garage door open and the car pull in, he immediately panicked. I was frightened to hear this as well. An entity taking my identity made me feel helpless. A coworker got me in contact with her friend who has special abilities. Her friend came over with another medium. They smudged our home and put quartz crystals in the corner. It was all free. They told me that the limestone behind us held energy which attracted transient spirits and entities. Some good, some not. The shadow man stayed because of my husband's PTSD and was attracted to the negativity. They also said domestic abuse had previously occurred in the man cave at some point and that it was a big focus of the negative energy. They taught me to smudge and told me that I have ancestors by my side keeping me safe. Things would still happen on occasion after this. We spoke to our Muslim friends about it and they thought it sounded like a jinn. These creatures are mischievous and can be good or bad. They gave us a religious artifact from their hometown that had a prayer in Arabic carved in it. We kept it on our mantle and never had trouble after that. They would always laugh at us at Christmas time when we had our Christmas mantle decorations and our Muslim artifact. It's still a treasured item that we have to this day. We have since moved, but we did spend a decade in that home. And the more I think about it, the more I'm sure that it was haunted. I'm a real estate agent. Also, for privacy, I've changed the names of the clients. This is one of the few haunting type things that I've ever experienced. Anyway, my clients, we'll call them Jim and Pam, had been looking for a home to buy for a while. 
We'd seen a few houses that were in their price range, but didn't have the features they wanted. So when a home matching their requirements and price point popped up on the market, we were all more than motivated to give it a look and hopefully make an offer. We scheduled a showing for 7 p.m. that evening. I didn't have much going on that day, so I got over there at around 6.45 p.m. And since I still had 15 minutes before the buyers would get there, I decided to look through the house and also turn on the lights as it was getting dark and turning on lights for a showing is always a good idea anyway. When I walk into the house, right away I notice it's fairly nice for the price that it's at. It seems to be underpriced by at least 10000 if not more, and that gets me excited. I know the buyers are going to want to make an offer, so I just have to make sure there's nothing super awful. As I make my way through the rooms, turning on lights, I come upon an intercom in a hallway next to the kitchen. I press it and talk through it to hear that the other receiver is directly below me in the basement. Very cool, as I've only seen intercoms in movies. Then I walk through the door frame into the kitchen. The counters and cupboards looked nice but cheap, and then I noticed the refrigerator was open. Must have bad suction, I thought, or someone left it open. I think to myself to go over and shut it. I did so, and then I gave it a little tug, but it seemed pretty well sealed. So I figured somebody from a previous showing had just left it open. Even though the refrigerator has nothing in it, it's still a little rude of the last agent to not do a once-over and shut it. As I mull this over, the intercom buzzes and static comes through. I slowly walk into the hallway as it continues, and a few steps away, it cuts out. Hmm, I thought. Must have electrical shortages or something downstairs. I hadn't gone downstairs yet, so I figured I might as well go down there and turn on the lights and check to see what was going on with the intercom. The basement doesn't have a switch, just a pole string attached to a light in the middle of the room. The light from outside is coming in through the small windows, just enough so that I can see where I'm going, but not much more. Before I can pull the light string, I hear the intercom buzz back on, but this time it's static through the basement receiver, so now the interference is coming from upstairs. I'm not really sure what's going on at this point. I turn on the light and run up the stairs. Again, the intercom stops as soon as I get close. But something in the kitchen catches my eye. I walk into the kitchen to find that every cupboard, drawer, and the refrigerator are wide open. My heart sinks and the hairs on my neck stand on end. At this point, the scare was over, but the clients called to let me know they had just arrived. It was 6.55ish, so all of this happened pretty quickly. I hurriedly slammed everything shut and tried to act normal. When I opened the door, Jim asked if I was feeling alright. I assume I was slightly pale. Look like you've seen a ghost type of appearance. I said that I was, and we quickly walked through the house. Nothing opened this time. And afterward, when I asked how they felt about the house, they both agreed that something felt off and dark. I told them that I sensed that too, but didn't go into detail. Needless to say, we didn't write an offer, and I've never gone back. Definitely creeped me out. Definitely haunted. So my family and I have been living in my house for about 18 years now, and I've noticed a few weird things happening, but nothing evil and sinister. There are a few spirits in the house, and they usually appear randomly, so they come and go as they please. But there will be times that you'll randomly look to a particular spot in the room, and you can picture them in your head, or you'll see them from the corner of your eye. The spirits in my house are both young and old. There are two men. One is my grandfather, and the other is unknown. There is a female, and she's unknown also. So are the two young girls and the boy. The older spirits stay with me in my room. 
The unknown male lays beside me or sits next to me on the bed, and the woman sits on the edge of my bed or sometimes lays next to me. One of the little girls peeks around the cupboard in my kitchen while the other sits with me on my bed alongside the little boy who also stands in my doorway. But there have been three occurrences that I know of that have happened to me besides the spirits surrounding me on a daily basis. The first was the shadow figure in the laundry. I had just had a shower and I opened the bathroom door. The laundry light suddenly turns on. There was a shadow figure that looked like my older brother. So I said his name. Then I take a step forward and the figure rushes to the back door. I chicken out and run to my room to get dressed. Once I had done that, I told my dad, because my mom is a skeptic. The second was the shadow figure that was in my room. I was lying in bed watching some YouTube before I went to sleep, like I usually do. And I don't know about other people, but I always put my head under the covers because I don't like the dark. Anyway, I took my head out from under the covers, and I see a shadow run into my bedroom wall. I just put my laptop down on my bedside table and went to sleep. The third is the orb outside my front door. It was after dinner, and I was going to feed my dog. And as I was walking out of the dining room, I looked toward the front door, and there was a bright orange orb floating on the other side of it. I looked to my parents and back at the door, but the orb was gone. I don't really know what to make of these recent encounters. They're not like the other ones that I'm used to. What do you think? So this summer, my family and I stayed in a house in Germany for a week. It seemed nice enough, but right away, there was just a strange feeling throughout the whole house. I don't know how to explain it, but you know when it just doesn't feel right? So probably the first thing I should mention is that there were noises coming from everywhere. Footsteps, banging, that kind of thing. I should also mention that none of us talked about it being scary until we left and were in the car. So on the first day when my mom and I were in my room and were hearing noises, neither of us mentioned it, even though we both knew that it was nothing, right? The first really scary thing happened on the second night. My room was opposite the conservatory, and every night there was a noise coming from there. But on this specific night, a chair freaking moved. Like, what the heck? On one of the other nights, and this is probably one of the scariest things, my mom thought she saw my brother running between his room and the bathroom. But when she asked my dad why my brother wasn't in bed, my dad walked out of the bathroom and said my brother was in bed. So who was that person running in between rooms? We all agreed that my brother's room felt the weirdest. Luckily, my brother is a complete lead box, so he was fine with sleeping in there. So, you can probably understand why my mom did not want to sleep in there when my brother went in with my dad on the last night. I needed to use the restroom so many times that night. I don't know why. And before I went for the last time, I thought I heard one of my parents getting up for the bathroom because I heard footsteps and things moving around in there. But then, I realized that my parents' door had never actually opened. And when I asked them about it the next day, they said neither of them had gotten up. That same night, my mom was in my brother's room. She had put her Garmin watch on a book. She heard a noise and the watch was half off the book. She heard a shuffling noise and a thump. And then the watch was on the floor and the sensor light was flashing. She came into my room and slept in there because she was terrified. One more thing is that everybody woke up loads of times every night. Usually we all sleep pretty well. I really don't know what to make of it, but I'm pretty sure that house was haunted. I moved into my current house yesterday. 
It's a typical middle-of-nowhere farmhouse with thick woods surrounding it. It's a house passed down through generations, starting with my great-grandfather's uncle who helped build it. He died while repairing the silo, the grain suffocating him. In his will, he wanted my great-grandfather to own it. My great-grandfather then died from a heart attack at the age of 93 in the bathtub. My grandma was next in line, and within a month of moving in, died in a car crash a few miles from the house. My mother then temporarily moved in, and she said she would sell it. Nobody would buy it because of the history. However, she did see some people walking around in the yard. She would later tell me this after I moved in. I just assumed either it was the TV reflection on the windows or her dreaming. And if it was true, it was probably just some teenagers messing around. I wasn't too worried and had my dog to keep me company. The first night, I was sleeping on the floor, as I hadn't bought a mattress yet. My dog was sleeping next to me and hogging the blanket. I quietly got up to go look for another one, when I saw someone quickly walk past to the kitchen. I was confused, thinking that maybe one of my buddies who helped me move in was trying to scare me. I walked to the kitchen and saw nothing. I must have been searching every corner and cranny for about an hour. I kept saying, that's really funny, but I need to go to bed. Eventually I gave up and grabbed a blanket and walked back into the living room where I'd been sleeping. My dog, who'd been peacefully sleeping, was in the corner of the room whimpering, staring over my shoulder. I got the chills and slowly looked behind me, only to find darkness. I did a quick search of the house, turning on the lights and whatnot, but I found nothing. I decided to keep the lights on and I went back to my dog Reuben. I settled on the creaky wood floor and threw my blanket over me. Reuben eventually walked up to me and sat down. Just as my heart rate was returning to normal and Reuben was snuggled up next to me, I heard an explosion from the kitchen. I jumped up and stood there. Reuben started crying again and went back to the corner. I grabbed some scissors and walked to the kitchen again. This time, the kitchen light I had turned on was blown out, broken glass shards everywhere. Jokingly, I said, you're paying for that, to who I thought was still trying to scare me. The moment I said that, an overwhelming dread came over me. I felt dizzy and out of breath. I noticed I was suddenly very cold. I chalked it up to the light being out must have made the kitchen colder. I quickly walked back to the living room to find Reuben staring at the wall. At this point, I'd had enough and I wanted to sleep at a hotel. I grabbed my phone and searched it up as I was unfamiliar with the area. Suddenly, Reuben snarled at the wall. I had never heard him do that before. I looked up, but everything was the same. It was just me and him. However, out of the corner of my eye, I saw movement. I turned and looked out the window directly left of me and saw a man in old attire walking toward the silo. He looked dirty and battered with a slight limp. I could see him because my mother installed a street light. Well, at this point, I decided I would confront him, thinking he was the man inside my new house. I opened the window and yelled at him. The moment I did this, he disappeared right in front of me. At this point, it was four in the morning and I was just done with it. I grabbed my blanket and Reuben and went to sleep in my truck. I woke up at 2 p.m. with several missed calls. It was my mom and sister trying to check up on me. I got back to them and currently, I'm debating what I should do next. My parents rented a house in a remote upstate area, and we moved in when I was 16. I lived there until I was 25. I'm now 31. Slowly, my sisters moved out later than I did, and my parents just moved out like six months ago. Here are a few of the encounters we've had. 
Every night, my sisters and I would hear footsteps coming up the stairs and going into the bathroom. Every time, we assumed it was one of my parents up for a late night bathroom run, since the only bathroom was in the upstairs area, where the rest of the bedrooms were, and my parents' room was downstairs. We eventually realized it wasn't them. Then we'd get up to use the bathroom and wait forever before knocking, only to find out that the bathroom was empty. My dog, who slept in my bedroom, would wake up at the same time every night, always around 3 a.m., and stare and growl at the dark area in my bedroom. My little sister and I, who shared the bedroom, could feel a presence, but we were too scared to look at the shadow. So, while looking at the floor, we would slowly pick up our dog, place him under the covers with us, and just pray that it went away. The main encounters happened in my bedroom. It must have been where it lived, or maybe there were multiple entities. But one time, my younger sister and I redecorated our bedroom and placed a new shoe rack right in front of our bed and lined up our shoes. We both sat down on the bed to look at it from different angles and see if we liked the placement, and a shoe came flying off the rack directly at us. We both booked it and didn't come back for hours. It liked to hide stuff from me, specifically me. I would be doing my makeup, and then after I used the foundation or lotion, I would go to put the cap back on, and it would just be gone from the vanity. It would happen right in front of me. Or I would spread out my outfit on the bed that I would plan to wear, shower, come to get dressed, and a piece of clothing from the outfit would be gone and nowhere to be found. Now, I'm sure you'll think maybe a sister, right, since there were four of us. Well, I thought that too, except that it happened consistently for years. I got used to it. I'd leave a note sometimes in the bathroom for family before I went out, with, for example, my foundation uncapped that said, the elf took my cap, if you randomly find it, please put it back on. That's what I always called it, an elf because of how mischievous it was. Later, I learned to give it gifts. I would place out my outfit or my engagement ring in its box, or whatever else was really important that I wouldn't want to go missing. And I would loudly announce in my empty bedroom, I need this, please don't take it, but I've left you this, for example, an earring, for you to play with while I'm out or asleep or whatever it was. It worked. I read that online, by the way, as I tried to find ways of cohabitating, since financially we couldn't move out. One day, my sisters and I asked the landlord what was in the attic, since there was one that didn't have a ladder to go up to it. And he told us that he didn't know. He'd bought the house as is many years ago and had never been in the attic, so he had no idea what was there, if anything. So I got the bright idea of let's check it out. We got chairs, which we stacked on top of each other while my parents were out, and I was going to check while my sisters held the chairs for me to climb on. Well, I opened the attic door, and all I could see was pitch black. I wasn't even at eye level into the attic yet, just barely could see into it, as I'm pretty short. So my sisters got a flashlight. I turned it on, went to put it on the floor inside to climb in, and poof. It went out immediately. I figured, okay, the battery's dead. My other sister handed me a lit candle to put on the floor so that I could climb in while the other one went to get batteries. And as soon as I placed it on the floor, poof, it got blown out. At that moment, I flipped. I closed the attic as fast as I could, and none of us ever planned on checking again. These are just a few descriptions of our paranormal encounters. My parents either never believed us, or they didn't want to. They never heard anything downstairs and never noticed anything. Until, when we all moved out and they moved into my old bedroom, where my mom would swear that stuff disappeared on her all the time, that lights got turned on and off, the doors open and close and so on. Then the landlord lost the house to foreclosure, and my parents moved out into their own home about six months ago. 
The haunted house is now abandoned, as nobody has purchased it. And more haunted than ever, I'm sure. I wouldn't take any amount of money to go sleep there for one more night on my own. So, I work for my local authority's cultural service. I can work in any one of the cultural buildings across the city. But one that I work in, I believe is definitely haunted. The building is 300 years old, used to be a farmhouse until the 1860s, and then an upper middle class family home. There have been a few occasions where I believe I've experienced paranormal activity there. One time, I was covering a Sunday shift if I covered a Sunday shift, I always made sure we got in a tea break before we opened. So three of us sat in the canteen having a drink and a natter. No one else was in the building. I was the key holder, so anyone getting in before opening time had to get in through me. Something in the building went bang. A bang like something heavy falling over. It seemed to come from the corridor across from us but nothing was out of place. The three of us heard it and the three of us searched the building to look for an explanation, but literally nothing was out of place. Another time, I was working on some admin in the office. I usually shared an office, but that day I had it to myself. The offices were the old servants' bedrooms. We had a volunteer working in the office opposite. She left to collect her things, ready to leave, just as her husband came up to collect her. I sent her husband back downstairs to meet her. Within a minute, I saw someone, and presumed it was the volunteer, come back up the stairs and go into the office. So I got up to tell her that I had literally just sent her husband back downstairs, but the office was empty. On a third occasion, I was in one room tidying something up. I heard footsteps walking toward me from the adjacent room. I was in the building by myself. Finally, again on my own, I was in what was essentially a gentleman's game room, polishing the glass cases. I had this overwhelming feeling that I couldn't explain the origin of, that I wasn't welcome in there being a woman. Now whenever I go in there, I can't stop myself saying something like, I know, but I'm just doing some polishing and I'll be out. And the feeling subsides or doesn't come on at all. I'm not the only person that's come out of that room with an odd feeling. Two girls one evening while locking up went to switch the lights off and they both at the same time came out feeling scared and crying, but they couldn't explain why. Every house I've ever lived in has been haunted. When I was three, I lived in an old trailer with my grandparents and my mom. I went into my bedroom, which was the computer room with a mattress on the floor, to get something. When I looked around, I saw a man in the mirror. He was quite tall, had on old Coke bottle glasses, and was in a dress shirt with suspenders. But my reflection wasn't in the mirror. I ran out of there so quick. I also had really weird dreams in that house. After a huge fight with my mom and my mama, we left to go live in my mom's childhood house. That house is where I have had the most ghost encounters and developed anxiety, so I absolutely loved this house. Anyway, I was around four when we moved and seven when I saw my first ghost in that house. I was upstairs, and from my bathroom mirror, you could see the shower. All of a sudden, I looked at the mirror, and I saw three fingers sliding down the shower door. I ran downstairs to my mom, and to this day, I don't go upstairs or take showers there. The second time, I was downstairs, and I heard a big crash in the bathroom, as though a bunch of pots and pans had fallen. But all over the house, nothing had moved. After that, I moved out with my mom, 
My mama still lives there. I still hear footsteps upstairs, and in the night, someone is watching me. Currently, I live in a different house with my mom and her boyfriend, and it's a little different. I haven't seen anything, but there's been more things happening to objects. My mom had a crown royal bag, and one day the strings got mysteriously cut. Also, the most recent, I had a friend over and we were about to go to sleep. When I noticed on my Polaroid camera, it's an antique from the 70s, that the handle had been cut. This happened about two weeks ago. About a year ago, I was texting my now ex-boyfriend, and all of a sudden an Avon compact that was sitting in the middle of my desk flew off onto the floor. It's still in our texts to this day. And that's all of my ghost stories. Except, of course, for the countless times that I've felt somebody watching me and other things like that. I'm not really sure what to make of it. My old house was unbelievably haunted. That's what we've always thought. But honestly, I believe in my heart that there's something attached to my family. I have a reason to believe that, but that's a story for another time. Back to the house. My brother and sister were home alone. They were downstairs watching a movie when they heard a door upstairs slam shut. They ran upstairs to see what it was only to find out that it was my bedroom door that had slammed shut. They opened the door and no one was there. My closet doors started subtly moving. They opened the doors to find out that my cross, which was inside of a shadow box, was flipped upside down. In case you don't know what a shadow box is, it's something that you put inside of a case with a big piece of glass in front of it meaning that you can't physically touch the item inside of the box. So as to how that cross flipped over, no one will ever know. My family has always been kind of religious, so in that moment they were both like, we're leaving, we are not staying here tonight. They went into the laundry room to get some things. In this house, our laundry room was in the garage, so they went to go back inside and the door slammed in their face. It was locked. They opened the garage door and went around to the front door. It was also locked. They checked the patio door and that door was locked as well. Not being able to get into the house, they made the choice to call a locksmith. The locksmith came, but you know, in our area at least, locksmiths drive big yellow vans. But this guy pulled up in some old car. He came to our door and unlocked it in seconds and then he started hitting on my sister, asking her if she wanted to go out for drinks while he's on the job. So my brother calls the company to complain, and also this guy charged my brother way too much money, so he complains about that too. He calls the company and says, the locksmith you just sent was not following protocol, blah, blah, blah. And here's the scary thing. They responded and said, Sir, we haven't even sent a locksmith out to you yet. So who the hell was the guy that was just at our house? We never did find out. I was around four living in a house with my mom and my mom's boyfriend. It was around three in the morning, I think, when I had woken up because I had to pee. I walked outside of my room to see a woman in white standing in the stairway. My room was on the second floor. I ran into my little sister's room to tell her. She went out of her room and saw her too. We both ran back into my room and hid under my covers, terrified. This was 10 years ago, and a couple of weeks ago, she said that my mom and her boyfriend, now ex-boyfriend, had seen her too. For them, it was around midnight. They were asleep, and my mom had woken up to see a woman standing in her closet. She thought it was nothing, and her imagination was just playing tricks on her. 
so she went back to sleep. The next day, when my mom's boyfriend got back from work, he went and asked my mom if around 12, she had seen anything that looked like a woman in the closet. She and her boyfriend started freaking out. Now we know that the house next to ours was actually a Civil War hospital, and many people had died in that house. Other things happened in that house, too. When my little sister was a baby, she would always point to the glass and say, Look, woman. No one could see her, but now we think it was probably the same person we've all seen. The other thing is, my mom's boyfriend and his cousin had gone into our attic with a camera and began to record. When they came downstairs and showed the tape to my mom, they could see tens of orbs floating around in there. Things like that happened all the time. And while it was interesting, I'm glad I don't live there anymore. When I was little, we used to live in a house where so many weird things happened. I know so many people probably won't believe me, but honestly, I saw so many things in that home. My dolls would move and talk to me at night. My brother was in the shower when all the tiles flew off the wall. I would see animals and weird objects move. And once, my brother and I even saw what we believed to be an alien. It was just insane. Anyway, I grew up and believed that it was all imaginary friends and stuff like that. My brother still remembers the alien, but for the most part, I thought we were just kids. Recently, my cousins, who lived two houses down, were telling us that the man who now lives there has gone insane and walks up and down the street at 3 a.m. saying things like, the devil is coming. He wasn't like that when he first moved in. I brought this up to my mum, and it turns out we moved because the house was haunted. My parents had experienced horrible things there too, and eventually did some digging to find out that the house was built over an old church and a bunch of other things. Anyway, it was so creepy. Okay, so this is weird. I was a skeptic for most of my life until I was around 23. A group of friends had stayed in an old house in southern Louisiana that was said to be haunted. The house was very old and there was a family cemetery in the backyard. The room that was said to have the most activity was the uppermost room. The maids of the house were so spooked by that particular room that they refused to clean it leaving the owner to tend to it. I really didn't believe in things like spirits or ghosts, so I didn't mind sleeping there. Well, things got weird, quickly. The first day, the only things that were off were the lights, flickering slightly, only in the upstairs room, and the alarm clock constantly having to be reset as it kept going back to noon, as if it kept getting turned off. We chalked that up to the house being built in the 1910s and having dodgy wiring. We went to sleep and slept well. The next day, we decided to check out the family cemetery, just a small plot of land with maybe five or six graves. We walked around a bit and that was that. Well, that night, I began to have the most realistic and haunting dreams I've ever had in my life. They were vivid, sexual, dark, and above all, terrifying. When I woke up, I kept passing out, as though something was blocking my airway. I'd lose, then regain consciousness, all while trying to get out of that room. There was a voice in my head telling me to get out, and that whatever was on me couldn't get me outside the room. I crawled on my hands and knees, while trying to stay conscious, to the front door and down the stairs. About a third of the way down the staircase, I felt this relief, a massive weight removed that had been squeezing my entire ribcage. I could think clearly, without interference. 
I stayed on the couch the rest of the trip. The next day, when I went to move my things out of the room, I would begin to get dizzy if I stayed there for too long. When I'd go back downstairs, the dizziness would leave. I'm 32 years old, and this hasn't happened anywhere else since. I had a creepy experience at the Lizzie Borden house, and I thought I'd share. For the record, I don't believe in ghosts, and I'm skeptical of all paranormal experiences. But I will certainly admit when something is creepy and can't be easily explained. I didn't go into this day expecting or hoping to have any kind of experience. We stayed in one of the attic rooms, the Knowlton room, which had a large toy chest in the corner. I had no issue with the room and found it cute and comfortable. But when I went to sleep, I had awful dreams all night. It was a hyper-realistic dream. I was lying in the very same bed that I was actually sleeping in, feeling terrified. I was trying to fall back to sleep, but it was difficult because of the strong sense of fear and because I was so thirsty. My throat felt like paper. I wanted to get up and get a drink of water from the bathroom, but I was too afraid. I felt that if I opened my eyes, I would see somebody in the room. I lay there for what felt like hours trying to fall back to sleep so that morning would come. At one point, I heard what sounded like a ball go bouncing across the floor. I heard it a second time, and I woke up my friend who was sleeping next to me to ask if she had heard it, but she hadn't and it didn't happen again. I assumed that I dreamed this whole part because she doesn't remember me waking her up, but Maybe she was just too tired to. Then at some point, I think I woke up for real because I was suddenly aware that I was lying in bed with my eyes open and the fear was suddenly lifted and the room felt completely normal. It was like a cloud had been lifted from my mind, which I sometimes feel when I'm struggling to wake up and I finally pull out of it. I was still really thirsty though. I didn't think much of my bad dream until the tour guide started to mention experiences that other guests had had while sleeping in the house. When we went to the attic, the guide told us that a lot of people who sleep there hear the sound of children playing at night. I asked if anyone had ever reported hearing a ball bounce across the floor. She said, that's pretty common. Why do you ask? She also refused to go into the attic guest rooms. She let us explore, but despite having no issue with the murder room and the master bedroom, she would not go into Knowlton room. This could have just been an act to enhance the to her spookiness, but I don't know. I've also since learned that bad nightmares are very common in that room. For the record, I don't typically have dreams like this. I have no problem sleeping in strange places. I've stayed at many hotels and inns and friends' houses, and while I may have restless dreams, I don't have nightmares, especially not these vividly realistic ones where I'm just lying in bed feeling afraid. I've only had a dream like this once before, shortly after I had moved into my current apartment and was sleeping alone in my new room. No one ever lived in that part of the attic. It was open storage space and was only converted into guest rooms when the house became a bed and breakfast. So there's no reason for why there would be children's ghosts in the attic let alone any ghosts at all. I know the tour guides claim that the attic is the most haunted part of the house, but there isn't really a logical reason for this. There were some children who were killed next door and they claim that those children come to visit, but I don't know. Maybe the atmosphere cultivates bad dreams. I did look at the toy chest before going to bed, so maybe that influenced my dream, but I didn't notice any balls in it, just dolls and stuffed animals. I know a bad dream isn't the most interesting thing, but the fact that many people have had bad dreams in this room is at least a little weird. It's the spookiest thing that I've ever experienced for sure. I was hoping I might get another independent report of hearing a ball bouncing. I am too skeptical to believe anyone who says me too after hearing my story. But nonetheless, I find it neat that I dreamed of a ball bouncing despite only noticing dolls and not balls and not being a person who's overly susceptible to creepy places, and that this fits with other people's reports of having heard children playing. What do you think? 
Have you ever had any strange experiences at the Lizzie Borden house? Back in 2009, me, my mom, and my stepdad moved into a really old, rustic rural cottage in England. My father had passed away not too long before, and this was going to be a new start for us all. The house was an absolute bargain. It had six bedrooms, two very spacious living rooms, and a huge annex at the back that was essentially a second house. We couldn't work out why it was so cheap. We went for the viewing and the family eventually told us that their elderly mother had passed away there peacefully in the annex and they just needed to get away from the feeling of her. That probably should have been a first red flag. We weren't put off though and we bought the house. From the beginning it was unsettling. My parents didn't see it at first, but I was incredibly uncomfortable there. It was extremely unnerving and cold. Not to mention, it was isolated behind rows of trees and a very long driveway, so far away from anyone else. It started on the first night. My room was at the end of the corridor, and if you came out of my room, on the right was a bathroom and a locked door that led to the annex, the place where the elderly mother had died. My parents slept a long way down the corridor, in the last bedrooms, so I was quite isolated and directly opposite my room were the stairs. This first night, it was freakishly cold. I pulled my blankets up to my head, but after my dad passed away, I had suffered from insomnia for years, so the cold and the anxieties of moving to a new house all added together to create zero sleep. So I ended up laying awake for hours, just sort of staring around the room. My bedroom door was one of those old and mismatched wooden country house doors. It didn't quite reach the carpets. And after a few hours, I could hear the creaking of floorboards directly outside my room and shadows that seemed even darker than the darkness of the hallway walking past my door. I presumed that one of my parents had gotten up to use the bathroom at first, but this went on back and forth back and forth for several minutes and it was fast it was a very brisk walk not to mention next to my door was the locked door to the annex anybody walking at that speed would have hit the door but nothing it freaked me out and had me dreading the next night this kept happening every night for a few weeks and i remember vividly one night i actually left my bedroom door open Around the same time, as always, I heard the creaking. I turned around, and unmistakably, there was a figure, blacker than black, walking forward and backwards in front of the door, just visible in the darkness of the hallway. I couldn't take my eyes off it the entire time it was there. It's safe to say I never slept with the door open again after that night. But this is where things start to get properly creepy. I'd been terrified of this shadow for weeks now. There was a really horrible feeling that I had around it, like it was after me. And one night, as I was going downstairs for dinner, I had the same cold feeling. And for just a second, I froze in place in the dark hallway and looked to my right toward the annex door. And there, sure as anything, and without my sleepy eyes to blame it on, I saw the same black shadow walking directly at me at high speed. I ran downstairs as quickly as I could and I told my parents everything. They mostly laughed it off and didn't believe me and tried to reassure me that ghosts aren't real and there was no chance of anything about this old lady still being in the house. Now a bit of backstory. This old lady was terrified of the previous owner's family dog, so much so that they had installed a pulley system in the house so she could pull a cord from her bedroom that would trigger an old bell to ring in the kitchen if she wanted anything. The whole system was still there when we moved in. And this night, the night after I told my parents, I was woken at around 2.30 in the morning by this bell in the kitchen ringing loudly 
and repetitively, like it was being pulled firmly and constantly over and over. I ran out into the corridor, and my parents were there too, equally as confused and concerned as I was. We all looked at each other with ever-increasingly worried expressions and ran downstairs into the kitchen to see what was going on. As soon as we entered the kitchen, it stopped. We ventured up into the annex to see what could have caused this, but nothing, no sign of anyone. And my gosh, I hated it there. It was even colder and more lifeless than the main part of the house, and I just felt like I needed to leave as soon as I could. My parents didn't quite believe that this was a ghost yet, but they were clearly less skeptical than before. From here, any activity became much more obvious. All of us, my parents included, started to hear knocking from the annex door next to my bedroom. Noises from downstairs that sounded like someone was down there moving. Sometimes my fish tank light would flick on and off with an audible click and wake me up and I would often even wake up to my wardrobe doors being wide open with no breeze in sight. One night, I was sat reading alone in my room, and one of these wardrobe doors opened by itself, wide and with relative force. I got up, cautiously, and closed it, and then I ran downstairs to see my parents. When I came up around 15 minutes later, every single covered door, around a dozen of them, were open as wide as they could go. Lots more went on too. Taps turning themselves on became a particularly regular occurrence. And one night, I awoke to the sound of my cupboard door opening again and saw droplets of water running from the bathroom next to the annex door all the way to a few feet from my bed with no droplets out again. I was terrified. It was around six months after all this had started that we eventually moved out. My grandma had begun to grow unwell and couldn't care for herself anymore, and she moved in with us. From the beginning, she hated that house. My grandma was so incredibly sweet and calm, and I've never seen her distressed like she was there. On one night in particular, when I was sat downstairs in the kitchen with her, she took my hand, pointed directly toward the annex, and said, Don't you go in there. I don't like it in there. It's safe to say this scared the crap out of me. On the last night we all spent together in the house, I was awoken by my mom screaming. Clear as day, she said she felt two hands firmly grab her ankles over the bed sheets and pull her down the bed just a few inches. And right there and then she asked to leave. We went to stay in our old house for a while, but because of size, my stepdad, the biggest skeptic among us, stayed in Lilac Cottage for a few more months. He's still quiet to this day about that house. He hates talking about it, but even he admits that there was something incredibly wrong there. And without much warning, he put the house up for sale, selling it so desperately that he lost almost a quarter of the price he paid for it, and he's never told us why. I've promised myself that one day I'll reach out to the current owners of that house, and see if they have also experienced anything. But I haven't. At least not yet. I've had a few interesting experiences since I started using my spare room three months ago. A little backstory about the spare room. When I first bought my home last year, there was a family of around 13 people living in it, six of which were adults. There were three small bedrooms and one sketchy annex in the garage. A year later and the neighborhood is still telling me stories about how awful these people were as neighbors. The annex room was initially shoddy framing and drywall work, presumably installed by that family. The walls were painted a weird green color, and the rug was a wrinkly stained mess. It became apparent that someone had been peeing in all four corners of the room. I figured it might just be pets, but there was a mirror that had, please help me, written on it in makeup, and the room locked from the outside. 
The day we got our keys, I called to respond to the Seattle riots with my National Guard unit, and I was gone for about a month. During that time, my wife and the in-laws began renovating the home to make it livable. I felt guilty being unable to help. My wife got together with my mom to convert that scary extra room into a man cave and jam room with all my musical equipment and memorabilia. It came out really nice, but I haven't found much time to use it in the past year. A couple of months ago, I built a gaming PC and decided to set it up in that room. Now that I've been going in there almost daily, things have started to feel a little strange around the house. I get the sensation that someone is standing directly behind me once or twice a day in the room. Our TV caught fire in the living room a few weeks ago. Our water main burst last weekend, causing us to dig our yard up over the course of three days. And my garage light keeps turning on and off. I can hear the light switch moving. This morning, I got out of the shower to find that my wife had already left for work. I'm coming down the hall and I hear her clearly say, Hey babe, from the spare room side of the house. I replied, you're still here? To which I got silence. I looked out the front window and sure enough, her truck was gone. That's when I heard her again. Babe, come here. I grabbed my things and noped to work. Anyway, when I was pulling out of the driveway, I could hear what sounded like a girl screaming from outside, followed by a bang. I stopped before backing into the street, thinking, was that my phone? I waited for a second before continuing on my way, thinking it might just be the school across the street. I got about 50 feet down the road before I heard it again. This time it was faint, but it sounded like it was coming from inside the car. I paused at the stop sign and rolled down the windows to see if it would happen again, as it had sounded identical to the first one. Nothing. I roll up my windows and continue on my way to find that it happened several more times, almost like a recording. The same scream and the same bang, over and over, for another mile or so. Anyway, I'm weirded out for the day. I might sage and bang some pans later. I don't know. Update. So this could all be a coincidence, but we've had a string of bad luck events take place with the recent snow. The following events happened over the course of a week, starting on Christmas Eve. We had a crazy cold snap here in Whatcom County, bringing us to unheard of low temps for the area. As one could expect, our hot water line froze and separated, leaving us without hot water for almost the entire week. Why is it always water problems lately? I ended up spending a bunch of time in the attic installing new copper lines and stuff started going off around the home, with everything beginning from me using the spare room office more often. I'm not surprised that I might have once again disturbed the privacy of whatever entity is in our place. My wife keeps telling me that she's under the impression I've opened and closed the bathroom door when I hadn't been back there all day. This has happened pretty often since I originally told the story about this room. Maybe it's paranoia. The other night we woke up to a really loud sound from the spare room area. Our entire pantry rack system had come off the wall and was barely held up by one of the accordion doors. This could be explained by too much weight on the shelves, maybe, but what happened next made it odd. I got up early the same morning and booted my PC to play some Tarkov. I was in there from around 7 to 10 a.m. When I came out, I noticed that the closet next to our front door was wide open and all the coats inside were on the ground. After a closer look, I realized the plastic hangers were all broken off, like somebody had just ripped everything down. The cold cracked our truck windshield. We've been experiencing some relationship struggles that I don't even care to elaborate on. We had no hot water, couldn't work all that week because of inclement weather, and now this? It's just a lot of stuff in such a short period. Anyway, I don't know what you guys think this might be, but I thought you might enjoy the story.
My uncle's house was constructed from zero, but the place where it is had been long abandoned before he started building. I have so many stories from there that, to me, prove that it is indeed haunted. But I'll begin with the oldest one I can remember, before there was even a house there. Right next to the house, there's a kindergarten. I studied there when I was a kid, just like my mom and her brothers before me. There was always a playground legend about a man in a military uniform who called the kids to go behind the school, and then they disappeared. Even as a kid, I remember being so afraid of going to that particular place behind the school, but as I grew, I stopped thinking about it. Fast forward a few years, and my uncle's house had just been finished. One night, when I was out doing laundry with my cousin, I decided that I wanted to see the kindergarten from above, as it had been years since I saw it on the inside. So we go into the balcony and get a really good view of the place. And after a few seconds, I notice somebody walking in between the classrooms and the back of the school. I couldn't see their face, but my whole body tensed as I saw this shadow go through the wall and then disappear behind the school. I remembered the story from my childhood, and I still wonder if that's the same man that the kids saw back then. Most of the paranormal experiences I've had have been with my cousin. I believe her when it comes to the paranormal things that she's told me has happened in my uncle's house. One of the scariest ones for her was a time when she had just come home from school and wanted to ask her aunt, let's call her Sarah, if they were going to eat at her grandparents' house or if they would be staying there. So she goes to the bottom of the stairs and yells, Aunt Sarah, are you here? To which Sarah's voice responded, Yes. Then my cousin yelled again, Are we going to go to Grandma's? But no one answered after that. After a few minutes without a response, my cousin went to the second floor and started looking for Sarah. But there was absolutely no one there. Not a single person. She then called her on the phone, only to find out that they had all gone to her grandparents' house and were waiting for her to go as well. She ran out of there and didn't come back for weeks as she was too afraid of the voice she had heard. I wasn't present when this happened, but it's important to the next story where I was present. After those things and a bunch of other paranormal things happened to her and our family, they decided that they would call in a priest to bless the house and invited everybody to pray and later hang out with them. My whole family was there, 20 plus people in the backyard as the priest blessed the house. We were all praying and singing, happy, united, when suddenly, just as the priest was going to climb the stairs to the second floor, a loud voice sounded as if it was coming from where we were standing. It just said, go away. My 14-year-old self was shaking with fear, but the lady that was directing the prayer yelled at us to pray louder and to take each other's hands. A lot of people were crying with horror at what we had just witnessed. That has to be one of the scariest things I've ever been through. And for that, I'm convinced that there's something horrible hiding in my uncle's house. Let me start by saying that this has been going on for over a year now. Some days are really bad. Some days, absolutely nothing happens. I live in a rural area. I have lived in this house since my son was two years old, and he'll be 16 in May. Nothing at all happened or felt weird up until about three years ago. I was sitting on my patio in the summer. All of a sudden, I got the feeling that somebody was watching me. My son wasn't home at the time, and I was alone. My house is surrounded by wooded areas. My actual driveway is almost a half mile long from street to house. I looked towards the woods at the back of my house, and I saw a man standing in front of a tree. He was older. I'd say he looked to be in his 70s. He was wearing a dark suit. The color was faded black. He did absolutely nothing but stand there, staring. He was bald, and the left side of his head looked like a deflated basketball, for lack of a better description. He made me nervous, and I went back inside my house. 
fast forward to the present. My son and I have seen this many, many times. He never leaves the woods, doesn't speak, and doesn't try to do anything. We've become used to him. We respect his area and he respects ours. About three months ago in early October, I was walking my dog in our yard. She started barking and took off running into the woods. I yelled for her to stop and caught up to her about 400 feet in. I grabbed her leash. Before I could turn to head back home, she started growling. My dog loves people, wouldn't hurt a fly, but her growl was vicious. I finally turned around and there was a man standing there, approximately four feet away. I never heard him or saw him approach. There's no reason for him to be in the woods behind my house. My closest neighbor is a mile down the road. He was also dressed in a suit, a navy blue one, blonde hair, roughly mid thirties. He caught me off guard and I said, oh, <laughs> you scared me. He replied, beautiful day out today. I said, yes, yes it is. And I began moving to walk around him. I got beside him and had the most awful case of nausea to the point that my mouth filled with saliva and I thought I was going to vomit. I kept walking with my dog. I didn't want him to follow me to my house because my son was in there alone. So I walked along the wooded edge all the way to the top of my driveway. I looked back several times and didn't see him. After a few minutes, I began going back down my driveway to my home. My son called me and said, I thought you were in the backyard. I said, no, I walked up to the road and we're heading back now. He said, mom, a man came to the door and said to tell you that it's very rude to walk away during a conversation. Since that day, things have happened at least three times a week. I found a tooth laying on my kitchen floor. I found a small pendant cross on my windowsill. I've had bruises on my arm that look like fingerprints. My dog died from metastasized sarcoma on what we thought was just a sprained shoulder. The same day my dog passed, my son and I both saw this man again. Well, we saw his face, but his body was grayish white. His arms were unusually long and his legs were just as long. He was crouched down in a position like a spider. My son is terrified and wants to move. I'd be on board with the idea as well if it weren't for the fact that this man or thing followed me to a friend's house one day and she saw him too. So I don't think moving is going to do any good. Shortly before becoming pregnant with my second child in 2008, we moved into a 100 year old mansion that had been renovated into separate apartments. I had never had any sort of paranormal experience before living here. So most of what I experienced, I brushed off or made excuses for, but some things were really hard to ignore. I would frequently see shadows or movements out of the corner of my eye hear whispers that very distinctly sounded like they were coming from inside my apartment and would often have lights turn on and off by themselves. One night in the middle of summer, I was about seven months pregnant at the time, I was struggling to get comfortable in bed, but finally settled on my back with my hands above my head. No sooner had I started to relax that I felt a cold hand on my stomach. It took me a moment to realize that the hand was coming from the wrong direction. It was as if somebody standing beside my bed had their hand on my stomach. I immediately sat up and looked around, but there was no one there other than my ex who was facing the opposite direction. I told him what happened and he told me it was probably just the baby kicking and I was mistaken. What I felt was definitely not that. Shortly after this, I started to see a yellow flowing dress with small flowers. I don't really know how to explain it. It was like I constantly would see the tail end of someone walking into a room or down the hall. I never got to see the whole person wearing it, just the back of the flowing dress. 
Every time I saw it, I didn't feel scared, but peaceful. After the birth of my second child, we moved into a bigger apartment across the hall in the same house. I immediately noticed the atmosphere felt different, like the air felt almost heavy. The second night there, I could hear voices on the baby monitor. Thinking maybe it was picking up voices from the apartment above ours, and being the nosy person I am, I laid there with my eyes closed and the monitor pressed to my ear, listening hard, trying to pick up what was being said. Suddenly, I could hear a door in my son's room slowly creak open through the monitor. I stopped breathing, trying to listen closely, thinking I was going to hear my son's tiny voice or small footsteps. Instead, it sounded like somebody with heavy, steel-toed boots on was running down my hallway, into my room, and then they launched themselves onto the bottom of our bed. The whole bed shook. I felt paralyzed. My ex started screaming, thinking that we had an intruder, but there was no one there. We tried to rationalize what had happened. Maybe a spring got caught in the mattress during the move and happened to release at that exact moment. And maybe the footsteps I heard were actually from upstairs. All I know is that from that point on, I was absolutely terrified to stay in the apartment at night without a lot of lights on. There was also a weird room or storage area attached to my son's room that gave me the absolute creeps, and I could never get the door to stay closed. I put a hook and eye lock at the top of the door, and almost every day I would go in and the lock would be off and the door would be open. We never used that room, and my son was only three at the time. Finding the door open always gave me anxiety, like that feeling you get right before something bad happens, which is such a weird thing to say about a random empty room, but it's true. Not one second from the time I moved into that apartment until I moved out a few months later, did I ever feel comfortable. I always felt like I was being watched. After moving out, I met multiple people that lived in that house and every single one talked about all the weird and unexplainable things that happened while they lived there. This is the only place that I have ever lived that I've had weird, creepy, or otherwise unexplainable experiences. But that was the house that made me a believer. When I was a kid, I would always feel watched from a very young age, around six or seven. I would refuse to sleep alone for this reason, and I insisted on sleeping with my brother or mum. If I was forced to sleep alone, which was the case most of the time, I would stare into my room and observe the details for hours before finally falling asleep. My first experience came when I was around eight. I went to bed like I would on a normal night. My mom would pretend to sleep next to me and keep me company so that I would fall asleep. When she didn't do this, I would place a large body pillow next to me so that I wouldn't feel watched. I woke up in the middle of the night one night. I would always wake up at around two. But on this night, next to my bed was an old woman that I could see through. I could see all the details though. She had wrinkles, probably around 80 years old. She had curly hair and wore a buttoned sweater with stripes. I screamed at the top of my lungs and ran out the door, next to her. My dad picked me up and let me sleep in their bedroom. It would only escalate from here. Almost every night from this point on, I would see a cloud shaped like a human standing next to my door when I woke up in the middle of the night. Keep in mind, I would always wake up at around 2 a.m. with no exceptions. It would disappear after 30 or 60 seconds and kind of just dissolve and float up into the roof. I could move and speak, so it was not sleep paralysis. One night, it spoke with me in a woman's voice. I was sleeping when I woke up to the voice saying, hi. I thought it was my mom, so I hesitated to even open my eyes at first. But then I was greeted by the figure standing at the door once more. I tried saying a few words, but no response. If I had to guess, 
I saw this figure at my door every night for months, maybe years. The vibes I got every time I went face to face with it were terrible. I was absolutely horrified. It's hard to explain, but it felt like the thing in front of me was evil. If I remember correctly, it was not 100% stationary. The mass or body of the thing was moving slightly, sort of hovering in position, if that makes sense. My brother reported a female voice whispering, good night, in his ear one night as well, which is super scary. At this stage, sometimes things would fall down in my room at night, and my parents would come search it but find nothing. My brothers, one remains skeptical till this day, started reporting heavy footsteps when they brushed their teeth at night. They would go and check, find nothing, go back to brushing their teeth, then hear the footsteps and repeat. Hearing heavy breathing right next to me at night also happened a few times, stopping when I turned on the lights. One night, where my brother and I were relaxing in the living room, we spotted a figure walking back and forth, right outside our window, maybe five meters away on the grass. It was a summer night, so it was fairly bright. It was shaped like the person I always saw, but this figure was black and not the cloudy type that I would always spot. It walked back and forth for minutes. We called our dad over, but he couldn't see it. Only my brother and I could. One particular incident made me call it quits and beg for help. I was sick and home from school. My mom was going to the bakery, so I would be home alone for a little while, which I hated. I went to my brother's room and started playing some Counter-Strike. After a few minutes, a large sculpture that my brother had made at school fell down onto my face. I got scared, opened the door, and across the hallway I saw the cloud figure at my own room, exactly the same spot I saw it every night. This time, it moved quickly toward the kitchen, at a pretty fast pace. I jumped out the window and waited for my mom to come home outside. I had never been that afraid. I get chills just remembering it. At this point, I couldn't take it anymore, and I begged for my parents to find someone that could help. My parents, who had witnessed nothing alarming, didn't share the same desire, but agreed to do it. I could not be present when he was here. I was, quote, too young. But he claimed that three entities lived in the house and gave us some details as to why they were present. From that point on, I never experienced it again. I wouldn't feel watched anymore. I could sleep alone, and I never saw anything again. I don't know what the hell that was, but I'm getting curious now, now that some years have passed. So, if anyone has any ideas as to where these things come from or what I experienced beyond what I've told you and what I know, I would be anxious to hear it. I'm pretty sure that the house I babysit at is haunted. The parents were going to a party and they were supposed to be home at around nine, but rang me saying that they wouldn't be back until midnight. So it was my job to put the kids to bed, which I had no problem with. They are the sweetest, most well-behaved kids I've ever met. It got to 9.30 and the kids brushed their teeth, got their books and went to bed. I tidied up, sat down, did a little homework, and then FaceTimed with my friend. This is a religious family, and there are crosses on some of their walls. I heard what sounded like someone knocking on the front door, but it was about 10.15, and the parents usually message me when they're almost home. And of course, they have keys, so I automatically suspected that it wasn't them. I checked, but there was nobody at the door. So, I just sat back down on the couch and got carried away talking to my friend again. Then, the same three knocks. They have guinea pigs, and I started to suspect that it was those guys nibbling on the cage or just messing around, so I went and checked. But they were in their little home things. I still believed it was them, but then, as I was leaving the room, I saw the wooden cross that was nailed at its head on the wall lift from the bottom and drop three times knocking three times. 
It was as though some force was lifting the bottom half that wasn't nailed and dropping it like a door knocker. I just froze, and my friend was like, oh, what, what, what was that? I tiptoe ran back into the living room. I have no idea what caused that. I started to think maybe it was one of the kids jumping from upstairs, causing the walls to shake or something. But the cross is on the wall between the kitchen and the dining room, and directly above was the parents' room and the bathroom. So unless they were in their parents' room or the bathroom jumping up and down in sets of threes, it doesn't really make sense. Plus, they were asleep. Perhaps coincidentally, the homework that I was doing was philosophy, which can be very anti-religion and sometimes anti-God. In fact, I was actually writing an answer to the question, is the Western idea of God illogical? Probably not the most respectful homework to do in the house of religious people, but hey. I don't know what it was. A mocking? God showing me he was real? Maybe not. I can't explain it to this day. Growing up, my family seemed to have a knack for picking haunted houses or haunted locations. Being a military kid was part of that. We got sent to old parts of the bases that we lived in all the time. One was the entire section of houses, which was haunted by what the wives and my mom deduced was some kind of civil war general. There was one base in particular that we lived on twice in my life. This was the second time when I had studied more of the paranormal and it was really interesting. It was a young house, one of the newer ones, which had been built in the span between when we had moved from and back to the base. My old childhood home was long gone, but my mom still thinks the general makes his rounds. This house had something else. Both my mom and I have a knack for telling if a house is haunted. To us, it won't feel empty. A haunting, free house feels more like a vacuum of space. I always get the sense that something will peek around the wall at me when I look through the windows, if something's there. At the house we lived in, I would always get the sensation that something was standing behind me. Like in the horror movies, where you see the ghost behind the character, but then they stand up and it's gone. For fun, I called the ghost Johnny, as in Johnny Rebel seeing as how it was Virginia and probably another Civil War ghost. One night, I was laying in bed, and I heard what sounded like pacing up in the attic area. It was frantic pacing, like someone was unhappy with something or panicked. The activity was ramping up a little, so my mom and I did a mini investigation. We opened up the attic door, and my mom stuck her head up there. Immediately, she called down to my dad, asking if he had put the Christmas decorations up there. He did, and we both shared a knowing look. She took the decorations down, and the activity immediately settled down. When my dad was promoted, we were moved to a new house just a short walk from the old one. My mom came to me one day and said that she had had a dream. In her dream, it was the dining room from the previous house, and a little boy was sitting at the table, dressed in 18th century clothing. She said he looked up and had blood coming from his eyes and mouth. She started yelling at him to leave. She said that he looked startled and said, but I don't want to leave. We both agreed it was an odd dream, and as I thought about it, I looked up yellow fever, knowing that it was a sickness prominent during that time frame that the boy looked to be a part of. I didn't think it would turn up what I found. Not only had there been a yellow fever epidemic in that area in the 1800s, but there were two stages of the disease. If you got the second stage, you would bleed from the eyes and mouth. I told this to my mom, and we came to the conclusion that Johnny was probably not a Civil War soldier, but a little boy who died of a terrible disease and just wanted his space to be left alone.
We bought a house intending to use it as our second home, but after just a few months, we decided to sell it after some unusual experiences. Long story short, we're pretty sure it's haunted. Our real estate salesperson and the person who bought the home are both aware of the claims and have made an informed decision to purchase it anyway. They probably think I'm nuts. The home is not an old one. It was built in 2019 and we are the third owners. We've gotten an air quality test done in the home and both my husband and I have both received physical examinations. Nothing is out of the ordinary. We bought our winter home last year Originally, we're from Canada, but we've spent the majority of the last couple of years between the United States and, more recently, Costa Rica. My first experience there was while I was taking a shower. The house has an ensuite washroom. When you enter the room, if you go to the left, you'll go toward the bathroom. If you go to the right, you'll end up in the bedroom. From the shower, you can see the entrance to the bedroom. One afternoon, while I was showering, I watched my husband walk into the bedroom with a glass of lemonade. I then turned around to wash the soap off my face and turned back toward the door to rinse the shampoo out of my hair. That's when I saw my husband enter the room again with the same glass of lemonade. When I exited the shower, I asked him if he had re-entered the room a couple of times, and he said no. He'd only ever come into the bedroom once and that he'd been there the majority of my shower. My husband had a similar experience. He was in the backyard looking into the kitchen. He claimed that he saw me leave the kitchen and walk toward the mudroom. He was very confused when he entered the house to find it empty. I had been out for a couple of hours. On multiple occasions, I've heard the sound of my husband's car scraping on the driveway. We have the steepest driveway on the block. And every time he parks the car, you can hear this distinct dragging sound of metal on the driveway. Whenever I hear this, I usually unlock the garage door. There have been multiple times where I've heard this sound, unlocked the door, and he isn't home. We've both heard whistling sounds that we can't explain, that stop once we acknowledge it. I guess it could just be the vents, but for the last three weeks, our thermostat hasn't been working, and we still hear it. There have been other trivial occurrences. Once I woke up in the middle of the night because the fridge door alarm was going off. We also have one of those annoying automatic toilets where the lid lifts when it detects motion. Well, those keep going off on their own too and opening up. I understand that with modern upgrades, there are going to be some malfunctions. So I put those experiences under the questionable category, but there's still been quite a lot of them. We've spent the past week packing our things. We're one of those people that just don't store anything in the garage other than our vehicles. The only other thing that we have in there is the water softener tank and that's it. So one night the car alarm goes off on both vehicles. Convinced that we're being robbed, we call the police and of course, the neighborhood security also comes by just to see that our cars are perfectly in the garage with no signs of an intruder. We officially moved out of that house three days before closing. We couldn't bear another day there. The neighbor texted me to ask what all the commotion was at our house. I told her that I had no idea what she was talking about because we don't even live there. I know this sounds insane, but we have lived in so many houses and we've never experienced anything like this. Even though our house was built in 2019, it was a teardown. There was another house on the same property that was built somewhere in the 60s, I think. So who knows what we might have inherited from that. Hoth is a little village near Canterbury and Sturry, out on the old marshes that were once the Wansom Channel. A few years ago in 2014, my landscaping company were called to a job in a beautiful house there. The house was a converted barn and had been bought by the new owners who wanted some work to be done there before moving in, as is often the case. 
So the first step was to visit the property and take a look to come up with a price for the job. There was a great deal of land surrounding the property, with extensive gardens that had fallen into a state of disrepair. After visiting the property, I returned, saying that the place gave me the creeps, and that although it was empty and isolated several hundred yards from the next dwelling, it felt like I was being watched. Obviously, everybody laughed at me. I priced the job, which was a big one, and would need us to be on site for about five days, and forgot about the whole thing. As it turned out, we were given the contract for the garden clearance and various tree works, and we booked in for a few weeks' time. When we arrived on site, there was a crew of builders there already, who were working inside the house, and had been living there for a couple of weeks while they carried out the renovations. When we arrived, we said our hellos, and John asked what they thought of the house. The reply was, It's a lovely place, but it's haunted as hell. We laughed and asked why they thought that, and they told us that all night they could hear banging coming from empty rooms. Their tools were being moved around. They heard whispering, and one had even received a phone call from a distant voice that he couldn't understand, from a number that was just all zeros. He showed us the call record to prove it on his mobile phone. Interested, but still not entirely convinced, we got on with our work. Joe told us that the back courtyard garden gave him the willies, but apart from that, day one was uneventful. On day two, it was quiet in the morning. Then, in the afternoon, I went inside for coffee. While I was there, there were knocking sounds coming from one of the back rooms. Nobody was in there, but it could well have been someone in one of the garden areas knocking against the wooden walls from outside while doing some kind of job. But then there was a sound like wallpaper being unrolled or a poster falling off of a wall, something like that. It came from the hall. Then out of the hall, a shadow shot through the kitchen and out the front door. I was alone in the house at the time. And after looking from every angle, the only way the shadow could have been cast was by the kitchen lights in the middle of the room. But there was nothing there to cast it. I was starting to become a believer. On day three, Paul, one of the builders, was having an argument with somebody on the phone. When he hung up, he said, I can't believe that. The driver from the skip company says he won't come here to pick up the skip unless we can promise that there's somebody on site to meet him, because he reckons that he saw something here when he dropped the skip off before we got here, and he says that it's definitely haunted. When he did arrive, he said that when he dropped the skip off the first time, he knew the place was empty, but he saw somebody moving around in there. And while he was unloading the skip, the radio in his lorry came on with a loud load of static. Day four was quiet, apart from the knocking and banging, which we'd all gotten used to by then, even though it was louder than before, and definitely not one of us messing about. On day five, a guy turned up to put in a new TV aerial and that involved some wiring being fitted in the back room where most of the noises had come from. A few hours in, he was having coffee with everyone else in the kitchen, and he said that he'd be glad when he was done because that room was creeping him out. He said that he was sure he kept hearing somebody walking around in there, but there was nobody inside the house, let alone in that room. The final thing that happened while we were working there was that another contractor turned up to do some light fittings. He parked outside the house. While he was in there, his van radio came on blaring with really loud static, just like the skip driver had said happened to him when he was there before. A few weeks after we'd been there, the new owners had moved in, and John and I went over to visit them and settle up the bill. John was curious and asked the owner if he was enjoying living there. He obviously read between the lines a little bit, Maybe he'd already been asked about the place by one of the other contractors. And he responded by saying, It's a beautiful house, but I must say, it takes on a completely different feeling at night. It's not such a nice place after it gets dark. We returned to work there a couple more times on smaller jobs. But as the clients were living there full time by then, we didn't spend much time in the actual house itself. On one occasion, we were in the kitchen in the evening, having a cup of tea with the owner, when from the back room there was a huge crash, 
like a wardrobe being pushed over. The owner just put his finger up and whispered, Please just pretend you didn't hear that. We don't want the children to be scared. We do a lot of work on repossessed houses, no pun intended, and houses going through probate. So I have visited a lot of empty properties, often where the owner has recently died. And in over 10 years, I have never been creeped out by a place like I was that one. Despite my experience, I am still hesitant to use the word haunted. Many people have asked me what I think caused what happened, and I don't have an answer. I can describe it, but I cannot explain it. Therefore, I tend to avoid the usage of words and terms that attempt to explain the phenomenon in any manner. I'm a man of science. I'm not religious or spiritual. However, I cannot simply ignore what happened to me. Here's my story. It was 2009 to 2010. When I met the woman who would later become my wife, we started renting a small house within the city limits. I was in the process of beginning a new job and circumstances prevented me from staying in the house with her for the first week. Each morning we would talk on the phone during my drive to work. She explained to me that each morning she had struggled to sleep the previous night. She described sounds that were keeping her awake, like someone running through the house, objects falling off the kitchen counter, doors slamming. After three days, I made arrangements to go ahead and move in with her. I was convinced that somebody was breaking in and harassing her. She was convinced, however, that she was sharing the house with a ghost. I took off work the third day. It took me about eight hours to get everything moved in. I was taking a break on our bed when I felt somebody or something tug on my pant leg. I remained motionless, hoping that it would happen again. After a few seconds, it did happen again, much more aggressively this time. I felt a hand firmly placed on my leg just before it grabbed my jeans and started pulling. She was on the bed next to me, and nobody else was with us. We had no pets, as they weren't allowed. I immediately started having the same experiences throughout the night, as she had described over the phone. It was like somebody was destroying our kitchen, but nothing was ever out of place. There was running, as she described, which sounded like a smaller person, perhaps a child. I woke up one night to somebody standing next to my bed. I heard giggling, and then the individual bolted out of the room as I turned my head. It was too dark to notice any features. Over the course of eight months, many unusual things happened. To make a long story short, I'll skip ahead to my last experience, and perhaps the most frightening. I was alone in the house, waiting to join an online seminar. I was sitting on my couch with my laptop on the coffee table ahead of me. I heard the back door slam shut and a person began running through the house. These footsteps were heavier and this person was moving quickly. Given the design of our small house, this person was running in my direction. I shot up and ran out of the house and I didn't stop until I reached the street and that's where I remained until my wife returned. As I was standing by the street, I was looking back into the house. A balloon from a recent party made its way from the kitchen into my bedroom, then back into the kitchen moments later. It felt like I was watching somebody search for me, going room to room, all while holding this balloon. This was the last thing that happened to us, and it stopped after that. We continued living there for another four years. I would give anything to experience it again. I would try to be less afraid, and I would approach the situation more analytically. My wife, on the other hand, was never afraid of it. Unfortunately, my wife passed away a few years ago, 
but I know she would have enjoyed sharing her story. I still drive by that house occasionally, and nobody has ever moved in. For a couple of days, I've been hearing footsteps in the middle of the night, loud enough to wake me up. When I wake up, they suddenly disappear. This could be an auditory hallucination, but I'm damn sure I heard it. Spots in my house also suddenly turn cold when I'm home alone, like the kitchen. Also, my television has occasionally been flickering on and off for a couple of days. My two dogs also keep barking at random spots in my house, and they seem agitated a lot. I can't get them to stop, even if I offer them treats. There's also just a terribly weird feeling in my own house. I don't have any audio or video evidence. If I get some, I'll let you know. But it's so freaking scary. I can't live in my own home without fear anymore. I'm usually skeptical when it comes to spirits and demons, but this has really got me convinced that something very odd is going on. There's no past history of paranormal activity in my house. No one's messed around with a Ouija board. I'm just so scared. I can't sleep or go places in my house without turning the lights on. If you have any idea what's going on, please let me know. So this was when I was about 16. My family and I moved into a registered historic home that was 240 years old. It was dated around when our town was founded. When you first walked into the house, you felt it. It was like an ominous cloud that hung over everything. The first experience I ever had was in the parlor that used to hold wakes in it. I was sitting at the computer, we had converted it into an office, and I kept hearing loud noises directly above me. The room above me was my bedroom, and I was the only one home. I looked around to make sure the dogs were with me and that they weren't tearing anything apart. I initially ignored it and it subsided. After about an hour, it started up again, but with more violence. It sounded like somebody had moved my entire wardrobe across the bedroom floor. I ran up the staircase, but by the time I got to the second landing, the sound stopped. I barged into my room and it was completely silent. No furniture had been moved. The second event was a lot more terrifying. It was about 3 a.m. I woke up to the sound of grown men arguing outside of my bedroom door. The catch? The only male that lived with us was my 14-year-old brother. I jumped out of my bed and flung the door open, trying to catch it. Nothing. I got back in bed after I stupidly locked the door as if that was going to stop anything, and it started again. This time I went to my grandmother's and brother's separate rooms. They were both asleep, and every TV was off. The toilet down the hall flushed itself, and I ran back to my room. The third event is when we decided to move. My brother was taking a shower upstairs. While he showered, a clear, perfect imprint of another set of feet appeared in front of him. Small things had happened in between those events, but these really stood out the most. I'm so glad we don't live there anymore. When I was pregnant, my kid's father and I stayed at his cousin's house for about a month before we moved into our apartment. It's an old farmhouse in a newly developed area of Warwick, Rhode Island. There are farms and woods in one direction and a small town in the other. We were told when we moved in that the house had been built in the 1840s, which to me was super interesting until my kid's father, I'll call him Brian, remarked at how the stairs seemed awfully dark and creepy for the middle of the day, and when I looked, he was right. 
It gave off such a sinister vibe. We slept in the living room, and at night, we could see through the kitchen, and it was as if the stairs became this dark, uncomfortable void. When we brought this up to Brian's cousin and his wife, they proceeded to laugh and tell us stories of people being pushed down the stairs. I don't think they really believed in ghosts, and the husband was an abusive drunk and drug addict, so they had enough problems. That house was chaotic. The husband and wife clearly had serious issues, emotionally and financially. They had a six-year-old son who was afraid to sleep upstairs by himself because of the shadows. Great. After being in the house alone a couple of times and seeing genuine human figures out of the corner of my eye, or even better, black dots on the floor with what looked like long, spindly legs running, I was a little on edge. Every time you would look at these things, they would disappear. A few times, I would see a figure out of the corner of my eye, and I would look and see one of the family members who I hadn't heard come in. I think that freaked me out the most, because how can you explain to yourself seeing a person, and sometimes nothing being there, but other times you expect it to disappear, and it would in fact be a person. It was so weird and unsettling. Brian would say how sitting in one chair in the living room, you would want to look over your shoulder into the doorway, as if someone was coming down a set of stairs that used to be there. This also freaked me out, considering that I slept right near the doorway and would often get a feeling of someone coming toward me. One day, Brian and I were the only two in the entire house. Facing one another about two feet away, face to face, we were talking as we usually do. Directly in the middle of us, we heard a woman's voice say, Shh. I asked if he had said that, and he stared at me with huge eyes and said, No. Did you? Then we laughed it off, as we were clearly talking too loud for the inhabitants, apparently. We eventually brought this up to the family, who included a second cousin living upstairs, and they confirmed that they too saw and felt things. They told us they assumed that the black voids that ran on the floor were just one of their dogs and ignored it if it wasn't. The cousin who lived upstairs said that the curtains to his closet often moved, like they were being pushed by a breeze or something. He chalked it up to being stoned or tired. There was no breeze. The wife told me that when they first moved in there, her son would see a man in a hat, but assumed that it was just his imagination. How could you live in a house so clearly haunted and just pass it off? The front of the house at night was avoided by basically everybody, as it was right where it felt like somebody was walking by that door frame at you in the living room. One night, I didn't feel like walking all the way around this huge house to the car, so I walked as fast as I could to the car through the front door. I heard a deep growling coming from the side of the house. They owned three dogs, one of which was a bull mastiff. Too freaked out to call for her, I ran in, and to my horror, all three dogs were inside the house. Needless to say, I didn't use that entrance again. It was such an emotionally depressing house, and maybe me being pregnant, I was just more aware of everything, I don't really know. There were other weird things, but one of the last conversations that I had with one of the roommates was really interesting. The roommate was renting a back bedroom. It was down a long hall at the very end, the only door in this isolated hallway. I told her about Brian and I hearing the shh directly in the middle of us. She explained that she hears the same exact thing in the hallway. If she and her son were getting too loud, they would hear a woman say shh. They were sure that it was the owner's young son sneaking into the hallway, but I'm not so sure. I've had paranormal stuff happening in my house for a few years now. I've always been able to see ghosts around and hear them. Recently though, there have been more experiences. I've heard footsteps and I've seen shadow figures way more often recently. It's always when I'm alone in my home. 
I hear people shout my name, even though nobody else is there. I've always believed in spirits and demons. Recently, I bought this doll. It was really old, and it definitely had a sense of creepiness. We had purchased this doll from a boot sale in the street. It's where people park their cars and you shop out of the boot or of the trunk. My stepdad and I have been the only ones to touch the doll. We both touched the doll on Tuesday this week when we were setting it up. I put it on the drawers at the end of my bed and I fell asleep. At 2.58 in the morning, I woke up feeling ill and I felt like I was being watched. I put the doll in one of the drawers as I didn't like the sense that it was giving me. My stepdad and I woke up the next day with horrible symptoms. We ended up with a non-viral bacterial tonsillitis infection. I spent the whole of Thursday in bed violently shaking from this illness. That night, my fan flew off the bedside table. It had been there for weeks and I didn't move, so there was no reason for it to move. I don't know if this is all just a big coincidence or not. I don't know if we have a haunted house, a haunted doll, or nothing. But it's definitely been weird. Thank <laughs> you.